Block 1. Audiobook title. Take Eldridge Surveys. Noted. 01 to 73. By Myra underscore Zenon. This work belongs to author Myra underscore Zenon. Source. Scribblehub.com. Chapter 1. The Survey Tilda. Looking up from my phone while I was waiting for the page to load. I looked around me. Currently, I was on the train heading home from another boring day at my office job. Luckily for me, the train wasn't overly crowded today. It's been two months, and my car is still in the shop. I'll give them one more week, and then I'm going to go all Karen on their ass I thought with a sigh, ignoring everyone once again. I looked back down at my phone. However, what I expected to be a new website that was released for manga was instead a notice. Tilda congratulations. You are our one million visitor. Tilda, would you like to take a survey about your ideal reincarnation? Transmigration with a few twists? Yes, no, A. Eh? One millionth. Taking a peek at the time on my phone, I had another 30 minutes or so before I had to get off the train. Why not? These little surveys can be just as entertaining as a manga. Tilda awesome. Now, to kick this off, how about you pick which world, universe you would like to go to exclamation mark Tilda. Please select one. Don't even need to think about it. DC Universe. I would love to hang out with the Justice League. Or, I could be a little naughty and be a villainous. Hee <laughs> hee. Tilda DC. Check. Now who would you like to reincarnate? Transmigrate as question mark Tilda. Please select one. The list of people I could select was massive. Truly massive. I think nearly every person from every popular form of media is here, and more. Oh? As I was still scrolling down the A's, I came across two names that I knew and honestly really liked. Artoria, and Artoria Alter. Selecting Artoria Alter, it brought up a sub-menu of how much of her I wanted to be. Tilda Artoria Alter Tilda. All skills, abilities, equipment, muscle memory, instincts, body, soul. No personal memories. No personality traits. I think that's best. Yeah. Be as much as Artoria as possible, without actually being her. Tilda good choice. Next is the best part. Maybe. Powers and wishes. But, what are free powers without a little bit of a downside, right? Every power will have a negative. Please select responsibly. Normally. It's just one. But since you're our one million visitor you get two. Tilda, please select two two powers, wishes. If I thought the list was huge for the people I could have been, this list would make it look like a footnote. Luckily, there was a search bar so I put in something I'd like to have as Artoria Alter. Tilda Heavens feel, the third magic dot Tilda gives, gain infinite mana. Loose your body, but become a solid soul. Limited immortality. Negative. Only powerful souls may see you, and may never change this. Knowledge of this spell will be removed after reincarnation, transmigration to prevent you from casting it on anyone else, or it will crush weaker souls if not contained. Ah, so this is what they mean by downsides, huh? Being unable to be seen by like, 99% of the population of the universe is kind of harsh. Guess I'll become something like a Shinigami from Bleach. But anyway, I like being alone, so is this really a downside? If anything, this is like a discount invisibility. Not being able to cast this on someone, just means I can't make any friends who can see me immortal as well. A. I also assume the limited immortality is because shit can hurt souls in the DC universe quite easily. Confirming my selection. I started to look for other powers, which didn't take me long to come across another one. Tilda Infinite Potential Tilda gives, unlocks your body's, soul in your case, potential for infinite growth and ability to handle any power you attain. Negative, seals you so you may only exert power slightly stronger than the original Artoria Alter. There are 10 seals. Each seal broken will cause your power to increase by 10 times your new base from the previous seal. The final seal will fully unleash you. How to unlock these seals will be hidden for a minimum set time per seal. Nice. This would make me a powerhouse eventually. Artoria Alter is already strong as shit. And with all seals removed I'd be able to fully exert my infinite mana to do crazy shit. The negative just limits how much power output I have at one time. 
so it's not terrible to deal with. Tilda all done with your powers question mark Tilda. Yes, no. Selecting yes, and peeking at the time I notice I'll have to get off the train pretty soon. Focusing back at the screen I grinned a little. Tilda awesome. Here is the modified status for you exclamation mark Tilda. Name, Artoria Alter. Sex, female. Age, NA, looks 18. Race, corrupted heroic spirit, modified tier. 6B country level, high 6B with Excalibur Morgan. Powers slash wishes, heavens feel, infinite potential. Does this look good? Yes, no. I selected yes, as I stood up since I was at my stop. Walking to the train door, I heard a little ping from my phone. Looking down as I started to walk out of the train I read the notice. Tilda you're all set. Enjoy your new life Cassie. Or rather... I should say Artoria Alter, Tilda, wait, WH, before I could finish my thought, my phone vanished from my hand, I was now looking at a hand that had a sword in it, and instead of the expected concrete below me I was standing on grass, Artoria, what the, my voice, bringing up my other hand to touch my lips, I started to look around in a panic, Artoria, what is going on, where am I, and why do I have Excalibur Morgan in my hand? As I was starting to panic, red-black flames started to emerge from my body and sword. This only caused me to panic even more, which started a loop. More panic, more fire. I need to calm down. Deep breaths. In, and out. Wait, I am not breathing. Okay, deep forced breaths. As I tried to calm myself down, the flames started to wane and shrink. After several minutes I was calm again, and the flames had gone out. Okay, that was admittedly a lot easier to do than I thought. Looking back down to the sword in my hand, I started to inspect it closely. This is really Excalibur Morgan. And these male gloves I have on. These look like Artoria Alter's gear. No way. Looking around me for the classic quarter source, I was disappointed. Artoria, I am in the middle of nowhere. Well, at least I can see a city or town in the distance. Wait, I have mana now. Infinite for that matter. I should know some spells right? Closing my eyes, I focused on what spells I knew. And surprisingly, there was quite a lot. Waving my hand, a mirror of ice formed in front of me and reflected my appearance. Artoria, I really am her. And chantless magic huh? What I saw was exactly Artoria Alter in all her glory. Fully armed and armored. Waving my hand, the reflection did the same. Artoria. This is awesome. This means I am in DC then too, right? Waving my hand, the mirror shattered into snow dust. Looking towards the city, I had a smile on my face. I wonder what city this is? One of the main ones, or a normal one? Looking back down to my sword, I tried to see if I could put it in my soul. Closing my eyes, I focused on my intent to sheath my sword in no time at all. I felt my hand no longer gripping my sword. Smiling, I summoned and dismissed my sword in rapid succession several times. Good. It would have been a total pain to have to carry that everywhere. Now, time to go to the city. Rapidly sinking into my shadow, I appeared instantly in a random alley in the city I had seen back in the field. Artoria, I really do have all her knowledge. I can use everything like I have done it billions of times. This is awesome. Nodding to myself, I started to head out of the alley, and onto the street. Leaving the alley, and looking around I was soon pulled from my sight seeing when someone smashed into me. Artoria, hey, what the fuck, watch where? Oh right, looking down at the person who ran into me, I was going to get mad, but seeing them look around beyond confused as to why they hit something, I remembered one of the things about my wishes. Right, I am a soul now. Mundane people cannot see or hear me anymore. Ha, huh, so much for asking where the hell I am then. Maybe that store over there has a newspaper. Walking to my right, and down the sidewalk a bit I turned to enter the store. Looking up at the sign, I let out a small huff. Circle J. So close, yet so far. I wonder if all of the store and products will be lamely numb. Before I could finish that thought however. I had failed to realize that the automatic doors wouldn't open for me, 
and I walked right through them, smashing the door to all hell easily as it couldn't hope to prevent my movement. This caused everyone in the store to turn to the doors expecting some villain or disaster to come their way. Artoria, well, this is going to get annoying. I can already tell. Everyone in the store was confused though, as there was nothing there. The door seemingly blew out by itself. Their eyes however were suddenly drawn to the floor when I started to walk over the glass towards the newspaper display. Question mark colon what is going on? Question mark colon the door just blew out by itself. But, why does it sound like someone is walking on the glass? Ignoring them all, I got to the newspaper stand, and picked one up and looked at the address and main page. The city I was currently in was Jump City, and the main headline read, the Teen Titans do it again. They're Titans huh? Sure, why not? Let's go pay them a visit. Question mark colon what the heck? That newspaper is floating. Question mark colon ghost? Ah. Sweat dropping as several people started to scream and rush out of the store. I just shrugged my shoulders and tossed the paper back onto the newsstand. Turning around, and leaving the store I start to feel for the strongest souls around me. Artoria. Welp. It seems there are five above average souls in that direction. Two of them are a lot stronger than the other three though. Let's see if it's them. Sinking into my shadow, I appeared at a building at my destination. Stepping out of the shadow on the wall, I take a quick stock of the situation. It seems some random thug has a kid hostage with a knife to her neck and is screaming at the titans. Question mark colon get back. I'll gut this kid if you do anything. I will. Raven, what's the plan? Robin, I don't want to risk using my magic and startling him. That knife is too close. Robin, I'm thinking. Raven, I don't like this any more than you do. Question mark colon stay back. Get me the money and car I asked for, or the kid gets it. Looking at the man's soul, it was very weak. Like nearly every other soul I was able to sense. So, I re-entered the shadows and then started to rise out of his shadow which happened to be right in front of him. All of the titans gasped at my appearance and started to panic, thinking I was going to get the girl hurt. Question mark colon I said stay back you damn kids. Hurry up with my demands. Fully out of the shadows, and standing in front of him. Neither he nor the kid reacted to my presence. Expected. Now, time to take care of this garbage. Robin. Raven. I am not seeing things right. There is a transparent armored woman in front of them. Raven. Transparent. Robin what do you? Before she could finish her sentence, I grabbed the man's fist holding the knife, and pulled it away from the little girl's throat. I then proceeded to crush the man's hand into fine dust. As I was crushing his hand, I felt a terrible rage start to bubble inside just below the surface. Question mark colon R. My hand. What? G E R H H H H, screaming, and falling to his knees I let go of his hand, and the little girl made a break for it. As he was wailing, and cradling his arm I went to summon my sword. Starfire, who might you be wait, stop. A N, sorry, I can't think of making Starfire talk with her broken English. I don't think I can do it justice, so I won't bother lol. My red black flames lick off my sword lightly near his neck causing him to shriek in pain and fall to the ground. I look up at the floating starfire, and ask in a cold voice, Artoria, why have you stopped me? This garbage's soul is black enough that he would have really killed that kid. Tell me, why should I not end him here and now? Raven, because that is a slippery slope. Robin, Raven, I can't hear her very well. What did she say? Raven, she's asking why we are preventing her from killing the man. Robin. I don't know who you are, but it's not right to kill him. He must serve his time in jail. Turning my head to look at the rest of the Titans, they were all nodding their heads. Artoria, fine, but he doesn't get to be comfortable in life anymore. Beast Boy, what? A.M. will be just B.B. from now on. Before they could even react, I cut off the man's legs, and incinerated the bits that I cut off. Question mark colon A.H.H. my legs. What is going on? Ah, having enough of his voice, I smash my fist in his face, knocking him unconscious. Okay, I need to calm down. I have never been this violent. Cyborg, dude, that was brutal. Artoria, he'll live. 
Now, while this was less than an ideal situation to introduce myself to you all, it is what it is, dismissing my sword. I turned to Robin and Raven, giving them a slight nod. I introduced myself as the other three joined them. Artoria, greetings, Titans. My name is Artoria Alter, and I would like some. <clears throat> Help is too strong of a word. Advice? Yay. Let's go with advice. Robin, advice? Ah, I am Robin. This is Raven, Beast Boy, Starfire, and Cyborg. Does this advice relate to why I can see through you, Artoria? More or less? Yes. Starfire, what do you mean, Robin? I can see and hear her just fine. Raven, she's a spirit. I just realized it. Artoria, corrupted heroic spirit. Thank you very much. Cyborg, corrupted what now? Well, you being supernatural would explain why my robotic eye can't see you, but my organic one can. If barely, Artoria, that is because your souls are weak. Well, weaker than the ladies' souls anyway. Ravens is by far the strongest soul out of all of you. BB, so what do you need advice on, Artoria? Because I think only Raven will know how to help you move on to the afterlife. Artoria, I am not that kind of spirit, BB. Normally, I am summoned to fight in a holy grail war. But there was no summoner, nor do I sense any of the mana signatures that indicate a grail war is going on. Robin, you're like a warrior then? Giving him a nod I think to myself. I think I'll go with this background. I am Artoria Alter in all but memories after all. Starfire, how do you, you, normally go back to wherever you were summoned from? Artoria, whenever my summoner is killed, or the grail war is won or lost. BB, what if you die? Cyborg. Dude. BB. What? What? I simply shrug my shoulders. Artoria. That would most likely work. But, I have never been killed in any of the wars I participated in. And, I'd honestly rather not go back. The Throne of Heroes is a very boring place. At least I assume it would be. Robin crosses his arms, tilts his head and hums while tapping his left foot. Robin. Well, I assume you want to ah. Uh, the medics and police are here for the bad guy. Let's get out of their way. I still think cutting off his legs was way too much. I just shrug my shoulders, and shake my head. Robin, right. Anyway, as I was saying, from what I gathered, you want to stay here right? Or rather, even if you didn't, you can't exactly leave? Giving him a nod. He continued. Robin, all right. Then why don't you come back to our tower? I'll get in contact with the League and we can go from there. Sounds good. Giving him another nod, he said to follow them. As we started to head to their tower, I took one last look at the garbage being lifted into an ambulance. Their rage I felt was intense. I really would have killed him. Still think I should for some reason. Sighing I continue my thought. Well whatever. Let's see where this all goes. Worst comes to worst. I can be a solo anti-hero or something. 286. Chapter 2. Dread it. Run from it. The info dump arrives all the same. As we were making our way back to the Titan's Tower, I couldn't help but think of the immense rage I felt when I was dealing with that trash human. This is going to bother the shit out of me. Where exactly did that rage come from? There was nothing like that in any of my selections. Oh no. When I selected Artoria Alter, and then the list I failed to notice a few things of very important note. Artoria Alter was corrupted by all the world's evils. And I have her body. And so, oh fuck, that rage was clearly what Artoria was dealing with. Well, this just got very problematic. Even though I was panicking quite a lot inside, I was able to keep a perfect poker face. Glad this is a skill Artoria had, and I feel like I am going to use this a lot in the coming. Forever. Right. That's another thing. I am effectively immortal now. There is very little that can actually hurt me, let alone finish me off. Doubly so with mana burst and my infinite mana. With a sigh I continue my thoughts. So I am immortal unless murdered. Very hard to be murdered and have to keep down all the evils in the world for the rest of my existence. Sure, no problem. Not, Jay. This is going to be very hard to deal with for the first while. Robin. Artoria. Artoria. R. Yes. Robin, we're far enough away from mothers now. So Raven is going to teleport us to the tower. Giving him a hump for confirmation. 
Raven's soul self started to cover us. Well, now that I remember I actually have Artoria Alter's soul, I wonder what my interaction with Wonder Woman's lasso of truth will be like. In some stories, it connects to the soul and gets the truth from the soul. Well, I guess everyone will be surprised with what will come out of my mouth then. Ha ha ha. I was going to suggest the League use the lasso on me, so I can get a free pass from Batman. Well, as free of a pass as a person like him can give in any case. As Raven's soul self retreated. I looked around where we were. This was their main room, with the mission table in the middle and a nice view of the surroundings with all the windows. Honestly, the tech was impressive to myself. Much more advanced than anything I or Artoria would be familiar with. Artoria, humans here sure have come a long way since the last time I was summoned. Your technology is a lot more advanced than what I remember. BB, oh yeah? Giving him a nod and a motioning towards Cyborg, indeed. An entity like him was only in the people's imaginations. Starfire. Well, Cyborg is a bit of a special case. Do you remember the last time you were summoned? Artoria. Yes. It was a very long, and bloody grail war. Sadly. My master at the time was very, well, let's say unfocused, and got himself killed near the end. I was honestly impressed with the arrow that managed to finally lodge itself in his head. Truly, the archer class really is made up of archers. I resisted the urge to giggle like Adamus when I saw they all raised their brow at that last quip. Shaking his head, Robin spoke up. Robin, in any case, I have already contacted the League about this situation. Batman said he'll be coming down shortly to take you up to the tower to get you situated. Right. Situated indeed. Giving him a nod. I was about to ask when to expect the headache, when suddenly a bright light the shape of a person appeared near us. Few seconds later, Batman materialized. Artoria. Well now, that was interesting. I sensed no movement in any manner or anything like that from you but that was clearly teleportation. Has technology truly come so far? BB, cool right? They don't let us use it often though. Batman ignored everyone and walked closer to us and looked me over. Artoria, judging by how intently you are staring, Batman, you can see me just fine I take it. Batman, yes. Artoria, then, are you ready? Crass as ever, giving him a nod. He walked right up to me and mumbled into his cum device. The next thing I know, Batman put his hand on my shoulder and we were covered in light. Few seconds later, my vision cleared and I was in a room that looked like it came out of the comics with the number of heroes I could see. Well, duh. Still, this place is huge. The comics and shows really couldn't capture the scale well. Looking around, I was standing on a teleportation platform that was higher than the rest of the room. The whole place was wide open and several heroes were going about their business. Massive windows that followed along the entire view, acting more like walls, showed a fantastic view from space. Artoria. This is a nice view. Nice to be able to take it in and not have to fight. Question mark colon you fought in space before? Turning to the voice, I saw Wonder Woman herself. She looked like her Justice League Unlimited counterpart. In fact, a lot of the heroes here did, if not all. Giving her a nod I say, yes, once the Grail Wars somehow ended up on the moon, didn't have time to enjoy the view while I had to kill everyone. Hey. That was a great fight. I am surprised how easily I can talk out of my ass like this. Honestly, it's kinda scary. Wonder Woman just raised an eyebrow at that, then turned to Batman. Wonder Woman. We're all set. The room is ready for us. Let's go. Batman just nodded and motioned for me to follow them. As we were walking, Wonder Woman asked a question I was expecting eventually. Wonder Woman. Not to sound rude, but I can feel an immense amount of darkness from you. Care to explain? Artoria. Yes, I am not surprised, and I will when we are all together. Having to repeat myself can become quite tiring. Wonder Woman. I understand. Superman asked me to see if you would be willing to be questioned under my lasso of truth. It's has. Interrupting her I say, I know of it, and I am willing to, yes. It'll make this process much less painful for myself. I made a point to turn my head and look at Batman when I said that, though. 
They can't see my eyes because of my faceplate. I am sure they gets the meaning. While Batman wasn't looking at me, he still grunted as if acknowledging my stare. It didn't take us long to enter a meeting room of sorts. It was a pretty basic looking room, if not for the nice view out into space taking up a seat at the end of the table. I waited for them to do whatever they were going to do. As I was sitting down, Superman looked at Wonder Woman who gave him a nod. He nodded back with a small smile, and turned to me as he was speaking. I made note of who was here. Superman, Wonder Woman, Batman, Green Lantern, The Flash, and Martian Manhunter were all in attendance. Well now, don't I feel all special? Superman, welcome Artoria. We've all gone over the small report that Robin has sent us, and are interested in learning more about you and how we can help. Giving him a nod. I looked at John and said, before we start too much I want to give you a friendly warning Manhunter. Where I am from, people who can look into others' minds were few but they did exist. I am warning you now as I have natural defenses that will lash out at you if you try to read my mind. And said defenses have changed from their original purpose so they might be a lot more lethal now. He gave me a curt nod. John, thank you for the warning, Artoria. You seem to know a lot about us for someone who is from another universe. Shrugging my shoulders, I motioned to Wonder Woman to give me the lasso. She caught on, and walked over to me, and wrapped it around my arm. Artoria, where I am from there are several forms of media that follow the exploits of your lives. While I have seen a few, and I know a general amount of information about several of you, I don't know everything. All of them raise their eyebrows at that, and Batman let out an unhappy hum. Batman, such as? Artoria. Well, your secret identities, your general personality traits, powers and weaknesses, future events. Ah, but I couldn't count on my knowledge of future events to be accurate in the least. It has been several hundred years since I have read anything about you all. Honestly, with how well known you all are to humanity back in my world, I wouldn't be entirely surprised if one of you showed up as a fake heroic spirit one day. Batman, that is a troubling amount of information for one person to have. I just scoff at him. Artoria, the pot calling the kettle black. He just narrows his eyes at me, and it takes everything I have to not laugh. Superman. Well, putting that aside for now. You said you were a heroic spirit. What is that exactly? Artoria, shortened. Heroic spirits are entities throughout history that are summoned to fight in a holy grail war. Under normal conditions, the soul of the person summoned is housed in the throne of heroes, while a copy of them is summoned. That way when they are killed a servant, heroic spirits, are not actually killed and may be summoned again for another war. Green Lantern. I take it you do not fall under the norm? Shaking my head, I smile, not in the least no. Ignoring how I was normally summoned, I've been corrupted, have been for a long time now. So long, I don't remember not being corrupted. Okay, so my new soul is definitely affecting me, clearly. Maybe the bullshit I've been spewing isn't actually bullshit, and is my real background that whoever reincarnated me created for me? Wonder Woman. Corrupted how? Artoria, in one of the Grail Wars, I was summoned by a master who was directly connected to the Holy Grail somehow, and this Holy Grail was full of mud of all the world's evil. This mud corrupted my existence permanently, and changed me. Wonder Woman gasps in shock, by horror. No wonder you feel, well, evil. Batman, this won't be a problem will it? I just shrug my shoulders. Artoria. I normally don't need to worry about it. After all, I am normally summoned to wage war, stack bodies and create rivers of blood. While I may lose my temper, I've never succumbed fully and lost my faculties. Batman just hummed at that and started to type things into the computer he had out. Flash, you said heroic spirits are historical figures. Who are you? Artoria. Ah, I didn't actually introduce myself properly. Standing up. I give a tiny bow and say, my name is Artoria Alter, a Sabbath class, but my most recognized name is Arthur Pendragon. Several gasps rang out at my declaration. Flash, wait 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 wait. You mean the Arthur Pendragon? As in King Arthur Pendragon? Of Camelot. Sitting back down, I give him a nod and say, yes, that one, the once and future king, 
the one who pulled Caliburn from the stone, and who wields Excalibur. Well, even if it's been corrupted like myself anyway, I could tell everyone was surprised, even Batman. Green Lantern. I had no idea King Arthur was actually a woman. Artoria. Yes, well, men were very closed-minded back then, and I feared they wouldn't follow a woman. Flash, this is so cool. I mean, you are the King Arthur. Artoria. Yes, yes, but please, it's Artoria. Flash, right. Sorry, sorry. Superman. You speak of Excalibur as if you have it still without answering him. I just reach out with my left hand and summon my sword. Instantly, it is in my hand in all its glory. But something interesting happened. All of the League members in the room stood up and backed away slowly. Flash, I know next to nothing about magic and such. But even I can tell that sword is bad news. Wonder Woman, yes. The evil emanating off the sword is concerning. I am saddened to see such a holy treasure in such a state. Dismissing the sword I tilt my head and ask. That was a rather extreme reaction. The titans didn't seem to mind my sword. Maybe because all of you have vastly more powerful souls. Wonder Woman. Maybe. If that sword was corrupted by the same source as you. I wonder why you do not give off the same feeling. Artoria. I am holding back my aura for once. Normally, I wouldn't care. But I don't want to make unnecessary enemies in an unfamiliar world. If I released it, you'd feel the full brunt, and it would not be pleasant. Weaker souls are crushed outright and are obliterated. John, you mean? Artoria. If I relax my hold on my power, a great deal of people would simply die if they were within the range of my aura. Yes. Shaking his head at that, Green Lantern said. That's honestly crazy. Just how many people have you killed in the wars you were summoned in? Artoria, I don't count, but it's among several hundred thousand at the least. Superman, I won't lie, Artoria, I have a problem with that. I just shrug at the Boy Scout. Artoria, it's not like I just went skipping along in the middle of a city. It was a war, Superman. An objective was behind all my killings. I don't murder for fun. I murder to remove obstacles and problems. Well, I guess that's a thing now. Honestly, I am learning as much as they are about myself at this point. Batman, moving on. And with that, the interview, interrogation continued. 300. Chapter 3. Not at all according to Keikaku. Batman, we're going to move on with the assumption we cannot get you back to your universe, and from what Robin said in his report, you don't want to return? Artoria. That is correct. While I love fighting in the wars, the wait between them is so very boring. Time doesn't flow or act normally in the throne of heroes. And I am not like other heroic spirits, in that when I am summoned I don't send a copy of myself while I sleep. So sometimes thousands of years could pass by just sitting around doing nothing but practicing. And Gilgamesh is such an ass. Thinks he is so powerful because he was a demigod. Honestly. If it wasn't because we were not permitted to fight in the throne, I would have killed or at least attempted to kill him long, long ago. Flash, Gilgamesh was real too? Artoria, naturally. Flash, so cool, coughing to get our attention, Superman said. So what do you want to do, Artoria? I just shrug my shoulders. Artoria, maybe what you guys do? Fight some vermin, but from the aura Batman is giving off. He knows what I mean by that. Batman, you mean kill them. Everyone frowned at that, causing me to just shrug. Artoria, yes, mind you. I don't think all vermin should be wiped out. But a great deal of the people you all fight? Yes. They should be stripped of their mortal coils. Batman, if you murder a murderer, the number of murderers in the world stays the same. Artoria, that's why you don't stop at one. Look, I know what I am talking about. I led an entire nation in the Golden Age for nearly 100 years, and from what I know about your world, no Golden Age, miserable people, and murders getting their kicks from you sending them away only to escape. Wonder Woman, only a hundred years. Artoria, well, I was only a mortal back then you know. Nodding at me, Superman was just frowning. Superman, I can't accept that kind of thinking. There has to be a better way. Batman, I agree. Artoria. 
and that's why you both have vastly more innocent blood on your hands than I do. Batman narrowed his eyes at me and asked what I meant by that. Artoria, for example, every single person the joke has killed after your first time dealing with him, their blood is on your hands. You failed to wipe out the problem of a soul who will clearly not change in this lifetime and let him escape constantly. And you Superman, Lex has ruined so many lives but you just casually ignore it. I could go on for all of you, but I think my point has been made. They all frown and look down in thought, but really, so many tragedies would be avoided if these heroes actually finished what was started. Instead of letting people get away, or go, only to come back stronger. Leaning forward, and resting my right arm on the table with my head on my hand, I make a dismissive wave with my left hand. Artoria, look. I get what you do. I get you think it's the right thing, but just because you're correct, doesn't mean you're right as one dumbass once said. Sure, this applies to me as well, but, I lead an entire nation in a golden age. As I said, and I am much older than all of you combined. And, I am corrupted by all the world's evil, so I know exactly what I am talking about. Some souls just need to be sent on their way to judgment to be cleansed and born anew. That's all there is to it. Batman, while you make valid points, I can't get behind them. So, what it boils down to, is that you will kill your targets. And, we can't have that. I vote we lock her up as she is clearly willing to and planning to kill, I just chuckle at that, Artoria, come, Batman, don't be so hasty to make an enemy out of me, ignoring how much of a dumb idea that is, you're a human, on a space station, with an entity who can destroy said space station by just relaxing her hold on her power, and unlike a lot of you, I don't need air, Superman, I don't like you taking everyone here hostage like that, Artoria, shrugging my shoulders I say, and I don't like the fact he wants to lock me up like the throne of heroes, now that I am free of it, I will violently resist any attempts to place me back in it, or in a situation like it again, John, I think we all need to calm down, Artoria, would you truly go on a killing spree of criminals, I hummed in thought for a few seconds before answering, Artoria, not every trash would be killed, only those with souls that need to be cleansed I guess, for example, for a purse snatcher, I'd probably just treat him like Batman and break several of his bones. But for a murderer or rapist, they would be slain without a second thought. Superman, they need to pay for their sins though. Artoria, just killing them is pointless, cruel and wrong. I just shake my head and laugh a little at that. Artoria, you know hell actually exists, right? They can pay for their sins they're a lot better than whatever you mortals could do. Green Lantern. It is still against the law to just kill. I scoff. Your laws maybe. Look. This is going nowhere. And it's getting tiresome. Can you all make a decision of what you're going to do. So I can act accordingly. They all got a serious face. And huddled a little to talk amongst themselves. While they were doing that. I also got to thinking. Okay. So, I changed in more ways than just my body it seems, a lot more. I talk about taking a life as if I am thinking about what to eat for super. And when I think back to the garbage I mutilated, I still think it would have been better to just end him. Another concerning thing is why I feel like I am willing to take down garbage. I am not willing to help the innocent. Even more worrying is that I don't care if I end up killing hundreds of innocents in a fight with someone strong. While I was seriously thinking about my new personality quirks I interrupted myself with a realization. Wait a moment, why am I like this? I shouldn't have Artoria's personality at all, or any of her quirks. But, my soul is clearly affecting me. The question is why? Let's follow the theme of that survey. Well, the theme of the wishes, powers, Everything had negative to it. So, maybe. Yes, it is to be. My eyes widened behind my mask as a mildly disturbing thought came to me. What if I was actually reincarnated as Artoria Alter? And lived her life. Or rather, lived the life as a heroic, and then corrupted, spirit. But then, I was summoned to this universe and my memories were wiped. 
but not my soul's memories, hence why I still have all my skills and instincts and the like. This was the only conclusion I could come up with, that made the most sense. The lasso of truth compels you to tell the truth after all, and what greater truth is there than that of what the soul knows? Well, fuck. So my old memories and personality are not here, but my soul is influencing me in a way only a soul can, not to mention the corruption. Honestly, this should be a lot more concerning, but I can't do anything about it. And everything just feels so natural. As I was musing on my own nature, it seems the heroes finished what they were talking about, and had some serious faces on them. My instincts are screaming that a fight is coming. I thought they'd be smarter than this. Sighing, I stood up, and untangled the lasso from my arm, and tossed it aside. Artoria, I can tell from your stances, that we are going to come to blows, correct? Superman, I am sorry, Artoria, but we can't let you go. We just can't agree with how you will act. Murder is wrong. Even if it's criminals we're talking about, I just shake my head and summon Excalibur Morgan in my right hand. Artoria, are you absolutely sure you all want to do this? A lot of people on this station are going to die. Green Lantern points his ring at me, and shoots out a beam of light that causes a small bubble to form around me. Green Lantern, please do not resist, Artoria. We don't want to harm you, we will banish you to the Phantom Zone. It should be better than whatever this throne of heroes was. I just sigh. Artoria, you are all very foolish. Very well. I will show you the power of a king. And with that, I let go of my power, and use mana burst to the highest degree I can. My sword and I erupt in red-black flames, and my very presence is enough to shatter the pitiable bubble of green will energy. My aura crashes down on all of them causing all but Superman and Wonder Woman to crash to their knees, and feeling my aura causing some souls around the station to be destroyed. Looking at them I say in a cold voice, see what I mean? I am just standing here, and the majority of you can't even move, and there have already been some casualties from your foolish decision. With a struggle and a yell, Flash manages to stand up and sprint to me covered in speed force lightning. I merely lean to the right to dodge his punch and grab him by the neck. Artoria, you are looking down on me, Flash. You're too slow. With that little mockery, I tossed him hard towards Green Lantern who was trying to form another will shield around himself. As Green Lantern caught Flash, Superman and Wonder Woman charged me. Not wanting to wait for them, I sped over to them. Appearing as if teleporting, I crash my fist into Superman's chest sending him through several walls of the station. I then raise my sword to block a swing from Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman, please stop, Artoria. Artoria, I was clear in my warning, little Amazonian. You heroes never think of the consequences of your actions most of the time, bringing my left fist up to punch her face. She successively blocked with one of her armbands. Sadly. There was a loud snap as her bone broke and she was sent flying through the station like Superman. Turning to look down at the barely conscious Batman I let out an annoyed sigh. Artoria. So, Batman? Is this how you envisioned how it would go down? Batman was struggling very hard to resist my mere aura, and couldn't hardly move a muscle. But I had to give him props for never giving up. Batman, wheel. Stop. You, Artoria. From what, exactly? Making the world a better place? You speak as if your way is the only way. The right way. And, maybe it is for you. But you are not God, Batman. You don't get to control how everything works. I kneel down near him, making sure not to get too close so my fiery aura doesn't touch him. Artoria, and do remember. I know a lot more about you, than you know about me. Don't fret so much. You may not like it. But you'll see. When the trash starts to pile up in the streets, and the rivers I so enjoy creating start to flow, you'll see. Ignoring the groaning Batman, and the down Green Lantern and Flash, I look at John. Artoria, you really need to work on that weakness to fire, John. For how common fire is, I am honestly surprised you can function at all as a hero. Now, if you'll excuse me. Ignoring all of them, I made my way out of the room and started heading towards the teleporters. Well, 
This is a bit of a problem. I don't know how to use the teleporters, and I don't think they can teleport me directly as Batman had to place his hand on my shoulders, kind of like making me hitch a ride. While walking I felt a warning from my instincts, causing me to lean to the right. Just as I did, I counterattacked whoever it was that tried to get a sneaky hit in. Shocking no one, I ended up smashing Superman, again into the roof and several floors above us. Shaking my head I continued on my way. Really though, all that power, but never actually trains in any form of martial arts. What a waste. Or does he? I can't remember. As I entered the room with the teleporter I originally arrived in, all I could see were heroes scattered all over the floor. A few of them were dead. Oh? Isn't that Hawk girl? She seemed to be mostly fine, though she was struggling at least a little bit to stay standing. She eventually looked my way, and she scowled. Yup, I can understand why she'd instantly think I am the one doing this. A stranger, evil-looking flames, and radiating evil. Really, I am set up to be the perfect villainous. Hawk girl, you're the one doing this aren't you? Giving her a nod of my head I responded, yes. This is the result of a rather poor choice by Superman and Batman. I suggest you stay over there. I'd rather not hurt you all more than I have to. Hawk girl, as if several of them are dead. Ha. Huh. She actually managed to take off a little and fly at me with her mace raised and covered in lightning. This'll be a good test. Can her mace stop my mana burst from helping me? I don't think it can, but better to test it now. As she swung down I simply raised my left hand to stop the mace. And much to my pleased self it didn't even hurt my hand, let alone register I had even stopped something like a NTH metal mace. The floor below me though didn't get to enjoy the same treatment as my hand, and caved in and buckled a fair amount. Artoria. I have to say, I am a bit disappointed. While Hawk Girl was still stunned I had easily stopped her attack. I grabbed her weapon and threw it, along with her, towards the incoming Superman. Superman, whoa. He gently caught the flying girl, and set her back down on her feet. He then looked at me with a serious face and started speaking. Superman, Artoria, stop this. There is no way off the station. The teleporters will not work for you. They are locked down. I just let out a sigh, and shook my head. Artoria. You still do not grasp who, or what, you are dealing with yet, Kal-El. His eyes widened a little as I said his Kryptonian name, while raising my sword. Artoria, you will not imprison me, nor will you be able to stop me. I know you are fast, Kal-El, but are you fast enough to save everyone on this station? A massive amount of mana built up in my sword, as I used burst air to punch a hole straight up through the station. I then took my sword in both hands and charged another burst air as I turned away from Superman and swung my sword at the glass that was facing Earth. Their station now had two massive holes in it, and as my second burst air was destroying the walls to the vacuum of space, I saw Superman starting to zip around to save everyone he could. As I leapt off the station and towards the planet I couldn't help but shake my head. Well, this was less than ideal in a major way. I just made myself an enemy of this world's heroes. Shit, I even killed several of them. As I entered the atmosphere of the planet, I didn't even register the heat from the friction. I was busy looking for a place to crash down at, and thinking of my next step. They'll call me a villainous. They'll hunt me. But, I don't have any grand plans for world domination. I don't want to rule anyone. Fighting was really fun though. I think I am a battle junkie. A smile crept up on my face as I crashed down in the area I aimed for, making a massive creator. I'll just be an anti-hero then. I'll get to fight, and I'll get to crush some garbage. I don't need to kill the heroes, but nothing is preventing me from having fun and fighting them. And if they die from their wounds, well, not my problem I guess. Unbeknownst to me, as I was sinking down into my shadow, more of my body was covered in lines of corruption and my presence got just a little bit darker. 299. Chapter 4, Better the Devil You Know, Right? Three days later, several people could be seen sitting around a large table, talking about the situation that happened a few days ago. Superman, so, how bad is it? Batman, bad. 
there are over 20 heroes dead, and tens of worker personnel, and several are missing. We are assuming that the attacks that Anatoria released vaporized their bodies since you didn't find any floating in space around the station. The damage dealt to the station itself is extensive, but we got lucky that it was very localized and none of the major systems were badly damaged. Flash, more like we got lucky she didn't do more than that. We underestimated her to an alarming degree guys. Sean, agreed. The power she displayed is very troubling. Wonder Woman. Yes, the fact that her just her aura alone disabled many of us is frightening. I thought we've seen some evil beings before like Darkseid, but the evil coming from her felt on par with his, which is horrifying if I am honest. To be able to hold such darkness at bay. Unbelievable. Hawk Girl. Yay, what the hell guys. What happened? She said Superman and Batman caused all of this. Superman, well, here, so this is what happened. Saying that, Superman started to narrate what happened in the meeting between them and Artoria. Hawk girl, she warned you several times, and yet you still fought there on the station? Why didn't you attempt to? Oh I don't know. Not do that? Shazam, I am with Hawk girl on this. You all jumped the gun. Superman, we thought we could handle her easily enough with the people present. Hawk girl, ye? Well we have over 20 dead heroes and civilians who clearly say otherwise. She's not human, has a magical sword, and is not even from our universe. What the hell? Shazam, that's enough Hawk girl. What's done is done. What are we going to do moving forward? Batman, we clearly cannot fight her in any populated areas. She's shown she has no issue killing innocents. Flash, yay, that's not very kingly of her. Wonder Woman, to play the devil's advocate here. They are not her subjects. And she's corrupted. Not defending her, just saying. I think we need to bring in some of our more magically inclined members. Hawk Girl, should have done that from the start. Batman, enough. We need to start making plans to contain her. Someone should get Dr. Fate and anyone else who might be of help. We have no idea where she is, as no technology can even pick her up. Even the technology that was blessed or modified to pick up the supernatural. She has had several days. She can be anywhere by now planning something that we'll need to stop. All the members nodded and they continued their meeting about what to do with the new villainess, Artoria Alter, shifting to Artoria. Artoria, I have no idea where the fuck I am. I look around me, and all I can see are trees, trees, and more trees. Artoria, I am so fucking lost. Having enough of this, I crouched down and prepared to jump high in the sky. Jumping a few seconds later, causing the ground to explode from my takeoff, I launch myself into the sky. Looking around, I got lucky and saw a semi-truck driving along a road that I couldn't really make out. Without wasting any time, I pushed off an invisible foothold in the air, and launched myself towards my new ride. Arriving and landing on the back of the truck that was hauling food or something I laid down. Looking up at the sky I thought, this'll take me to some population. Then I can see where the shit I ended up. Honestly, I thought my hair turned green there for a few hours. Closing my eyes to see if I could sleep. I quickly found out that I couldn't. Grunting in annoyance. I instead started to play with the mana in me. Forming random shapes and objects. This went on for a lot longer than I cared for. But eventually the truck got near a city. A large billboard that said. Welcome to Los Angeles. Oh? Isn't this the city where Lucifer is staying in? Is he even in this universe? Getting up from the back of the truck and looking towards the city, I started to sink into my shadow. I then stepped out of a shadow in a random alleyway inside the city proper. All right. Now if I remember. His club is named Lux of all things. Well, before I even start looking for that, let's see if I can even find him. Spreading my senses out to feel the souls in the city. I quickly found one that absolutely dwarfed anything I have ever felt since coming here. Holy shit. Well, that's one of the top tens for you. He is the devil after all. Stepping back into a shadow, I teleported myself to around one kilometer away on top of a roof of a building. Making the rest of the way on foot, I jumped from rooftop to rooftop. This is awesome. I love this. Sadly, my park of fun was over. 
as I had arrived to where I felt such a powerful soul. Looking down, it was a crime scene with Lucifer talking to a woman. Her name is Chloe Decker if I recall. I am glad this is the Lucifer I am aware of. His show was pretty great, but sadly I didn't get to finish it. I don't remember this scene, so it could be beyond what I know, or just one of the cases that was never shown. Shrugging my shoulders I just jumped off the rooftop and landed inside the taped off area. Cracking the ground as I landed, it caused everyone to look at my direction. Question mark colon what the hell? What just happened? Question mark colon did something fall? But where is the thing that cracked the pavement then? Ignoring and walking past the officers and Chloe I made my way over to Lucifer. Lucifer. Well well. Now this is quite interesting. Who might you be? I am Lucifer Morningstar, the devil. A pleasure. When I got near him, he took my hand, and kissed it like knights of old did. Rolling my eyes, I just let him have his fun. Artoria, Artoria Alter, corrupted heroic spirit. But, you might know my other name. Arthur Pendragon. Lucifer, if I had known King Arthur was such a fine looking woman. I would have paid more attention in history class. But, this is also a bit of a conundrum. I knew King Arthur, and he was most certainly a man. Taking back my hand I cross my arms and say, Yours was male then, was it? Interesting. Lucifer, yours? Ah, you're not from around here. I wondered why you felt off. Ignoring the absolute crazy amount of evil I feel from you. Artoria, correct. I then started to fill him in on what has happened to me since I arrived, along with the new history I had learned from the Lasso of Truth. Lucifer, fascinating. But, why have you come to me? It's clear you don't want to return. But before I could answer Chloe had returned and looked at Lucifer weirdly. Chloe, Lucifer, what are you doing? Why are you talking to no one? You look like a lunatic. More than usual anyway. Artoria. Huh, you'd think your fated one would have a much stronger soul than that. Pretty Pio, you did good. Lucifer just coughed into his hand a bit before responding to Chloe. Lucifer, I am merely talking to King Arthur here. Did you know he was actually a she? A very sexy she might I add. Artoria, sorry handsome. You're batting on the wrong team for me. He raised an eyebrow at that, while Chloe just pinched the bridge of her nose in seemingly exasperation. Chloe. Lucifer, stop. Ghosts are not real. I admit you have a weird power, but it's not supernatural. Artoria, wow, really? Does she live under a rock? You have superheroes who use magic for fuck's sakes. Lucifer, yes, I always wondered about that if I am being honest. Chloe just crossed her arms and huffed at Lucifer while looking disappointed. Artoria, hey, I got an idea. Got a pen and paper? Nodding to me. Lucifer reached in his pocket and pulled out a pen and a small notepad. Taking it from him, I started to write a low on it. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw Chloe's eyes widen by a large amount. I gave Lucifer his pen back, and held out the notepad to Chloe. Chloe, wh... what the hell? Artoria, ha. Huh? Anyway, Lucifer, the reason I searched you out was mostly because I was curious if you were in this universe and to ask a few questions. Lucifer, oh, well, I don't mind answering such a beauty as you. Should we meet at my club? Artoria, sure. Where is it, and when? Lucifer pulls out a business card from his pocket and gives it to me. Lucifer, how about in a few hours? I have to help the good detective here for a bit more. Artoria, yay. That's fine. I'll just head there now and wait. Is Mazai keen around? Lucifer, yes. You know quite a bit about me don't you? Artoria, a bit, yes. Not as much as I'd like. Anyway, I'll see you in a few hours then. Giving him back his notepad, I started to sink into my shadow and was gone a second later. Appearing near the second strongest soul I could feel in the city, I stepped out of the shadows just outside of his club, Lux. Artoria, well... Time to meet a sexy demoness. 290. Chapter 5. Who says that all deals with the devil are bad? As I walked into Lux, I took a quick look around. It was empty of people, which isn't surprising because of the time of day. To the right, I saw a stage with a piano. In the middle was the room for all the guests, 
and on the left back hall was a bar. Attending the bar was the lone person in the building besides me. Jumping off the little stairway that was the entrance, I made my way to the woman attending the bar. I wonder if she even knows she has a soul yet? A, not my problem. As I got closer, she finally turned round and let out a whistle. Maze, well damn, aren't you a sexy one? Artoria, hey, and I can see why Lucifer is such a playboy if he has someone like you by his side all the time. My name is Artoria Alter, corrupted heroic spirit giving me a nod and a playful smile, Mazikeen, but just call me, Maze, Archdemon. So Artoria, what brings you here? Artoria, I have some things I want to talk to Lucifer about, but he's busy for several hours, so he gave me his business card, and here I am. She gave me another look up and down, and let out him of satisfaction and a smile. Maze, while we wait for him. Want me to show you a good time? Artoria, direct much? But sure, let's see if you can keep up. Maze, oh, I'll take the challenge Tilda. Follow me, sexy. As I was following Maze I thought, well, that went from zero to one hundred real quick. Demons for you, I guess. While I was being led by such a temptress, unknown to me there was a meeting about to happen with a hot topic being me. POV switch John Constantine. As I was making my way down the halls of the vaunted Hall of Justice or whatever, I let out an annoyed sigh. I get a gut feeling that what is about to happen is going to annoy the ever-living shit out of me. Taking a puff from my cigarette, I fish out my canteen to take a swig. After taking a drink, I recap it, and put it back in its trusty pocket. With a sigh, I mumble, why do I do this again? R. Right money for booze. Hope my gut is wrong for once, and whatever the league needs isn't a total fuck show like normal. But really, who am I kidding? With another sigh, I turned down a hall and after a few more minutes of walking I arrived at the room that was supposed to be our meeting area. Upon entering and seeing who was already in the room, I knew my gut was right once again. John, ah fuck. Hello fate, Zatanna. So, what clusterfuck are we dealing with today? Turning their heads towards me, fate just gave me an odd while Zatanna scoffed. Zatanna, John. So they called you as well? How are you these days? Still an asshole? John, yup Tilda. You know me. So, as I asked before, what's going on? Fate, we do not know yet. We've just arrived several minutes before you. Suddenly, Batman stepped out of a shadow in the corner of the room. John. God damn it Batman, how the fuck do you even do that? I could swear I saw the fucker smirk. He just ignored me, and addressed us. Batman, we've got a situation that needs your expertise. Superman and Wonder Woman will be joining us shortly. Zatanna, oh, I see. This is pretty serious if all three of you are going to give us a briefing. John, more like it's going to be a super pain in the ass. Ha, huh? shaking my head and going for my canteen again since I could tell I will be needing several swigs over the course of this briefing. Walking over to the small table, I sat away from everyone and just slumped in my chair. Thankfully for my growing headache I was getting because of the death stare I was getting from Zatanna, Superman and Wonder Woman didn't take long to arrive. Superman, thank you for coming here on such short notice you three. John, yay yay. So, what happened and what exactly did you fuck up? Zatanna, John, have some tact for once in your life? Just scoffing at her, I motioned for Superman to answer my question, but it was Batman who spoke up. Batman, here's the situation. And what happened? As Batman began to explain what happened, a frown was making its way on all our faces. Well, I assumed fate was frowning, but when he got to a specific part, I had to interrupt him. John. Hold the fuck up. You attacked her on a space station while knowing she is King Arthur with the fucking Excalibur sword? Are you all fucking mental? Zatanna was about to speak up, but I raised my hand to stop her and looked at Wonder Woman. John, and you. You should at least know the power of Excalibur. This isn't a fucking stick or some fancy dancey sword we're talking about here. It's fucking Excalibur. The strongest holy sword to have ever existed. You, Wonder Woman, should have known not to carelessly fuck with something like that. If her sword is even half as powerful as our version, you are all lucky to still be here. 
It's clear you don't understand what it means to have a corrupted Excalibur being wielded by fucking King Arthur him. Er, uh, herself. Fate, while he is grass, John Constantine is right. The might of Excalibur is immense, and the fact that it is wielded by its true owner, and both are corrupted by this all the world's evil is alarming to a disturbing degree. Zatanna, while I loathe it, I agree with John. You all made a horrible call. Superman, we are well aware of that now. This was a hard lesson, but we need a plan of action, and if at all possible, an estimate on how powerful she might be. Leaning back in my seat, I cross my arms and start to think about that. Just how powerful can someone like that be? John, you fought her a bit, Superman. When she punched you, how exactly did it feel? Superman, in human terms, it felt like an entire city was crushing my chest. Widening my eyes, I could also see Zatanna is disturbed by the news. John, okay, note to self, don't fucking get hit by her. Jesus, well, continued the story Batman, what happened after Udamas is attacked? Zatanna threw me a glare, and I just shrugged my shoulders and took a swig of my booze. Yup, this is a total clusterfuck attacking King Arthur herself while she has Excalibur. After Batman had finished his recap of the total shit show, I couldn't help but sink further in my seat, and sigh. John, yay, this is bad. The fact that the spiritual pressure she can give off, aka her aura for your mundane, can push down most of the heroes and even put pressure on Wonder Woman is terrifying to me if I am being honest. Fate, agreed. The fact that she even confirmed it herself that normal souls would be crushed is also cause for great concern. This is really bad. Zatanna, by crushed, she means destroyed you think? John, most likely. Batman, elaborate. Fate, a destroyed soul doesn't get an afterlife, it gets oblivion. The three non-magicals, Wonder Woman really doesn't count in my books. Looked like they ate a lemon and I don't blame them. Being able to simply destroy weaker souls by just being there, not a good sign for our world. Zatanna. A small silver lining is that she isn't inherently malicious, just indifferent to the lives around her. I know it's not much, but at least we don't have to worry about her just wiping out a city for the giggles of it. John. Oh yay. Real positive there. I comment sarcastically. Zatanna just sighed exasperatedly at me and continued, Zatanna, but the problem remains, how to deal with her, a fight will more than likely destroy any surroundings, so if we pursue such an option we need to have said fight away from any population, fate, I am also concerned that none of the technology meant to track supernaturals worked on her, that will make it so tracking her down will take time, I am hesitant to just choose magic for this, as it might alert her, lighting up a new cigarette, I just grunt and say, leave finding her to me. I am a detective after all, but if I am being honest, I don't want to fight her. I think you all are forgetting two very important things. Superman, what's that? John, one, when she punched you, it actually hurt you. Second, she caught the flash by the neck. Batman, I see your point. Immense speed, or at least reaction time and strength. Is there anything you can tell us about her sword? John, yay, if it's anything like ours, get the fuck out of there. Zatanna just sighed again and said, while I would put it more elegantly, he's not wrong. Excalibur is a weapon beyond legend. It's the strongest sword, her being able to wield it, and even summon it from seemingly nowhere means she is the true user, which means she can bring out the full power of the sword. Shaking her head, she looked at Wonder Woman with complicated feelings. Zatanna, Diana, what were you thinking in supporting an attack on such an entity? Wonder Woman looked troubled when she responded. Wonder Woman, I honestly did not expect her to be so formidable. I also didn't know the full extent of a weapon such as Excalibur. I just know it was a divine weapon of light. I just shook my head at that. Is caution not a word in their fucking dictionaries? Fate. So, what are we all thinking about doing? Letting out a long sigh I say, honestly, I don't want to deal with her. I like my life, thank you very much. I vote we open a portal to a dark universe, and shove her ass through and let someone else deal with her. Zatanna, John, shrugging my shoulders, what? 
This is fucking King Arthur we're talking about, with a corrupted Excalibur. Why is everyone glossing over this fact? This isn't some random fucking ghost or sorcerer cult we're dealing with. The damage this woman can cause could very well be world ending. Get that through your fucking skulls please. Fate, crude, but he is correct. Wonder Woman, you are the more magically inclined. When she released her shackles, how exactly did it feel? Wonder Woman looked down in seemingly shame. Wonder Woman, truly like all the world's evil was in front of me threatening to crush me like an ant, like all the times it feels to fight a darkseid. John, see? And you fucking morons antagonized her. Thank you for that. Shaking her head, Zatanna spoke up. Zatanna, as much as I hate to agree with John, of all people, I think our best bet is to try and force her out of our reality. I think we should play it safe and assume that this Excalibur is as powerful as ours, or maybe even more so, as such, a serious fight with her would lead to the deaths of a lot of heroes, and maybe a country or two. Superman's eyes widened at that, and asked, really? I know she hit me hard enough for it to hurt, but countries? Releasing an annoyed grunt I say, stop underestimating magic, Superman. I'll be honest, if she wanted you dead, I would be willing to take the bet that you'd be dead. Superman crossed his arms, and frowned while looking down in thought. Batman, okay, so let us work under the assumption that we are going to banish her to another dimension or reality. Where should we send her? And with that, this frankly terrifying meeting trudged on. Really though, attacking King Arthur while she was fucking Excalibur. Fucking morons. The lot of them. Even now they are not truly appreciating how royally fucked we are if she truly wishes to fight us. POV switch Artoria. Well, that was fucking awesome. As I sat back at the bar, I was enjoying a glass of something after maze and I had some fun for several hours. While I was lost in thought, I heard some footsteps behind me that snapped me out of my daze. Lucifer, well well. I see you took the opportunity to sample some of our fine delicacies. Looking over at Maze who was bending over to get something, I couldn't help but smirk. Artoria, fine delicacies indeed. Lucky devil you. So, how'd your day go with your soul mate? Lucifer, great I should think, but let's get down to business. What was it you wanted to ask me? Turning around on my seat to face him, I asked my first question. Artoria. Do you know if it was your dad who interfered with my summoning, and freed me from the throne of heroes? Lucifer, oh, I very much doubt that. Good Ole Pops doesn't really do people favors like that. More so, when one is so, steeped in a flavor like you. Artoria, I assumed as much, but just wanted to check. Next major thing is, you're not going to try and send me to hell right? Since I'm a spirit and all, Lucifer just laughed at that. Lucifer, no no, I don't really care. Even if I did take my job seriously, something like you is well beyond my authority to just send to hell. You may be a spirit, but you're not dead. Oh, don't misunderstand, you're not alive either but, well, it's complicated. You're kind of like me I guess. Beyond death, as it were. Artoria, which leads me to my next question. Do you think Lady Death is going to have a problem with something like me? Lucifer brought up his right hand to brush against a non-existent beard as he went into thought. Lucifer, no, I don't think she will. Maybe if you were from our universe or section of multiverse she'd send something after you, but since you actually exist, it means the death of your universe allowed such a thing to happen in the first place. So I think she'll just ignore you, and maybe even thank you for all the ones you'll kill? Never know with Lady Death. Giving him a nod, I crossed my arms to think, but Lucifer shortly interrupted my thoughts. Lucifer, so, what are your plans then, Artoria? Artoria, I was thinking of killing some garbage, and sending it your way. Lucifer barked a laugh at that. Lucifer, ha, sure why not? Just don't go wiping out entire cities to send someone my way, it'll leave a bad taste in my mouth. Giving him a nod I say, sure but no promises, it honestly depends on who I am fighting, and how any heroes respond. Giving me a wry smile Lucifer said, well, that's all I ask, anything else? If not, 
I have a few questions myself. Tilting my head in thought I tried to think if there was anything else to ask. Artoria, ah, do you know magic that can open portals, or teleport you to different universes or multiverses? Lucifer, I do. Artoria, what would I have to do to have you teach me said magic? Lucifer hummed for a few seconds before saying, well, how about a favor one day? Artoria, as long as it's not something outrageous, sure. Lucifer, excellent. Now, before I teach you I want to ask something, do you truly have Excalibur? Instead of answering him, I just hold out my right hand and summon my beauty. Instantly, it appears and Lucifer's eyes widen, and I hear a gasp from Maze. Lucifer, my word, now that is truly a magnificent sword. I dare say it far exceeds the Excalibur I know of by leagues, and the aura it gives off, is truly vile. How fun! And you said this was corrupted by the same source as you? How much are you holding back right now? Giving him a smirk, I get up off the stool, and walk a bit away so I'm not near anything. Artoria, want to see? Giving me a nod with a sly smile on his face, I just smirk and release the hold on my power, and use mana burst at maximum. Well, not like I can actually not use it anything but maximum now that I think about it. Moments later, Excalibur Morgan and myself both erupt in red-black flames and release an oppressive feeling. Lucifer, my word. I am glad I have a barrier around my bar now, otherwise I think you very well would have obliterated some mortal souls around this area with the pressure you are emitting. Maze, yay, not going to lie. I am kinda wet. Both Lucifer and I just laugh a little at that remark. Lucifer, truly though. The feeling you are giving off is most vile. So much so, that you'd expect that you would be nothing but a raging psychopath trying to murder everything and anything. Shrugging my shoulders I say. I just channel this hatred towards trash. Giving me a nod Lucifer said. I can respect that. But you and your sword make a stunning sight, for sure. He looked over at Maze, and then smiled wryly. Lucifer. Might want to put a cork on it though. Maze looks like she's about to jump you, letting out a small laugh. I stop using mana burst, and dismiss Excalibur Morgan. Maze, yay. Excuse me for a bit. I need some new panties. Smiling and shaking his head, Lucifer turned to me and said, Well, in any case, I'll teach you dimension and universe hop. But it might take a while, and even then you might not have enough power to actually use the spell without help. Sounds good? Artoria, yay, sounds good. I won't lie, I am curious to what favor you'll call in one day. Lucifer just smiled at me playfully, you'll have to wait and see now, won't you? After all, it's a deal with the devil. 294, Chapter 6, A Little Flex Here, A Little Flex There, It's been a week since I met up with Lucifer and made a deal to teach me dimensional and universal hop magic. To start off with, Lucifer decided to teach dimensional travel first since he finds it easier. Over the course of the week while learning this magic, I also hung out with Maze a fair amount. I won't lie, I have been enjoying the sex quite a lot. The things that a woman can do with her tongue. MMM. Chief's kiss. While I was fantasizing about Maze and her demonically awesome tongue, Lucifer's voice brought me back to reality. Lucifer, so, how does the training go? Artoria, got it yet, or are you still thinking about getting into Maze's pants? Turning to him and looking up from my seated position on the floor I just give him a wry smile. Artoria, can you really blame me? Do you know how long it's been since I've indulged like this? But anyway, I think I got the spell more or less usable. I was about to test it. Want to see? Lucifer, yay, this could be interesting. Since you don't have enough mana to target specific dimensions yet, I wonder where we'll end up? Grunting in annoyance I give him a nod. Artoria, correct, that is very annoying. But now that I am no longer being held back by the throne of kings, I should eventually start to get all of my power back, and even start to grow. Me being able to learn this spell is proof enough. Anyway, ready? Lucifer held up his hand, and then turned around and shouted to Maze. Lucifer, hey, Maze. Artoria is about to test the dimension magic, 
Wanna bet where we'll end up? I think of the silly putty dimension myself. Or maybe an evil version of this one? Maze yelling back. I vote the evil version. It's so obvious because of how much she radiates. Lucifer, deal. When I win, you have to give me back rubs for a week. Maze, and when I win, you need to give me foot massages for a week. Rolling my eyes at them, I start to prepare the spell. Luckily it wasn't some long ass poem or some shit. It was just using your mana to create glyphs and spell circles. And, as Lucifer put it, a healthy dose of imagination of where you want to go. As the glyphs and spell circles started to appear, Lucifer gave a nod of approval. Lucifer, very good, Artoria. These are perfect. All that is left is the imagination part, and then fueling it with enough mana at once. Once you're able to have the needed mana, I think you'll be able to dimension hop at will. Now, let's see who wins this bet. Rolling my eyes once again. I just activate the magic. Soon after Lucifer and I are covered in pitch black for several seconds. Soon enough though, the black fades and Lucifer and I are standing in the field in the middle of nowhere. Looking around I try to sense anything near us, but I am unable to. I also notice that I am not made of silly putty. Smirking at Lucifer I say, well, we're not made of silly putty. So you lost the bet. Now, is this an evil version of where we were? Or did Maze also lose? Lucifer just sighed and slumped his shoulders. Lucifer, looks like I'll be giving her a foot massage for the next week. This world has something called the Crime Syndicate. Basically just an evil version of the Justice League. Artoria, ah, I know them. I want to fight them. Lucifer, well you're in luck. Someone is heading here. It seems your teleportation wasn't subtle ha. Huh? Artoria, can you tell who it is? Lucifer, think her name was Superwoman. Artoria, awesome. You don't mind if I murder her, and everyone else in their little club? Lucifer, no no, by all means, let loose. I leave and do you a solid. If you're about to die, I'll just transport us back. I want to see how much you can push them. Or if you are just too much. Hearing a sonic boom, I turn to what I think is east to see a small dot gradually getting larger. After several seconds someone crashed down in front of us. As the dust cleared, still in the stupid superhero pose of landing, Superwoman slowly stood up. Superwoman, who are you? Or rather, what are you? Yup. That's Superwoman alright. The heart ones are always fucking bonkers. Now that I think about it, I am included in that now aren't I? Superwoman, hello. Are you an invalid? Answer me. I suddenly heard Lucifer's voice in my mind. They won't be able to see me. This is all your show Artoria. Show me a brilliant display. Choosing to be the silent mysterious type. I just summoned my sword in my right hand and used mana burst. Superwoman's eyes widened at my display, and I could see she was actually affected by my aura a bit, like Wonder Woman was. Superwoman, what the foo, appearing in front of her in an instant. I swung my sword horizontally while flaring up a full powered burst air for the first time. Superwoman, CK. She didn't have time to dodge, so she brought up her arms in an X and hoped for the best. A massive explosion of red-black fire raged from my attack, and engulfed Superwoman whole while causing extreme damage for thousands of kilometers beyond her. After the attack subsided, I heard Lucifer whistle behind me. Lucifer, well, damn me twice. That was impressive. You just obliterated an area roughly the size of China. As the smoke cleared, I saw Superwoman face down on the ground, with no arms. Her whole body was charred black, and her super suit was all but gone. She barely resembles anything human anymore. Artoria, I am surprised how easy that was. Lucifer, how did the League have trouble with this joke of an Amazon? Lucifer let out a chuckle and said, Well, to play my own advocate, the Justice League never sent an attack with that kind of power at her, causing the deaths of Ooh. Just over 30 million. You wiped out a rather large city or two in that attack. And your attack had an obscene amount of magic to it. Obviously, magic that seemed to just up and ignore her defenses for the most part, which is interesting. Turning to look at Lucifer I tilt my head and ask, 
and you're fine with me just killing 30 million people? Or rather, I'm even fine with the fact I just killed so many. I can't feel anything towards their deaths. Nothing. I wasn't a nut job, was I? Breaking me out of my musings, Lucifer said. Nah, not the world I am currently in, and this world will eventually get destroyed anyway. So what does it matter if some of them die now or then? Artoria, out of sight, out of mind, huh? Lucifer just nodded, pretty much. Before I could continue the conversation all of a sudden, the world started to slow down greatly. The next thing I see is a man dressed in the dumbest fucking speedster suit I have ever seen, as he ran up to me with his right arm raised back ready to punch me. I also brought up mine to meet it. The man's eyes widened behind his goggles as we both punched each other's fists. There was a loud kinetic explosion and the ground around us blew apart. The speedster's arm also exploded and turned into mist while the force of the explosion pushed him away from me. I just simply used magic to keep myself from also being flung like a ragdoll. Looking down at the loser, I think his name was J something quick. J quick, gah, my arm. What the fuck? Walking up to him, I raised my left leg above his chest with the intention to stomp down on him. He obviously noticed this as speed force lightning started to course around him. Sadly, he wasn't quite fast enough as I ended up smashing my foot down on the side of his chest instead. My foot unfortunately just passed through him as he faced himself though it, or, rather that was what he was expecting. Instead, my foot crushed his body like a paper bag, and his guts exploded out everywhere. J quick, where? Ho. How? I, thought. I didn't let him finish as I stabbed my sword through his skull. Pulling it out of his head, I turned to Lucifer with my head tilted. Artoria. Okay. How come my foot didn't phase through him like we were both clearly expecting? Lucifer. Short answer. Magic shenanigans. Artoria. And the long answer? Lucifer. Magic shenanigans. I just slumped my shoulders, and dropped my head. Why did I even expect a real answer? Ha. Artoria. Well. That's too dead, in short order. I never understood how speedsters could ever lose though. Lucifer, well, all of them are never going as fast as they can at the start. Not that it matters to you from what I've seen. You have FDL reflexes, which is honestly absurd. Magic really is bullshit, huh? I just shrug my shoulders. Before I could respond though, there were another series of sonic booms. Several seconds later, floating above me and just out of range from my aura, were several more members of the crime syndicate. As I was about to ask Lucifer a question, his voice rang in my head again. Lucifer, if you are wondering where Alman is, you already killed him. He was in one of the cities that were destroyed when you killed Superwoman. Even better, he died taking a shit. Ha. Huh? It took everything I had to not snort or start laughing. The big bad owl bat died while taking a dump. That was just too perfect. Let's see, who do we have here? Power Ring, Ultraman, Grid, and Deathstorm, huh? Power Ring, whoa. What happened to those two? Grid, unknown. Ultraman, are you two fucking around? That woman down there clearly killed them. Power Ring, huh? What woman? Grid. Affirmative. No other life forms detected in vicinity. Firestorm. No. No there is clearly a woman down there dressed in armor with a scary looking sword. Ha. Huh. I can understand Grid not being able to see me because it's just a machine. But leave it to the most cowardly being in this dimension to not even be able to see me with the power ring. Ultraman frowned and let out an annoyed TSK. Great. So we're dealing with something supernatural. Bing bing bing. Well, might as well open up with what worked on Superwoman. Raising up my sword with both my hands, I prepared another full powered burst her. I then brought my sword down and let the attack go. Ultraman, in calm. But it was too late. Once again my attack engulfed everything before me in magical red black fire. Once the attack was done. And the dust had settled I was only able to see Ultraman left. But he was wounded pretty badly. Everything behind him was just molten rock and despair. Ultraman, TSK, magic. Even though he complained, I could see him already starting to slowly heal. Well, that's Superman for you I guess. 
Let's see how far I can go. 261. Chapter 7. A world torn asunder and a meeting in the dark. Without wasting any more time I appeared in front of Ultraman already swinging with another burst air primed. Ultraman frowned at that, and did his best to avoid the swing aimed at his neck. He managed to dodge, but he felt the heat of the attack as it went past his skin and obliterated more of his world. He raised his fist to counterattack as soon as he deemed it safe enough to. I corrected my stance nearly instantly and swung my sword horizontally with yet another burst air to try and bisect him in half. Widening his eyes in surprise Ultraman gawked out, you're kidding. He cancelled his attack and jumped so he was now parallel with my sword, as my attack once again just skimmed past him. As I was at the tail end of my swing, he finally managed to counter me. His fist smashed into my cheek and sent me hurling down to the earth and impacting with the same force as a meteor. The ground around me caved in for tens of meters as the force of the attack pushed me into it. That didn't hurt at all. Oh, this just became even more unfair, causing the mana around me to explode out to clear an area for myself. I shot out of the rubble towards Ultraman in the sky. Ultraman frowned as I was approaching him. No damage? You're kidding. Bending down backwards to avoid my attack, he kicked at my hands causing my sword to leave them. As my sword was about a meter away from me, time seemed to slow down again. Ultraman had straightened himself out, and was making a punch towards my chest with his right hand. As my hands were still above my head, I instead sent a kick towards his incoming fist. Kicking his fist to the left, and before he could even properly react I summoned back my sword and swung down at his outstretched arm. Ultraman's already wide eyes seemed to want to pop out of his head as he tried to save his arm from being cut off. Sadly, he was not fast enough as the sword covered in black light and red black flames cut through his wrist like it wasn't even there. He once again felt the extreme heat of the attack as he watched his severed hand disintegrate along with several centimeters of his forearm. Gritting his teeth in anger, he saw a prime chance to counterattack, and went for it. As he raised his remaining hand in a fist to attack, he saw a dragon's head form out of the light and fire around me and chomp down on him. Ultraman, what the actual fuck? The dragon construct mauled him for a second, shaking him to and fro before sending him crashing down to the earth. As he was falling I sent a burst air to him as a gift. Looking at the incoming attack Ultraman grunted. I really fucking hate magic, POV switch third person. Back on the earth Artoria and Lucifer left. There was yet another meeting taking place with Artoria being the hot topic. Sitting in an unneedly darkened room, several supervillains were seated around a large table. They were, Lex Luthor, the Joker, Cheetah, Poison Ivy, Gorilla Grodd, and Killer Frost. Lex, so to start with. Have we found out what exactly happened to the Justice League's fancy space station, and why it has two massive holes in it? Joker, it seems that good Ole Batsy's made a rare error in judgment. Ha! Huh? My spies. Cheetah, you have spies? Really? Joker, hey, Lex, enough. Continue Joker. Joker, as I was saying, my spies, that I totally have mind you, have found out that the Bats had brought something to the station. They did some things, pissed that something off, and bam, two holes in the sky. Raising an eyebrow Lex asked, and, what was this something? Joker, no idea. I have a videotape of this event, but it's weird. Also, getting this tape was hard. Okay, I'm lying. A little bit of Joker gas here, and some money there and I got it. Sighing Ivy said, just show us the tape already. Joker, hey. Don't get your plant-based panties in a twist. I was getting to it Tilda, jiggling at his own joke. Joke input some commands on the table in front of him, and a video of the meeting started to play via hologram. Grod, who or what are they talking to? Joke, see? Weird. And people say I am crazy. But here we have three capes talking to an empty chair. As the tape played everyone started to get a small picture of what was going on. Frost. King Arthur, huh? And he was actually a she? Lex, I don't think that is our King Arthur. So, they're talking to some kind of ghost. Didn't the League have measures to record such events now? Grod, it would seem they are insufficient. 
typical for humans, really. Cheetah, oh, don't start please. Suddenly, they saw several League members crash to the ground, and then Flash tries to rush the supposed ghost, only to be seemingly caught and thrown. Lex, most impressive. Grodd, agreed. Joker, I am conflicted. I love seeing this side of the bats, but I am not the one causing it. Then they saw Superman and Wonder Woman get punted out of the room by seemingly nothing. Ivy, okay, that was great. Frost, ha, huh? cheetah, ooh, I wish I could see Wonder Woman's face after that hit. Did you hear her arm break? Music to my ears. The video then skips to a hallway view, where they see Superman swing a punch at nothing, only to shoot upwards through the roof again. Grodd, she is manhandling the Man of Steel like an adolescent. Lex, yes. This is most interesting. The vid skips again to the teleportation room, and shows Hawk Girl attacking but suddenly having her mace stop in midair. Grodd, not even NTH metal is enough? This ghost or whatever she is, is dangerous. They all nod at that as the video continues to play. Suddenly, they saw a massive pillar of black light with red-black flames shoot upwards and through the station. And then again in a horizontal attacks blowing out a huge side section of the space station. Ivy, damn. Talk about girl power. Frost. It's a shame she clearly wants to kill us. Lex, indeed. And if their technology truly doesn't work on her. Then ours won't either. We're going to need to send this to everyone. We need some mystical defenses, as much as I loathe it. Cheetah. Why do you not like magic, Lex? Lex just shook his head, and ignored the question. Shrugging her shoulders, Cheetah asked for a plan of action. Lex. First, let's call in some of our more magically inclined members. I am sure the League is also preparing for her in their own way. We might not even have to do anything. Joker, doesn't mean we can't kick the hornet's nest. Maybe sacrifice someone to her and see how much damage she can do. Could be fun Tilda. Ivy, go for it, clown. I am staying very far away from something that can play with Superman of all people like a toy. Frost, I am with Ivy on this one. Joker, oh, you're both boring and no fun. Lex, anyway. Here is what I am thinking we do. POV Switch Artoria, where there was once a beautiful field, is now a wasteland of molten and cooling rock. In front of me, on his knees is a broken Ultraman. Ugly cuts, nasty burns, and now missing his entire left arm, he is just glaring at me. Lucifer's voice rings in my mind again, impressive Artoria. Though, you did a massive number on the planet. Really don't hold back, do you woman? Artoria. Nope. Give it your all, all the time is my motto, Lucifer, so it would seem. Well, claim your prize and let's head back. Artoria, sure thing. This was so fun, but also one-sided. Funny he had no way to actually hurt me. Lucifer, not surprising really, not a lick of magic in his bones. Walking up to Ultraman, I raise my sword one final time. Charging one final burst air. Ultraman, cough you. Arg. You bitch. Who there? The fuck even are you? What are you? Not even gracing him with a response, I bring down my sword, just before the attack is about to hit him, I hear him mumble, Ultraman, I really, really fucking hate magic, the sword and attack connected moments after cutting him in half from head to toe, and then vaporizing the two halves, dismissing my sword, I simply turn to Lucifer and give him a nod, Artoria, I am ready. This was super fun, to be able to fight like this without having the world suppress my magic. Lucifer. Liberating. Isn't it him? Well, let's return then. With a little fanfare of snapping his fingers we were back in his club, Lux. Artoria, it'd be nice if I ever got as powerful as you one day. Lucifer. Lucifer just gave me a wry smile and said, I weep for your enemies the day you are. Oh? Can he tell I have seals on me? Speaking of. When will I unlock my first one? Or even know how to? Walking over to the bar, Maze turns to us and says, So? Lucifer just sulks, causing Maze to laugh. Maze, told you. Ha ha. I am so going to enjoy this next week. To the fullest. Still sulking. Lucifer sighs and says, Yay yeah, yay. Yeah. Maze, so, 
What dimension did you end up in exactly? Artoria, basically just a world with an evil Justice League called the Crime Syndicate. I killed several members, including their version of Superman. Maze let out a whistle. Maze, nice. I knew you were powerful when you released your hold. Artoria, and getting to fight like that just reaffirmed how much I like to fight. But anyway, did anything interesting happen while we were away? Maze, nah. You've only been gone for several hours after all. Artoria, true, true. Clapping his hands once to get our attention. Lucifer had a playful smile on his face. Lucifer, all right, Artoria. Now that you have that spell down enough to use it, it's time I taught you the universe one. It functions much the same way as the dimensional one, but has a few tweaks. Naturally, a much larger cost to activate as you are now. You won't be able to even activate it to randomly hop like the other spell. I give him a nod in acknowledgement. Artoria, yay, that's not a problem. I'll get the power eventually. Lucifer, oh, I agree. The strength I feel from you that is locked away is, quite frankly, staggering. Now then, shall we begin? 265, Chapter 8, No Turning Back. It's been a few days since I returned from my little trip to another world. The whole time was spent getting down the new spell, and not much else. Lucifer wasn't wrong when he said the spell was mostly the same as the dimensional one. But at the same time he was. The spell follows the same principle as the other, but on a much grander scale and the amount of control you need over the spell is immense. That's also ignoring the amount of mana this thing needs. If I have the right feel of it, I'll be able to activate the random hop feature if I unlock my first seal. But I've had no indication on what the unlock condition even is yet. Nor do I have an idea of how long I must wait till it gives it to me. Sighing. I stop my internal bitching and focus again on the spell. I have made excellent progress these few days, and I fully expect to. Oh. It's done. I am glad Artoria had some training in magic or I'd be fucking shit out of luck trying to learn this. But, I am taking to it like a fish to water. I was broken out of my musing by some footsteps and Maze asking me a question. Maze, Artoria, question for you. Why do you always have that armor on? I know you're able to take it off. She bit her lower lip and wiggled her eyebrows to tease me a little. Giving her a wry smile I just shrug my shoulders and stand up. Artoria. It's a second skin to me at this point, honestly. Reaching out and summoning my sword I continue, much like my sword. It's a part of me. I am it as much as it is me. Make any sense? Maze hums in response for a few seconds before shrugging. Maze, kinda. Still though, when you summon that sword your whole demeanor changes so much. It's like you're ready to snap at anything nearby, and only your will prevents untold death from being unleashed. Artoria. Then you'd not be surprised when I say I feel the most at home in battle. Surrounded by hate, death, despair and determination. I was surprised, if I am being honest, when I found out just how much I loved to fight. Which was only a few days ago. But that's neither here nor there. Maze gasped in mock horror and said, no way. You mean to tell me a spirit that was summoned constantly to fight in a war and was stained by evil actually likes to fight? No. Letting out a small chuckle I just shake my head and dismiss my sword. Artoria. Yay yay. Anyway, I am done with the spell. I can't test it because of the lack of mana, naturally, but I thought Lucifer would want to check anyway. He is still out with his soulmate, Maze, that cop lady. Yay. He'll be several more hours. Got any plans then in the meantime? Artoria. Well. I was thinking of going out and hunting. This world has some garbage that could be taken out. I frown and cross my arms in thought and mumble, but I can't fight like I did in that other dimension. Lucifer would probably not like it if this world was nothing but a smoking ball of rock. Maze, that's correct Tilda. I remember you saying you hate holding back, or that you don't, but I suggest you do somewhat. Lucifer can be damn scary when he's angry. Artoria, yay. I agree. I think I'll just watch the news and see if anyone shows up. Maze, and just teleport there with your fancy shadow magic stuff. Giving her a nod, I asked if she wanted to join me. 
she declined saying she has some things to take care of outside of the bar. Maze, I won't be back till late tonight. Don't get into too much trouble now Tilda. Waving her off I say, no promises. She barked a laugh and left the bar. I turned round and sinking into my shadow I disappeared from Lux and reappeared in Lucifer's penthouse. Heading over to his living room, I flopped down on the couch. Looking around for the remote, I was disappointed to see it all the way across the room. Magic for the win. Simply using magic to imitate telekinesis. I threw the remote to myself. Catching it and turning on the TV I started to flip through channels looking for any signs of some villain I'd like to fight. I feel like some anime protagonist who just got their powers and is eager to set the world right. Wait a second. That is exactly what I am. Kinda leaving the channel on some random news show for now. I put the remote down and leaned back into the coach and really started to think. What exactly do I want to do? Well. The first thing is the seals naturally. I want them gone. My power will explode when they are all removed. At that point, I will be able to expand my power to match even one above all maybe? If not, maybe close. But, what do I want to do with all that power? Crossing my arms, frowning while closing my eyes, I tilted my head as I tried to find an ultimate goal beyond just power. Love is off the table. At least for now. I don't feel like conquering and ruling anything. Fighting sounds awesome though. Like, really awesome. I had no idea I was such a battle junkie. Wait, am I just prior from La Pusil but with an Artoria skin? Before I could delve deeper into panic about how I was actually prior, the TV caught my attention. News. This just in. The police are in a firefight in downtown Gotham with the notorious supervillain Bane. We have someone on the ground and will be switching to them soon. Unknown to myself, a dark smile appeared on my face. Artoria, perfect. Sinking into my shadow the second they showed the firefight going on, I appeared in the shadow of one of his goons. Summoning my sword as I was raising out of his shadow I brought my arm backwards. When I was fully out of the shadow, I pushed my sword through the grunt's back and through his heart. Question mark colon what? As blood was starting to drop from his mouth, he looked down in confusion. He couldn't see anything but an outline of an object covered in his blood that seemed to pierce his chest. I violently twist my sword sideways and lift the trash off the ground, causing him to release a blood-curdling scream. This caused everyone to pause what they were doing and look towards us, but all they could see was a man struggling with something, floating in the air screaming. Question mark colon help. Help me. I don't want to die. Not like this. Not like THI. Moving my sword to the side, I easily cut through him and before gravity started to claim its victim back I cut off his head. Officer, what the shit? Turning my head to Bane I could tell he could see me. Bane, I don't know how you're making yourself transparent chicka, but you picked the wrong day to play the hero. He turned around and got a rocket launcher from the stash of weapons from the vehicle near himself. As he was taking aim, the cops were starting to freak out. Officer, he hasn't rebounds the game? What the fuck? Everyone clear out. Bane, die. He shot the rebounds the game at me with a smug smile on his face. That smile faded quite fast when I caught the projectile with no effort. I looked down at the explosive and mused to be able to catch a rocket. Why does this feel like more of an achievement than tanking hits from Ultraman? Ha. Huh. Looking back up at Bane. I just crushed the rocket causing it to explode in my face. Grunt, what is going on? Why did that rocket just stop and then suddenly explode? Bane, Bane, what do you mean? You can't see the chicka that killed our man and caught the rocket? Grunt too. Bane, there is no one there. Bane, what? I then waved my left hand and dispersed the smoke. Bane's eyes widened in horror at seeing me completely unharmed. Bane, fuck this then. He started to pump himself full of venom. I watched in interest as he bulked up a lot. His muscles became even bigger than his head. With drugs like that, how is there even sickness in the world, honestly? And, why does he think he can do more than a rocket? With a roar, he started to charge at me after he was done doping up. I made note that the pavement was lightly cracking under him while he was running. Damn. He must weigh a lot now to crack pavement like that. If I don't activate my mana burst, 
he'll be able to overpower me as I am now in terms of strength, it won't hurt, but it'd hurt my pride, but doing so will kill everyone around here because of my aura, is my pride worth more than their lives? Time seemed to slow down as his fist was incoming towards my face. Centimeter by centimeter his fist slowly moved. As his fist was closing in, I had an epiphany. I am Artoria Alter in all but the mind. But my mind is also changed because of all the world's evil that corrupts me. This is the new me. The new me loves fighting. The new me loves power. And the new me. Just as Bane's fist was about to connect to my face, I erupted in black light with red-black flames. This immediately caused Bane to be crushed into the ground, while outright killing everyone else around me. Dot 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 refuses to let an and like this think he has a chance. Chance. My new pride refuses. Bane, what? What is? Ugh. What is this? What are you doing, Chica? I won't use burst hair, because I don't want Lucifer to kill me. But just this should be fine. Looking down at the garbage struggling to even raise his head I simply raised my sword and with a swift motion cut off Bane's head. I dismissed my sword and turned to leave when all of a sudden I felt something inside me click open. Words appeared in my mind. Tilda accept the new you, embrace it, and the first seal will be undone. Tilda, I then felt a massive amount of power flow through me, or rather, I felt more of my power return. Oh shit, that feels awesome. What a rush. So this is what unlocking a seal feels like? Damn, that is addictive. A pleased smile made its way onto my face as I sank into my shadow to return to Lux. POV switch third. A few minutes after Artoria had left, Two heroes arrived at the scene, as they walked through the bodies the woman spoke with some sorrow in her voice. Batgirl, what happened here? Batman? Everyone is dead. Everyone. Batman, I don't know, but I have a guess. Batgirl, who? Batman, Artoria. Batgirl, that ghost of King Arthur you spoke of? Why? Without answering, he just pointed to the decapitated body of Bane. Looking at the body, Batgirl frowned. Batgirl. Okay, so, why did she kill everyone? Batman, wrong place, wrong time situation. From her own admission, anyone with a weak soul near her when she stops holding her power in check will die. I can confirm that when we fought on the space station, it felt like my entire being was being crushed. Batgirl gulped in worry. Batgirl, how do we fight someone like that? Batman, we don't. We need to do this smart and unconventional or this happens. He waved his hand around the area. Batman. There is also a very high chance we have a lot more dead than this. Aurora, as she called it, ignores things like walls. Batgirl gasped in horror when she looked to where he was looking. Batgirl. Bruce. That's a Dacre. Batman. I know. I am going to call fate and the others. We need a solution for Artoria. Yesterday. 262. Chapter 9. An unexpected visitor appears. Stepping out of the shadows I am back in Lux. Looking around. It's still dead. Looking at the clock and noticing the time. Lucifer should be back in an hour or so. Walking to the corner I have unofficially claimed as my own for magic training. I sat down and closed my eyes to focus. When I felt one of the seals release, I also felt something else within me. Frowning and tiling my head. I continued to focus on the strange feeling. It took me an unknown amount of time, but I was finally able to locate it again. Focusing on the feeling, I tried to draw on it. Suddenly, I felt something on top of my lap. Opening my eyes in confusion, I looked down to see what I had summoned. My eyes widened in surprise at what was on my lap. Artoria, isn't this Lucifer? Well now, if it isn't Avalon, if not corrupted, which shouldn't be a surprise really. Getting slightly startled, I turned to Lucifer with a tilted head. Artoria, when did you get here, Lucifer? Smirking while holding a glass of liquor he says, a while, Artoria, you've been in such deep concentration for several hours. You looked so adorable trying to focus. This was the result, Artoria, ha ha, still not having sex with you. And as for your question, yes, so it would seem. But I don't know why I still have it, thought I lost it. Gasping in mock offense he says, you wound me, my lady. But why would you lose it? Artoria, simple, I don't believe in it anymore. 
Avalon is a joke. The perfect paradise doesn't exist. Lucifer, I see. Makes sense I guess. Well, I can tell the connection between you two is as strong as the connection between you and the sword. Do you need more of your seals lifted before you can use it maybe? Artoria, I knew you knew I was sealed, hey. But, as for them being the key to use Avalon, I doubt it. Question mark colon you're correct. As you can see by how it is also corrupted, the meaning of that scabbard is different. It has changed with you, and while it still recognizes you, you fail to recognize it. Once you do, you'll be able to use it again. Artoria, oh, what makes you thin? Turning to the new voice, my question died in my throat. There's no way. There's no way, right? My eyes widen and almost pop out of my head at the person standing in front of me. Lucifer just sighs in annoyance and says, Father, Stanley, one above all, OAA, just chuckles at the situation. OR, hello son, good to meet you as well, Artoria, trying to close my mouth. I just instead sit in a sea eyes position and slam my face down into the ground, cracking the floor. Artoria, it's an honor to meet you Stanley. I mean one above all, I mean God. OR just lets out a good-natured chuckle while Lucifer sighs again, Lucifer, right, you know the real identity of my father from your world, OR, you can relax, Artoria, I won't do anything to you, for good or for ill, I came here because your recent little venture caused a bit of a disturbance with the higher ups as it were, they wanted my opinion on what to do with you, an anomaly, they are worried because they know nothing of you, or rather, it's more appropriate to say, they can not know anything about you. Even when I tried to look into you, I also came up blank. Lucifer choked a little on his drink when he heard that. Lucifer, I am sorry. What? Or, honestly son, did you never try and see her future? Her past? Anything at all beyond what is just in front of you? Lucifer just huffed in annoyance, and crossed his arms. Lucifer, of course, and when I saw nothing I just assumed you were preventing me. You've done it before, so I didn't think too much about it. And Artoria, get up already. Hesitating a little, I eventually got up out of the position and stood fully. I also dismissed my armor fully to not cause offense. Lucifer, okay, wow. First, nice dress, and wonderfully glowing gold eyes Artoria. Second, I am hurt that you have never shown me this side of you before this. I just turned to him with a deadpan face. OR, ha ha ha. Anyway, to get our conversation back on track, I am mostly here to confirm my suspicion on why I can't see anything on you Artoria, and it looks like I was right. I am doubly glad now I told everyone to let me investigate this, otherwise this could have turned ugly really fast. I turned to OR with confusion in my eyes and a tilted head. OR just gave me a wry smile and said, yay. I am not surprised you don't know you are marked, Lucifer and Artoria, marked, nodding his head like an old sage O.R. said, yes, marked by a being so powerful, she makes me look like a piece of shit on the side of the road, my eyes just widen and my mouth falls open all the way in a dumbfounded state, meanwhile, Lucifer did a wonderful spit take with his drink, I am sorry, what, something that makes O.R. look like that? Lucifer was coughing still but managed to get out a question. You're joking, father? Or just let out a loud belly laugh at our reactions before he calmed down and answered. Or, don't be so surprised son. You know of the omniversal boundaries? Lucifer. Of course. Or, what do you think is outside of them? Nothing? No, you'd be wrong. It's another omniverse. Well a lot of them actually. Really? Humans have come up with some wonderful idioms. Frog in a well is very apt here. To put it simply, I am only all powerful when it comes to my section of the true omniverse, and even then that has a few limits. But out there, in the true omniverse, there are some really scary entities. The one who has marked you, Artoria, is the scariest of them all. Having my mind blown already, I was a little hesitant to ask but my curiosity got the better of me. Artoria, and, do you know who marked me and for what reason? Or just gave me a warm smile and said, yes, I do. 
Her name is Lily Thunel Kitsun. I've met her a few times over the course of my existence. I won't tell you more, because it's not my place, but what I can tell you is that she has marked you for observation. So, she's most likely just watching you for entertainment. But your mark also serves as a warning for entities like myself. Lucifer, warning. Giving a wry smile O.R. said, don't fuck with my entertainment, or be erased. Lucifer's eyes slightly widened at that. Lucifer, she has that kind of power? Barking a laugh O.R. just said, oh, easily son, easily. She can erase my omniverse and everything in it with less than a thought. Artoria, scary. Lucifer, agreed. So, how often do you meet people marked by her father? O.R., Artoria here is only the second one since I came to know her. Lucifer released a breath in relief. Lucifer, then she isn't one to interfere too much with things? O.R., not often no, but there are times when she becomes active and totally messes everything up to get entertainment. But, anyway, don't worry about her too much you two, it'll just cause you undue stress because you can literally do nothing if she does decide to show up. Lucifer and I just nod our heads to that. Wow. So, now I know who sent that survey, but still, wow. The power this Lilith has. I can't even begin to imagine it. O.R. Anyway, now that I have confirmed you are indeed marked by Lilith no less, I'll make sure the others know to leave you alone. Ah, but don't let this go to your head Artoria. Some entities do not know about these marks, or even care. So, it's my suggestion to just carry on as if you didn't have it. Artoria. Yeah, okay. Sound advice, but you... Are you really Stanley? Oh I let out a good chuckle and said, yes, I am. I went around to several worlds to spread stories about some of my creations. Did you enjoy them? I gave him a nod and a smile. Artoria, I did, yes. Thank you for sharing them with other worlds. They are good entertainment. Even if that sounds bad now, knowing that all those events actually happened, he just waved it off. Oh R, it is what it is. Normally, the worlds that know about me and my comics don't come into contact with the worlds from the stories. But it happens. Anyway, I am going to leave now. I came and saw what I wanted. It was nice meeting you, Artoria. Even you, Lucifer. Ah, before I go, again, you are connected to Avalon like you are with Excalibur Artoria. Just need to identify that connection to make use of it. That's my hint. Goodbye you two. And with that, O.R. was just simply gone. Looking down at Avalon in my hands, I then look back up to Lucifer. Artoria, that really happened right? Lucifer, it did indeed. Surprised my father is so whimsical. Shaking my head I say, no, not really. More surprised he didn't just snap me out of existence for being here. Lucifer just shrugged his shoulders and casually said, my father isn't really like that. Even without that scary mark I am sure he'd leave you alone. So, this was kind of a wild ride for a while there, and it's late to ask but whatever. How does it feel to have one of those seals on you to be removed? I give him a smile. Great. I feel a lot stronger. Looking down at Avalon I continue, but I have no idea what you are meant about Avalon. Well. I understand, but I don't know what exactly the new meaning could be. Something I'll have to think about it seems. Crossing his arms and stroking his fake beard again Lucifer said, Indeed. From the power I feel from you, you will be hard to hurt now, let alone kill. Adding on top of what Avalon is said to do? Well, dismissing Avalon I just shrug and sigh. Yay, more forms of healing and immortality are never a bad thing for someone like me. Giving me a nod. Lucifer turned round and headed towards the bar to refill his drink. Lucifer, now that I am thinking about it, what did you do today that could cause a stir with some of the wardens? Artoria, I killed Bane today, and well, a lot of other people got caught up in the fight when I released my aura, nodding and giving me a hum in acknowledgement. Lucifer poured himself something to drink, taking a sip and turning to me and then leaning back on the counter he asked me a question. Lucifer, can you show me the new power you have? Before, your aura covered quite the distance, and now that you are quite a lot stronger I am curious. Artoria, sure, I don't mind. Summoning all of my armor back on, and Excalibur Morgan, 
I released my hold and used mana burst. Lucifer let out a long and impressed whistle. Lucifer, damn girl. The power I am feeling from you is very impressive. And to think you have even more seals on you yet. From what I can see, your aura would cover half of the city we are in right now if my barrier didn't prevent it from leaking out. I frown at that. Artoria, I need to get a handle on this then. That could become very problematic as more seals are released. Lucifer, I am happy you share my thoughts on the matter. I'll set up a new barrier in my penthouse so you can train and not be bored. Now, I won't stop you from going out and having fun, but I do want to ask if you could not fight in this city. I would be quite cross with you. Giving him a nod I said, yay, that's no problem. I am not going to hold the mark over you. Lucifer, you helped out before either of us knew about it, and honestly, I like you as a friend. You're one cool dude, so I don't mind honoring that request. Lucifer just gave a chuckle at that and a playful smile. Oh my, friend zoned already am I? Damn. Anyway, let's set up that barrier for you. Dismissing my sword and stopping mana burst. I follow him to his penthouse. To think Stan Lee was actually OR for real. Crazy. 260. Chapter 10. Aftermath. Tilda a day after Artoria killed Bane Tilda. POV John Constantine. Lighting up a fresh cigarette I take a puff and sigh. Well, this is an absolute clusterfuck. Growling in frustration and scratching the back of my head I turn down the corridor and make my way to the main meeting room in the Hall of Justice. I had finally made some headway on where Artoria ended up, but it seems she caused some problems of sorts and Batman has called all a mass meeting. I just know this is going to be painful, and the information I have isn't much overall, but what I do have is damn scary. Coming up to the door to the meeting room, I sigh and lament what is about to happen. No one is going to be happy with this information, and no one is going to want to believe it. Taking another puff of my cigarette, I steal myself for the shitstorm and open the doors. Entering the meeting room. I am able to see a whole lot of heroes. Batman really did call everyone who could attend. Just what did Dartoria do? Several people all turned to see who entered, and most gave me a nod and went back to talking amongst themselves. One person however didn't, and instead made their way to me. Zatanna, John. John, Zatanna. Big meeting huh? Zatanna sighed and responded with some sadness in her voice. Zatanna, it got ugly. John, real ugly. I hope you have some information. John, I do. But it might be as ugly, or worse than whatever she did. She hung her head at that. Zatanna, not what I wanted to hear, honestly. Well, let's get seated John. This is going to be rough. Making my way over to the table. I just sat at a random spot. Normally I try to sit away from people, but it doesn't look like that'll be an option today. About 20 minutes later, Batman, Superman and Wonder Woman all entered the room and headed to the front. The room was massive, honestly. Could easily fit everyone here and there were at least 50 of us, with room for more still. I could appreciate the open design and how one wall had six giant windows to show outside. As soon as Batman made it to the front with the other two, he hit a button that closed all the blinds and darkened the room a fair amount. Superman then stepped up to the front and started to address us. Superman, thank you everyone for responding to this emergency meeting. We wanted to have it sooner, but we needed time to sort some things out. Now, the main and only topic of today is the spirit known as Artoria Alter. Some of you may have read the report from the space station incident. If not, I'll do a quick summary of what happened. I tuned out Superman as he was going over what happened while showing a wonky looking recording of the event. Still baffles me why modified tech cannot detect her at all. As Superman finished the recap, several heroes asked a few questions to clear some things up. After he was done with all of that, he moved on to the current reason we were all summoned. Superman. As many of you heard, yesterday Bane as well as a slew of other people were killed. Artoria is the prime suspect. Our main reasoning for this suspicion is from several things. First being the CCTV footage and second with how everyone was killed. Please have a look. 
He then pressed a button and the room got even darker and the wall behind him lit up with several angles of a firefight. Wonder Woman, watch this man here first, she said as she pointed to a seemingly random goon off to the side. Suddenly, he stopped firing his weapon and looked down. Then he was lifted up and was struggling against something. As I looked close enough, I could see the outline of a sword from his blood as it ran down the blade. Shouldn't really be thinking this. But that arsehole dying to Excalibur is a privilege he shouldn't get. Suddenly, a line appeared on his chest and then his head and arm fell off his body as it crashed down to the pavement. Flash, crazy, Shazam, yay, if this was a movie and not real life, that'd be really cool. Looking at Bane, he seemed to be talking to someone and then reached for a rocket launcher of all things. Really, how the fuck do these shits keep getting that kind of weapon so easily? He then shot the rocket at nothing, only for the rocket to stop mid-air for seemingly no reason. Shazam, she caught it, why would, and then the rocket exploded. Looking at Bane, his body language suggested the attack didn't go as planned, which was confirmed when the smoke cleared itself and then he started to bulk up. Still find that shit impressive every time I see it. He then charged and after running to where the rocket blew up he and everyone else in the cameras crashed to the ground. Shazam, wait, what happened? Batman, she stopped holding her power in check. It was at this point everyone within one kilometer died if their souls were weak. There were a lot of innocents who fall into that category. Aquaman, Batman, was that? Batman, yes. The total death toll of this event was over 1,400 people, women and children included. That leaves a bad taste. And it is only going to get worse. The entire room was silent at that, and frowning. Superman, now you know what happened and just what danger Artoria represents. We. Interrupting Superman I said, sadly, Superman. You don't. Batman. Explain. I take it you found something? John, yes. And it's a whole lot worse than we thought. Sighing at what I was about to say. I took a puff of my cigarette and a swig from my canteen. John, I got into contact with someone who has been hanging around Artorio it seems since she left the space station, and what he has said about her, frankly, scared the fucking shit out of me. Wonder Woman, who is this person? John, Lucifer, Zatanna, Morningstar? John, that's the one. Superman, the devil, Flash, you're joking? I just sigh and shrug my shoulders. John, I don't give a fuck if you don't believe me, but I really suggest you do. Because if his info is solid, and I have no reason to doubt it isn't, we are beyond fucked if we try to fight Tartoria. Zatanna, I can confirm Lucifer is indeed real. Why did you seek him out though? John, normally he doesn't interfere with mortal affairs at all. John, that's where Artoria's tracks led me. To his city. So. I took a guess and asked him. After a deal, which I won't get into, he told me what she's up to, how powerful she is and stuff like that. Shazam. And? John. And like I said, we're fucked. Lucifer made a deal with her as well, and taught her the spells for dimensional and universal travel, and they tested the dimension hop the other day, taking a swig again, I continue. They ended up in a world where the Justice League was evil. She killed a lot of them, including their Superman, and practically destroyed their planet in the process. Everyone's eyes widened at that, and the room erupted in murmurs. Flash, you're kidding right? First the devil. Now this? Say I believe you for a minute, and the devil is real. He's the devil. He most likely lied to you. Zatanna. Lucifer never lies. He takes pride in that. He often says the truth is more harmful than a lie. Nodding my head at that I sigh. John, and it gets worse. Batman, how? Huh? John, after she killed Bane, something happened to her. It seems she was sealed when she was summoned here. And one of those seals was broken. She is vastly more powerful now. Lucifer said her aura is now the size of Los Angeles. Wonder Woman. This is most troubling news. Shazam, selling it a bit low their sister. If she was already powerful enough to kill a version of Superman, and everyone around her in a large radius and practically destroy a planet, and now she is stronger, I vote that we don't fight her, and we try to banish her from our reality, and lock her out of it somehow. John, 
One of the few times I agree with you Shazam. Fighting her is beyond foolish at this point. Need I remind you three, when she was first summoned her aura disabled everyone but three people on the station. Now that it's stronger, I bet she'll be able to disable everyone but Superman maybe. And outright kill nearly everyone else. Zatanna nodded her head and said, I agree with John. We can't fight her. Superman, then we do what Shazam suggested. We force her out of our reality, and somehow lock it out to her. Problem is, do we know how to do that? Fate, I do. But it will take time to prepare such a spell. And it's not without its dangers and drawbacks. Flash, drawbacks. Fate, to lock someone out permanently will take a massive amount of magic. I will most likely die. Zatanna, what? No. Not happening. Fate, Zatanna. This is our only real option. Lucifer said a seal was broken on her, meaning there are more seals still and she will only get stronger. We cannot have such a powerful entity that doesn't care for the sanctity of life on our planet. Zatanna, but, fate, enough. I am sorry, but this has to happen. Superman, the preparations for this spell will take several days. Superman gave a grim nod. Superman, okay, we have a plan of action, but Zatanna, in the meantime I want you and anyone who will help you to look for an alternative. I'd prefer not to have to make any sacrifices for this. Zatanna gave a hard nod towards Superman, her eyes blazing with determination. Going to be a pain, but well, it's not so bad I guess. Superman, okay, now, let's go over measures to take in the event Artoria shows up before we're ready. Tilda meanwhile in a hidden base somewhere in the world Tilda. POV change third. We're ready. A man in a nice white suit then lowered the volume on the projection in the middle of the room and turned his attention to everyone in the room. Lex, well, sirs, I can vouch that the information from Lucifer is going to be valid. I've conversed with him a few times, and he indeed never lies. To think those damn heroes have antagonized such a horrible existence so needlessly. Grod, humans. What do you expect? In any case, what will we do? I personally am all for staying in the shadows and off the grid until this Sartoria is gone. If she can kill a Superman, well, need I say more? Joker, ha, huh? I am with the monkey on this one. I am insane, not stupid, sirs. I also agree with that sentiment. For anything to impress Lucifer enough for him to help or make a deal with is enough to keep a wary eye on. And well, a sword like Excalibur can kill a lot of things that are normally unkillable. Lex, noted. Out of curiosity, if the sword is so powerful why have you not tried to get it sirs? Sirs. Oh, I have. Let's just say the sword can pick you can use it, and when someone it doesn't like touches it. Well, Lex, I understand. So, we all agree to stay out of this for as long as we can? Grod. They seem to have a good enough plan of action. Now I am regretting not going with Poison Ivy to the Amazon forest. No cameras out there, so it would be quite safe. Lex, yes. Unfortunately for me, I cannot go underground as easily as you all. But, I won't be making any public appearances for now. Silver lining is I have nothing in the works anytime soon, so going under the radar won't be any trouble for me. Sirs, I had something in the works. But I am putting that on hold till that spirit is gone. Grod, agreed. Lex, alright, I'll message everyone with the suggestion of laying low. Let's end it here, and meet up in a week if nothing happens before then. Don't forget you can attend via hologram. Everyone gave a nod to Lex, and got up to leave. As Lex was leaving he thought to himself, able to kill Superman huh? Would I be willing to take a risk to make that fight happen? 243. Chapter 11, Darkness Approaches with Malicious Intent. It's been several days since Lucifer has suggested I try to control my aura, and I have made next to no progress. My power, by what I can feel, by its nature is chaotic and free. It wants to run wild with me, and destroy and consume. Trying to tame this power is clearly going to take a while, if I am even able to. Honestly I am doubtful at this point. But Lucifer has the right of it, it will become very problematic if I don't get this under control. Sighing, I just flop backwards onto the little pile of pillows I gathered. Reaching for the TV remote, 
I turn it on and start surfing for any activity to release some of my pent-up battle lust. As I was flicking through the channels I heard the elevator ding. Turning my head around lazily I see Maze step out, and give her a wave. Artoria, hello Maze. Maze, hey, Artoria. No luck still. Shaking my head I stop changing the channels on the TV, leaving it on a news station, and sigh dramatically. Artoria. Nope. I can tell a part of myself resents the idea of having to hold myself in check. One thing I have confirmed though, is that my new base as it were, is my old self using mana burst. So I also took some time to train myself not to break anything. Maze. You mean anything else? The look on Lucifer's face when you somehow ripped on the rug and put a three meter hole in his wall was priceless. Grinning slyly and turning around embarrassed I scratch my left cheek with my finger. Artoria, yay, that kind of snuck up on me. Turning back to the TV I sigh as the reporter said it was another miraculous day of peace and quiet. Artoria, this world has smart super villains it seems. They all but fell off the grid after the Bane kill. Maze just laughed at that and said, yes, and it also has nothing to do with you slaughtering several other no-names. Artoria, hey, I kept one alive. Maze just gave me an amused look and said, Artoria, he stole a purse and you cut off his legs. I just cross my arms and pout while looking away. Artoria, he shouldn't have stolen the purse then. Maze just gave a sly smile and came to sit near the cough near me. Maze, so. What are your plans for today? Dropping my act. I once again flop down on my pillows with a sigh. Artoria. Don't know. Honestly. I want to find a hero and fight them. But I don't think I can hold myself back, and I'd end up killing them. Maze. Ha. Huh? Yes. I can easily see that happening. With that seal removed. Do you have enough mana to target dimensions yet? Shaking my head I say with clear disappointment in my voice. No, sadly I don't. I've been going over the spells Lucifer taught me, and they are not exactly efficient. Most likely by design, but may. The next seal should give me the mana needed for targeted dimensional hop. At least I can use the random feature on both spells now, so there's that. Maze hummed in acknowledgement. Maze, any luck on your scabbard thing? Artoria, you mean Avalon? Not much. But I do understand now that it no longer has anything to do with a promised utopia or some shit. So I am thinking that not only has the purpose of its name changed, the name itself is also different. And just calling it Exavalon won't do. Hey, Maze gave a light chuckle at that and nodded. Maze, so, why don't you go searching for some of the hidden bases of supervillains? You have the knowledge no? Since you were on a world where God released comics of these worlds. Which is fucking strange, but hey it's God. He can do whatever the shit he wants. Artoria, too lazy. And I don't know everything. I only read the comics in passing really. So while I know the strengths and weaknesses of a lot of heroes and villains, I don't know exactly where they shore up. Sighing I look up at the roof. Artoria, if I am being honest, I thought it would be a lot more fun to meet the heroes and shit. But you know the saying, never meet your heroes. Ha, huh. I have so much more experience than all of them. And yet they don't even consider that my way is just as valid. Maze, and a lot more bloody. You've killed a lot of people since coming here, Artoria. I just shrug at that. Artoria, May. They are not my subjects and honestly, I am not a king anymore. I have too much hate for. Well. A lot of things now to even want to rule something. I'd rather keep fighting and having fun while doing it while also taking trash out. Maze, you realize that you could very well be described as the trash you talk about? With the amount of innocent deaths by your hands? Again, I just shrug. Artoria, A. They are just collateral damage. I don't go out of my way to harm or save. Mortals such as them die eventually. What does it matter if they get caught up in a fight of mine and die sooner than intended? Maze, true, but what about the people whose souls you destroy because of your aura? They won't get reborn or anything. I slightly frown at that. Artoria, yay. I've been wondering about that. Are they truly destroyed, or 
Are they like the rumors in my old world about soul destruction in that they are only destroyed down to their base and become something akin to a new soul, having all of their knowledge, karma, and all that jazz destroyed, essentially just being reset. Maze also frowned at that. Maze, that's an interesting theory. Maybe Lucifer would know? Question mark colon no what? The two of us turn our heads and see Lucifer getting a drink from the bar he has in the penthouse. Maze, that souls are not truly destroyed, but more like reset. Lucifer, ah, from her aura I take it. We both nod. Lucifer, they are reset. At least for now. But I suspect that once you get powerful enough Artoria, it will actually start erasing them. Giving a hum, and looking back at the roof. Artoria, while interesting. It ultimately changes nothing. Lucifer, do you know? Before I could finish my sentence I sensed something and my head snapped towards the direction. Lucifer, oh, looks like they already started. Maze, they? And what did they start? Lucifer, the heroes of this world have decided on an interesting choice. They can't fight Artoria, so they are going to just basically banish her from this universe and lock her out. Maze's eyes widen slightly and her eyebrows raise. Maze, are they nuts? She clearly senses it. Artoria. Yeah. This feeling like something is trying to push me is weird. So, they want to tangle a bit huh? I hope they have some entertainment prepared. Lucifer. Oh, I bet they do. I am going to assume this is the last time we'll see each other for a while. Artoria. Was a pleasure. Truly, he raised his glass to me in a cheers motion. Maze, yay, I am going to miss that sexy body of yours Tilda. Artoria, ha, huh? I'll be back eventually Maze. Rocking your world was fun. Anyway, time to see how they want to play. Never know, I might stop them. Waving to the goodbye, I start to sink in my shadow. All right then heroes, let's play. Tilda some desert far from any civilization. An hour ago Tilda. POV switch third, several heroes could be seen going around the area like busy little bees preparing for a fight. There were several runes carved magically into the sand all over the place, and in the middle of all of it was Dr. Fate carving the largest rune. Off to the side, Zatanna could be seen crying softly in the arms of John Constantine. Zatanna, it's not fair. Why him? I am a failure. I couldn't find anything else. John had an awkward look on his face as he hugged the poor girl. John, that's life Zatanna. We tried our best, even going to Lucifer again. But he confirmed that this was the only spell that could even remotely remove Artoria from our reality. Zatanna, but it's not even permanent. My fur there is going to die just to what? Buy us time? John, time we need. Zatanna. Zatanna, even worse is that we're simply throwing her to someone else to deal with. John, it's not perfect by any stretch, Zatanna, we know, but we can't save everyone, and sometimes the lesser of two evils isn't all that lesser. Further from the two, there was Superman and Batman with Wonder Woman going over the plan again. Superman looked at Zatanna and a sad look took him over. Superman, this whole situation is leaving a horrible taste in my mouth. I don't think I have ever felt this bad about a situation like this. Wonder Woman, that is because this is a unique situation. I feel for the woman, to lose her father like this, but his sacrifice is not meaningless, and will save a lot of people, perhaps even our planet. Batman, agreed. We need more time to come up with a real solution. It would be foolish to think this will keep her away forever. We are about to slight her with our actions, and I very much doubt she will forgive that. Floating down to the trio, Green Lantern spoke up. Green Lantern. I spoke with the Guardians about Artoria, and what they did and said. Well, it's not good guys. Superman. What do you mean Hall? Giving a sigh, Green Lantern said. When I explained what she is and what was happening, they immediately told every lantern to mark this section of the universe as dead and to avoid it. Wonder Woman and Superman's eyes widened at that. Wonder Woman, why would they say that? They clearly know something it would seem. Batman, agreed. And whatever it is, scared them enough to abandon the duty they took up. This is not a good sign. Green Lantern. When I asked, they said I wasn't cleared for that kind of information. But they strongly suggest I leave this planet as well, and follow the order. And they said if I engage Artoria, 
we will get no backup from many of the Green Corps. Superman, well, that is not ominous at all, is it? Wonder Woman, now I am thinking I should have consulted the gods, but it's too late for that. Nodding her head to Dr. Fate, it seems he was done drawing the final rune. Fate, I am done everyone. Once I start to supply this with magic, it will be like a beacon to Artoria and she will come. Everyone gathered around to talk about the plan once more. The ones who will be fighting will be Superman, Wonder Woman, Shazam, Black Adam, and Etrigan. These were the heroes who they hoped would have strong enough souls to withstand Artoria to defend fate while he cast his magic. All the other heroes were going to be far away from the fight to try and keep any splash damage contained if the need arises. Shazam, I am honestly surprised you showed up Black Adam. Black Adam, hush child. I know the danger this spirit is to my homeland. I also know I wouldn't be able to take her myself. I know when to set aside my misgivings and work with the lessors. Shazam, lessors, right. Etrigan. Black Adam has the right of it. This will be a fight that some of us will not come back from. Shazam. No rhymes? Etrigan, that is just how serious this situation is. I don't want to waste anyone's time trying to figure out what I am saying. Shazam. Wait. You rhyme for fun? Etrigan just gives Shazam a smug smile. Superman. Okay, to go over the plan, which is very simple honestly. Do everything we can to keep Artorio away from Dr. Fate. Try to stay alive, everyone. Zatanna and John then went to opposite sides of the runes and started to cast the spell. Moments later a barrier formed around it all. Zatanna looked at Dr. Fate with eyes filled with sorrow. Zatanna, I love you father. Dr. Fate removed his helmet as he sat down on the ground. He looked up to his daughter and smiled. Giovanni Zatara, I know, my daughter, and I am sorry, but fate is right. Artoria is too powerful to be left alone. And fighting her is just asking for our world to be destroyed in the crossfire. Tears started to flow from Zatanna's face as she looked at her father for the last time. Zatanna, I know, I know. But it's not fair. Giovanni Zatara, that's life, kid. I want you to make me proud though. Be the hero I know you can be. I know you will find a way to prevent Artoria from ever coming back eventually. You have it in you, my precious daughter. As he was lifting the helm of fate back up, he gave her one last smile. Giovanni Zatara. I love you, Zatanna. Zatanna. I love you too, daddy. With that, Giovanni Zatara put the helm back on and once again became Dr. Fate. He started to float in a seated lotus position, and went into the middle of the runes. Fate. I am ready to start everyone. Superman gave a hard nod and everyone but the people who were staying started to be teleported out. Before going as well, Batman turned to Superman. Batman, I have satellite feed and will send drones as well. They won't be able to see her naturally, but it should help since we can see her attacks. Nodding to him. Batman was covered in light as he was also teleported away. The only people left were now Dr. Fate, Superman, Wonder Woman, Shazam, Black Adam, Etrigan, and Green Lantern. Green Lantern, all right guys, I am also going to head off. Her aura before caused me to crash down, so I doubt the ring will be able to save me this time. Good luck, Shazam, thanks Green Lantern. He was then covered in his green light and shot off to the sky, Etrigan, and then there were six. Is everyone ready? As harsh as this sounds, I fully expect a few of us to die today. Everyone gave a serious nod at that. Fate, I am starting then. Expect her soon. And good luck everyone. This will take 100% of my focus and energy, and I will be unable to do anything. Wonder Woman. We understand. We will keep you safe. How long will this take? Fate. It is unknown. It all depends on how much she can resist. It could happen instantly, or take as long as an hour. Shazam. Yay, let's hope it's not an hour. Black Adam, agreed. Now, let us be done with this. The sooner that spirit is gone, the safer my homeland will be. Fate. Very well. I will now begin. As soon as he said that, the runes all around the sand lit up blue and gold, and lifted off the ground to surround fate. About a minute later, Black Adam's head snapped to the front of them. Black Adam, she comes. Everyone turned to look at the spot, 
and what they saw was worrying. A black pool of sorts was starting to grow away from them. As it got larger and larger black with red outline ribbons started to shoot out of the black substance. They all started to combine into a big ball after several seconds, and once they all formed a cocoon of sorts, black light was starting to shine from within. Everyone made note of the dark purple mist flowing through the area. As it blackened the sand it passed over. Shazam, guys, this wasn't included in the briefing. What the hell is this? You can literally feel the evil in the air. Black Adam just glared at the black substance and the mist and said, This must be the all the world's evil that was spoken about. Do not touch the water or mist. Everyone gave a nod while Shazam let out a little gulp. Soon enough, the cocoon of ribbons exploded outwards and revealed Artoria Altar. Thankfully for the heroes, the black water and mist stopped progressing after she appeared. Tilda with Artoria before she appeared Tilda. POV switch Artoria, while I was traveling through the shadows to where I could feel the pushing sensation coming from, I had an idea, I wonder if I can use the corruption in me to do a few things that happened in the shows, like her appearing in the ribbons and tainted sludge, I should be able to, I can just use illusions for the ribbons if all else fails, arriving at my destination, Instead of normally using a shadow to exit, I instead focus on the point of sand away from all the shadows the heroes are casting. Focusing on my will and the corruption in me, a black pool started to form. As it got larger and larger I walked into the middle of it. As soon as I touched it, I felt a connection. It felt like coming home, of all things. Focusing again on what I wanted to happen. I saw all the ribbons exactly as I envisioned them form around me, I then felt myself being pulled out of the shadow world inside the cocoon that formed, and my connection to the black pool grew stronger and more firm. Smiling down at it, I couldn't help but bask in the feeling it was giving off. Shaking my head after a few seconds, I pushed my will into the ribbons and they exploded outward revealing myself to the heroes. Superman, Wonder Woman, Shazam. Black Adam, and Etrigone should be fun fighting Black Adam. Superman and Wonder Woman suddenly frowned at me and looked troubled. Superman, this isn't good. Shazam, what do you mean? Wonder Woman, I assume it's the same for him as it is for me. She is slightly transparent. Shazam's eyes widened greatly at that. Shazam, what? Black Adam, it is not surprising. Their souls are not as strong as ours nor are they nourished with as much magic as ours. Superman, this is going to be a lot harder than I initially thought. Having heard enough, I internally smirked at the fact that two of their heavy hitters were no longer in such a strong position of power against me. Artoria, hey guys. So, what are you doing? Shazam, what am I doing? Artoria, what are you doing? Shazam, nothing much. Artoria, thwart in my plans? Shazam, Thwart in your plans? Artoria, are you? Shazam, yes. I summoned my sword in my right hand, and used mana burst. Immediately the area is covered in my aura, and the barrier around fate lets out a groaning sound. Meanwhile Superman and Wonder Woman slouch over and also groan in pain. While Shazam and Black Adam frown heavily, Black Adam, this is a great deal more than what I was expecting honestly. This is no joke of a spiritual pressure. Shazam, are you too okay? I'm even feeling this train. Superman, we'll be fine, but fate better hurry, because I don't know how long I will continue to be fine. Wonder Woman, it is so much worse than the first time. Superman, I cannot fight like this. It is taking nearly everything I have to just stand. It feels like my soul is going to crush to dust. Superman gave her a nod as Wonder Woman was covered in light and was teleported away. Etrigan, well, the evil I am feeling from her takes the cake, and I've been to little hell. Black Adam, agreed. All of my instincts are screaming at me to run if possible. This has never happened before, and that's not even taking into account what I am feeling from the sword. Shazam, yay. It feels just as bad as her. Be careful everyone. That thing can most definitely cut and kill us with ease. Looking at you Superman. Nodding, Superman had a grave look on his face. Superman, our outlook is looking bleaker by the second. 
Having enough of their chatter, I raise my sword and prepare a burst her. Black Adam, shit, shield now. As powerful as you can manage you to. Now, with my burst head uncharging, and their shield coming into being, I swing my sword downward and let my attack go. The entire area is covered in red light with red-black flames. 235, Chapter 12, Valiant Heroes and Sinister Darkness. Announcement. Poll at the end tilde. Please vote. As my attack finished and the dust that was still kicking around had just started to settle, I heard Lucifer's voice echo in my head. Lucifer, oi. Could I ask you to not do that again please? It's understandable that you don't really know your limits since the release of the seal but that attack was no joke Artoria. I had to stop it with a barrier just before it hit the sea. Otherwise you would have obliterated a massive portion of the world's water supply. Oh? My bad Lucifer. Got a little into it, it would seem. How bad was the damage? Lucifer. Well, that attack would have covered half the globe lengthwise and about 6,000 kilometers wide if I didn't step in. So, as a favor to myself, could you not? Damn. Okay. I won't use burst air anymore as a favor to you. The dust was still settling and I couldn't see anyone yet so I continued to banter with Lucifer. Speaking of favors, you haven't called in yours. You could do that instead of owing me a favor, yeah? Lucifer. Oh, I could. But it would be a huge waste. I have a great plan I want you to fulfill with my favor, but you're not strong enough yet, not even close. So, look forward to that, Artoria Tilda. Ominous. I can't wait till I am strong enough. Lucifer, ha, huh? we'll see if you still hold that opinion when you learn what I want you to do. Anyway, I am going back to my, not date with you know who, so later Artoria, saying goodbye to Lucifer. The dust was finally starting to settle. Getting a little impatient I used some wind magic to clear the battlefield, and what I saw in front of me, brought a smile to my face. All three of the magic users were on their knees holding out one arm to support their barrier spell. Ignoring them briefly, I look beyond them and all I see is molten rock and destruction. I don't know if I could ever tire of such a sight. Hearing Shazam talk brought my attention back to them. Shazam. Okay, what the absolute shit guys. That is so far beyond what we've been told she can do. Etrigan, I have to agree. If it were not for you Black Adam, I hazard to guess we would all be dead right now. Black Adam, yes, well, don't get too relaxed. Look at her, she's not even winded. Superman, Batman, come in. Batman, Batman here. Superman, the damage is immense. We are lucky the attack was faced the way it was, and something stopped it from hitting the ocean as well. I was able to teleport everyone out of the way, so no casualties this time. Superman, that is good news, but her attack reaching the ocean from here is not. John, Constantine here. That's not even half of it Superman. We just avoided an extinction level event. Her attack, if it wasn't stopped, would have boiled away at least half of the ocean. Shazam, what the abso. Black Adam, she comes. Having heard enough of their conversation, and wanting to fight, I charged them. Because I was permanently in mana burst my sword was also empowered, and my swings were no longer just that. Closing in on Black Adam, I appeared slight above in front of him with a two-hand swing going diagonally downward from his left. Black Adam, shit. Black Adam brought up both his arms, while also forming a barrier around them to block my attack. As my sword hit his shielded arms there was a loud cracking sound as both his arms and shield nearly buckled under the strength, followed by an explosion of fire and light. While he succeeded in blocking the attack, it sent him several meters into the ground. Before I could follow up, Superman rushed me and crashed his fist into my face. Sadly, for the man of steel. All he managed to do was turn my head slightly. Crushing his chest with the back of my left hand fist. I sent him barreling away causing him to break the sound barrier a few times as well. Raising my glowing sword to strike at Black Adam. I was once again interrupted by a golden lighting bolt and a massive fireball hitting me. I knew I had magic resistance. But damn. I didn't even feel those. Clearly all my stats are just way beyond what I started out with. I am looking forward to even more seals being released that much more now. Lowering my sword, 
I turn my attention to the two that attacked me. Shazam, hey now, what kind of joke is this? Etrigan, if this is a joke, I am not laughing. While that wasn't my strongest spell, it should have at least done something. Shazam, yay, same with mine. Normally, that's enough to make most bad guys groan at least. Appearing in front of Shazam instantly, I smashed him in the chest with my left elbow. He flew off at supersonic speeds much like Superman. Turning to Etrigan I said, Come, little spawn, let us find out who is more terrible between a corrupted heroic spirit and a hell spawn. Etrigan then summoned his demonic sword, and got in a ready stance. Etrigan, Jason blood weeps for what has become of one of the spirits of King Arthur. We are united in our desire to free you of this corruption. I just scoffed at him, and also got in a ready stance. Artoria, and you expect your toothpick there to hold its own against Excalibur Morgan? And you yourself against me? He charged at me, and we started to cross swords wildly but with purpose. After a back and forth for a few seconds, we end up in a sword lock with Etrigan struggling to hold me back. Etrigan, alone? No. But as luck would have it, I am not alone. Having my instincts go off and warn me that an attack was coming in from behind, I just gave Etrigan a smug smile, his confusion turned to shock when all of a sudden I vanished from his sight, and Black Adam's fist just barely missed his face, appearing behind and slightly above Black Adam, I slashed down. Catching him in an awkward position I was able to make a large gash on his back, Black Adam, a eh? The force of the attack once again sent him, and Etrigan this time as well, into the earth. Sensing another attack coming from my right, I slash apart the lightning spear that Shazam had thrown. Bringing up my left arm after the swing, I summon my own spear. Mine however was made of red light with a black outline. Putting more mana into the spell, the spear had ignited with red-black fire. All of that took less than a second. And once the spell was done, I hurled it at Shazam. Shazam, oh come on. He raised some earth in front of himself to act as a shield, while also casting a barrier. My spear totally ignored the earth, and collided with his barrier. It released a whining sound like metal was crashing against metal. The spell then exploded into a sea of fire a few seconds after it hit the barrier. Hearing a sonic boom, I turn to my left and I see Superman has finally made it back to the fight. He wasn't looking the greatest, as the chest part of his suit was gone revealing a very bruised looking chest. As he saw me, he started to pick up speed causing several sonic booms to echo out. As he was near me, he raised his right fist in preparation to strike me. This feels a bit familiar, let's see if the outcome is the same. I turn to face Superman with my sword pointed downwards. When he was in range of a strike, I raised my left first and met him with a punch of my own. The area around us was obliterated from the kinetic forces at play and red lightning flowed through his arm. Unfortunately it seems Superman forgot I am not actually made of flesh and blood, and also severely underestimated my strength and magic. If this was before my seal was released, I might have lost this exchange and been sent flying, but instead we have. Superman's arm exploded into red mist, much like what happened with that speedster from the other world. The kinetic explosion also sent not only him flying, but the other three as well as a good 40 meters around the point of impact was destroyed. As I was slowly walking in the air to Superman, whose injury had already stopped bleeding, I could only shake my head in disappointment. Artoria, still underestimating magic Superman, and it seems this lesson will not only cost you an arm, but your life. Raising my sword to finish off Superman, I was interrupted by having to dodge an attack from Atrigon. He had attempted to literally stab me in the back with his sword. Spinning and moving to the right to avoid his attack I slashed down in a counterattack, after cutting off his arm at the base of the elbow. I brought up my left fist and smashed it into his face after the swing was done. He rocketed off several meters before he managed to stop himself with a spell causing him to flop down to the ground instead. Etrigan, arc, that really hurts, corrupted or not, 
It would seem a holy sword is a holy sword. Shazam appeared next to Air Dragon and used some magic to close his wound. Shazam, not looking great buddy. Air Trigon, nor is our situation. Ignoring them. I was looking at Air Trigon's sword. Honestly, I didn't like it. Something about it just pissed me off. Bending down slightly I breathed out some purple mist that corroded away Air Trigon's severed limb that was still holding the sword. In seconds, I then reached down and picked up his sword in my left hand. Shazam, dude. What? That mist just melted your hand so fast. Aren't you supposed to be magic resistant? Etrigan, only if said magic is weaker than my own. What are you doing with my sword Artoria? Looking at the sword, I frown heavily. I don't know what it is, but something is really pissing me off about this sword. As I was thinking why, I felt my own sword vibrate slightly in my hand. Ah, I get it. Excalibur, and thus myself, find this sword insulting. It's not Graham. And yet it was wielded like it stood a chance against Excalibur. Turning my head to Air Trigon I say, I am offended that you would wield such a weak demonic sword against me. This is no gram. It is an insult to my Excalibur, and as such has no place on this battlefield. Air Trigon, weak, ignoring him, I threw the sword up in the air and charged a burst air. As I released the attack into the air against the sword, I noted that the burst air was even stronger than my last one. Really hated the thing, eh my companion? As the attack finished, and cleared up my sword vibrated a bit as if it was happy. Etrigan, gah, im impossible. Etrigan slumped over and spat out some blood. It would seem that his sword was bound to him in some way and he is now suffering some backlash for its destruction. Shazam, there is just no way. How can someone expel so much magical energy and still have just as much left? That is so cheating. Tilting my head to the left a fist brushed against my cheek. Without giving the attacker time, I spun around and stabbed my sword through their chest. Black Adam. How dot how? I had missed his heart, but just barely. Black Adam coughed up some blood and fell backwards onto his back, ignoring him. I turned back to Superman who was now back on his feet, if hardly. The amount of struggle he was showing looked like he was lifting the moon. Walking up to him I prepared to kill him when I suddenly felt the pushing sensation from the spell fate had been casting intensify massively. Ha! Huh. I totally forgot about that. Oh well, they are broken. Well, not Shazam, but I like him if I am being honest. So I'll leave it at this. Artoria, congratulations heroes. Shazam, huh? Artoria. It would seem you have stalled and distracted me enough. A portal opened above me, and bits and pieces of myself started to break away and go into the portal. Looking down at myself, it was kinda freaky seeing it, but I felt nothing, and could tell I wasn't actually breaking down. Turning to Dr. Fate who was on his knees panting, barely holding on I said, Pray your kin finds a way Fate. I will not let this slight pass blood of your blood will pay when I return. I look at all the heroes around me as the last bits of me start to be pulled in. Artoria, and I doubt anyone will survive my playing around at that point. And with those words, the world went dark as I was fully pulled into the portal. As I was flowing through the portal stream I suddenly found myself sitting on a chair made of blackness in a fully white room. Looking around confused, I suddenly heard a voice that sounded like the stars themselves. Question mark colon welcome, little Artoria tilde. Artoria, hello. Um, beautiful voice. The voice then giggled which sounded like soft cosmic winds flowing through space. Question mark colon why thank you. To introduce myself, I am Lilith tilde. The one, or rather a fragment of mine, who sent that survey you took part in. I hope you've been having fun Tilda. Lily, as I tried to get up to bow down, a force kept me seated. Lily, none of that now. Little Artoria, it is fine that you just speak with respect. Artoria, R. All right then. Goddess Lily. Lily, just refer to me as Lady Lilith Tilda. Now this isn't a social visit as you can say. A newborn goddess of the dark faction has reached out to me for help with the matter. Since she is adorable, I have decided to grant her request Tilda. I nodded along listening intently to Lady Lily. Lily, but, 
Just helping with a snap of my fingers is boring for me Tilda. So I will send you, if you want. Artoria, you're giving me a choice, Lady Lily. Lily. Indeed Tilda. Three of them actually. I like my games after all Tilda. Artoria, I am interested. Giggling again. I couldn't help but internally swoon at her voice. Lily. Wonderful Tilda. Now, as I have said, you have three choices. The first is to decline the other two, and be sent on your way to where you were originally going to be ejected to from the universe you were in. The second is to help this newborn goddess Tilda, that is to say, to hunt down some pesky reincarnators some gods of the light faction had sent her way. The last choice is to accept missions from me Tilda. I will send you to a universe that I think would give me a lot of entertainment with you in it. With a task crossing my arms I looked down in thought, but before I got too far into it, I asked something that was on my mind. Artoria, do these options have good and bad sides like the selections on the survey did? Lily, oh my Tilda, how astute of you little Artoria. Yes, they do Tilda. Since you asked, I'll inform you. I am so nice Tilda. Lily, the first one will be simple Tilda, if you ignore the other options. I will make it so each seal will take longer to unlock, and it can never pre-unlock like what you did with your first seal. You will be forced to wait the time. As it stands, the second seal will give a hint in a year by the way. With this change, the time between unlocks will increase by ten times every seal. The positive of this option is that the seals won't be anything special, and just unlock once the timer hits zero. It will just take you a long time. But you never know what will happen in those years. Not a threat, just a statement. Tilda Artoria, a long time indeed. Lilith then continued, for the second option, helping the newborn goddess Tilda. Your task, as stated, will be to kill reincarnators. The pro of this option is that I will change your seals to break upon killing enough of these reincarnators. No time gating, no trials, just good ole fashion murder to get stronger Tilda. The negative will be that you'll be fighting ever more powerful reincarnators. I won't be blessing them or anything, but you'll be sent after more after helping the goddess, and some of them are quite powerful Tilda. Artoria, I'm liking that option honestly. I have recently found that I really really love fighting, but what about your option, Lily? As for mine I will be sending you to a universe, well several actually, to cause havoc and provide me entertainment Tilda, the positive is that I will never send you to a universe that will be impossible for you, but I may also send you to one that will be a joke to you, there will be no time limits on the missions, and if you fail there will be no penalties, I will just send you to the next world. The negative is that I will only unlock a seal after you finish whatever mission I have given you, and more so, this will firmly make you a villain. No ifs, ands or buts, you will be the bad woman murdering and causing chaos, all for my personal enjoyment Tilda. Truthfully, all the options are for that reason, but for this route I will force you to submit to the evil in you fully. But trust me, you'll love it Tilda. Artoria, ha, huh, Lily. Now, little Artoria, what will your choice be Tilda? Which path will Artoria take? Reject both votes, 64.1%, help the newborn goddess votes, 87.58.8%, Lilith's root Tilda votes, 55.37.2%. Total voters, 148 middle dot this poll was closed on October 16, 2022 747 AM. 237. Chapter 13. The Chosen Path is long, but not unwelcomed. Artoria. Okay, I have made my decision. Lily, do tell Tilda. With a bit of nervousness in my voice, I give her my choice. Artoria, with the maximum amount of respect. Lady Lily, I would like to decline your path and help the newborn goddess. After stating my choice, Lady Lilith just giggled slightly. Lily, it's fine it's fine, Artoria Tilda. I'll give you a bit of information about this goddess so you're not going in totally blind. So, when I say newborn, I pretty much mean that, you're older than her by a few million years. <clears throat> you have a question, Artoria Tilda? When she had mentioned my age, I frowned a little in confusion. Artoria, ah, sorry Lady Lily, but yes, 
I do have a question. Aren't I only 36 years old? I mean, that's how old I was when I took the survey. Lady Lilith's giggle once again surrounded me, causing me to relax a little. Lily? No, my cute little Artoria Tilda, you're not 36. When you filled out the survey, you opted to have everything about Artoria alter, but her personality and memories included in that bundle was her soul. Now, I didn't want to just snap and change your soul, as that would be boring Tilda. I started to sweat a little at what Lady Lilith was saying, as I already had a feeling about what she did. Lily, your feeling about what I did is spot on Tilda. I first had you be reborn as Artoria Pendragon in an alternate universe without your original memories. So you didn't replace anyone Tilda. After your stint as the King of Knights, you became a heroic spirit. How tragic it was though, that only 100 short years passed before you were stained by all the world's evil apostrophe Tilda. You really went on a warpath after that. It was wonderful Tilda. You, my little Artoria have been a corrupted heroic spirit for nearly three and a half million years. I may have tinkered a little with the throne of heroes, so it was easy for you to be summoned Tilda, and after the final battle had finally taken place, I wiped your physical memories, restored your old ones and put you in the DC universe with your other selections from the survey Tilda, a very roundabout way to give you Artoria Alter's soul, but it was fun Tilda. I just sat there in stunned silence. Is that why the pool I made from awe, all the world's evil, felt so comfortable? It also explains all of my answers when the lasso of truth was attached to me. After several minutes Lily spoke up again. Lily, how are you holding up, little Artoria? Too shocked? Mad at me? Stunned you're so old? Snapping out of my trance-like state. I shake my head. Artoria. N no Lady Lily. It's just, just a lot to take in. Is it possible to ever get those memories back? Lilith released a hum in thought for several seconds. Her voice is a weapon. Lily, well, yes it is. But, are you sure you truly want them back? After all, the personality you have now will be totally wiped out. The memories of three and a half million years will crush it. Looking down in thought I contemplated if I did actually want my memories back. She's right. I would be a totally different person. The life and memories of when I was truly Arturia Alter would be so much more pronounced and powerful compared to my time as a human on Earth. Eventually I just shake my head and address Lady Lily, Arturia, after thinking about it. I don't think I do Lady Lily. Lily, your choice Tilda. Now, we got a bit distracted but no matter, as I was saying. She's a newborn goddess. Only about a few hundred thousand years Tilda. I normally don't get involved with the light and dark faction divine war, but she's just so adorable Tilda. I could only smile wryly a little as Lady Lilith gushed about how cute this new goddess was, but still, a few hundred thousand years old and still classified as newborn ha. Huh. Fuck, I'm ancient compared to her. Lady Lilith then cleared her throat to get my attention. Lily. Ahem Tilda, sorry, but you'll see what I mean soon enough Tilda, the situation is like this, because she is new, she doesn't have a lot of power and the light faction is taking advantage of this by sending reincarnators to the worlds she has, if you're curious about how the divine use reincarnators to attack each other, I can tell you Tilda, giving her a very eager nod I said, yes please, Lady Lily, Lily, I'll write Tilda, so, as you can probably guess, the gods themselves are not able to interfere with the world directly in most cases, I can ignore practically all of divine law, but I am a special case Tilda. Anyway Tilda, to get around this law, the gods have started to use reincarnators as a means of soldiers, kinda Tilda. As the reincarnator goes around the world, multiverse and changes fate they will strengthen either the light or dark faction, nodding along. I was about to ask a question when Lady Lilith spoke up. Lily, to answer your question, no Tilda, you're not a part of any faction. When I reincarnate people, they are only to provide me with entertainment. That's why their actions can empower both factions depending on how they act. Leave a universe in a better condition than when you found it. The light gets empowered Tilda, cause havoc, and destruction. 
the Dark Tilda, Artoria, I see. But, from my actions it's clear they empower the Dark then. What is the Dark's goal? Lily, nothing grand really Tilda, just to rule, cause chaos, and the like. Both sides are very one-dimensional. Always have been, always will be Tilda. But back to the original topic Tilda. The Light is trying to convert her worlds from her. This will weaken her to the point where they can send one of their champions that would eventually be able to summon her, and kill her off. You see, when a new god is born several universes also come into being with them. They are randomly selected from all of creation, and then take on the aspect of the god they were born with. For our new goddess, it means the worlds are leaning towards the dark tilde, but are not fully tipped on the scale, so they can be fought over. Nodding my head, I ask a question I've been wanting to ask for a bit now. Artoria, not to interrupt you Lady Lily, but may I ask for the new goddess name? Lily, your good Tilda, her name is Tierwin. Artoria, Tierwin is it? All right, I'll remember it for sure. Giggling a little, Lady Lilith continued. Lily, I am sure you two will become the best of friends Tilda. So, since she is so young, she can't summon her own champions yet to fight the reincarnators. But that's where you come in Tilda. Artoria, I understand. How many reincarnators does she need to remove if I may ask? Giving a hum, Lady Lilith said, she has six to get rid of. But I like I said, you'll be sent after more when you're done with her problem. Ah, before I forget Tilda, your second seal will unlock after you kill all her targets Tilda. Well, it's time to send you on your way to meet dear Win Tilda. We'll talk again after you have helped her. Goodbye little Artoria Tilda. Before I could say anything, I found myself standing in a giant cigar tree forest. It was honestly rather beautiful, as they were all in bloom. Question mark colon R. You must be the one sent by big sister Lily, turning around, I get to look at Tierwin. I don't know what I was expecting, but it wasn't this. Holy shit she is a ball of pure adorableness. Lilith was spot on from the artist https colon slash slash toucan dot com slash profile slash macaroni 710 Some of the work is a bit risky, so be warned Tierwin, hi, my name is TWNFG, ouch, ah, she bit her tongue, blushing heavily, she tried again Tierwin, hi, my name is Tierwin, what is yours, if, if I can ask, blinking behind my mask, I was a little confused. Why is she asking for permission? I... I am not scaring her, am I? Dismissing my armor so I am only in my dress, I answer her. Artoria, hello Tierwin. My name is Artoria Alter. You don't have to be nervous around me. She looked down and blushed a bit. Tierwin, sorry. It's just... You're a champion of the lily. She was waving her hands wildly as she went on a little tangent about Lady Lily. I was worried she'd lose her cotton candy at this rate. Tierwin, the other gods totally abandoned me when the light faction sent over some reincarnators. She then lost all her energy and looked down, her ears and tails drooped as well. Tierwin, they abandoned me to my fate. Walking over to her, I couldn't resist giving her a head pat. Goddess or not, she's just so adorable. Looks like I have some gods to kill once I am strong enough. How dare they leave such a precious girl to die like that. And how dare the light faction want to kill her. Artoria, but not Lady Lily, nor me. I'll help you deal with your reincarnators, Tierwin. She looked up at me with an unsure face and small tears in her eyes. Tierwin, promise? I am not powerful, so I can't give you a powerful blessing like big sister Lily. Continuing to pat her head, I just smile warmly at her. Artoria, it's fine. It's fine Tilda, I promise. She then lunged into me, and hugged me while also using her tails. Tierwin, thank you, Artoria. Holy shit her tails are so soft. Enjoying her hug for several minutes longer than really needed I broke away. Artoria, okay, so how do you want to go about this? She looked a little embarrassed again, and was poking her two index fingers together. Tierwin, well... Um, I would like to send you after the newest ones first if that's fine. They have more problematic systems attached to them, and can get out of control a lot faster than the first three the light faction sent. Tilting my head in confusion, I asked why she was nervous. Tierwin, 
It's just. They're kinda weak right now, so you might not find any enjoyment out of killing them. Ugh, she's so cute to be worried about me like that. Patting her head again I say, it's no trouble Tiawin. These are your worlds. Let's handle it as you want. Giving me a smile, she nodded her head enthusiastically. H.N. I will murder everything that threatens her. Standing up and backing away with a bit of sadness I resummon my armor. Artoria. So, how do we go about this exactly? This is my first time being sent after reincarnators. Tearwin. Ah, right. Big Sister Lilith did say you are new to the hunter job. So, while the reincarnators are in the world, I have limited control over anything. But, I can send you there at least. What I want you to do is kill the reincarnators and try to undo anything they did. I will show both factions that I am a dark goddess just like the rest of them. She stood up and held both her fists in front of her face under the chin in the classic I can do this. Pose. Tearwin. Ah, um. Ah, Artoria, yes. Tierwin, oh. Um. How should I address you? She gave me a smile that was so bright. I could have sworn the awe in me shuddered. Tierwin, just Tierwin is fine. And you, can I please ask you to not fully destroy the worlds I send you to? I don't mind some destruction, or even a lot of killings, but I don't want to rule over rubble. Please, I just give her a smile and say, that's no problem, Tierwin. I'll try to hold back unless I am forced not to. Beaming another one of those deadly bright smiles she said, okay. She then bounced a bit as she took a proud looking pose with her arms to her side and fists on her hips. Tierwin, let's get started, Artoria. Big Sister Lilith said I should give you a power since you're helping me. All her tails and her ears dropped again after she finished talking as she slumped over a bit. Tierwin. But as I said before, it can't be very strong. I am sorry. Walking over to her, I gently pat her head. Artoria, it's the thought that counts Tierwin. I would love any power you can give me. Looking up to me, she smiled. Tierwin. Okay, thanks. So, what power do you want? Taking my hand back, I cross my arms and tilt my head in thought. After a few moments of thinking I ask. Do you think you can help me with my problem of controlling my aura when I use my mana burst? Tilting her head, her ears flicker around a few times as she ponders. Tearwin, I think, can you show me? Walking away from her, and summon Excalibur Morgan. I then release my hold and use mana burst. Tearwin, ooh ooh, you're really powerful Artoria. If these were normal trees a large portion of them would have withered. So, I am guessing you want to limit the range of your aura when you're like this? Giving her a nod. She frowned a little, crossed her arms and started to tilt her head back and forth to the side in thought. It's very dangerous how adorable she is. Tearwin. Well, from what I can sense, your power doesn't like to be contained. And helping you with that is way beyond me. But... I can give you talent in training what your aura affects and does when it's released. Artoria, oh, Tearwin, yes yes. I am really sorry, but I think only big sister Lilith would be able to help you with an ability to constrain your aura. It's your nature to be free like this, unchained and released. So, instead of trying to limit yourself to an area, I can give you a talent that will help you train what exactly your aura does. And with enough training you will be able to have your aura affect multiple areas differently. Is. Is that okay? Giving her a smile and a nod I say, yes, that is most fine Tearwin. Tearwin, yay, okay, so hold still for a second. She then reached out with both her hands and closed her eyes. A few moments later she glowed pink lightly and I felt something in my mind click. I now understood how to change the properties of my aura lightly. Opening her eyes, she looked at me with a bit of trepidation. Tearwin, well, you're the first person I have given power to, so I am unsure if I did it right. Giving her a toothy smile I say, you did it perfectly Tearwin. I can feel my new understanding about my aura already. I can tell with training. This new ability will help immensely. Thank you very much. Beaming a smile of epic proportions at me, she did a little cheer. Tearwin, okay. Now, all that is left is to send you after the first reincarnator so you can kill him or her. Sadly, since I am so weak, 
Their system is able to block my sight of the whole world, and not just its host. So I have no idea what's been going on since they arrived. What I do know though, is that it is a world full of villains and heroes, and there is only one pesky ant you need to get rid of. Giving her a nod I ask a few questions. Artoria, so, what exactly do you want me to do? Kill the intruder, undo whatever they did, cause some havoc? Nodding at me Tearwind said, yes, the darker the fate you can make, the better. Oh, speaking of fate, Big Sister Lilith said that fate has been broken since the reincarnator showed up. So, don't worry about anything and just act as you would. And like I asked before, please don't just destroy the entire world. Nodding my head I say, no problem Tearwind. I'll limit the damage as best I can. But, if I use Mana Burst. A lot of people will be killed. Tear win. That's fine Artoria. I can just recycle the souls you destroy after you kill the reincarnator. But, try not to kill everyone. That would cause a reset of the world, and that is troublesome in of itself. Artoria, you can count on me. Tear win. Tear win. Okay. Off you go. I have no idea where or when you'll show up. Or who the reincarnator is, sorry. But you'll be able to tell them apart from everyone else. The attached system will stand out plainly to someone like you. She clapped her hands together, and a portal opened beside her. Tearwin, now, just step through, and you'll end up in that world. There is no time limit by the way. Well, I guess there is actually. Don't want that reincarnator becoming too powerful for you to handle after all. But it's just these three newest ones that have systems that can make them grow really powerful. And Big Sister Lilith was kind enough to lock out my worlds from the factions so they can't send any more. Giving a nod I say, yay, Lady Lilith is awesome after all. Okay, off I go Tearwin. Oh, how do I contact you after I kill the trash? Tearwin, when you kill them, I'll be able to see into the world again, so I can contact you. Don't worry. Have as much fun as you can Artoria. Waving wildly at me. I return a simple wave and a smile as I walk through the portal. Everything went dark before I stepped out onto a sidewalk looking at a store with TVs playing an ad. TV, have no fear, for I am here. Ha, huh, that's all my for sure. Guess that answers what world I am in. Now, if I had to bet, I would bet that the trash I need to kill is hanging around this world's main cast. Well. Let's get this done then. As I turn to walk away I stop mid-step as an idea forms. On second thought, why don't I try to find all for one? If this world needs a darker fate, helping a foe would be a great place to start. Okay, find out where I am then off to Japan. 243. Chapter 14. Good plan? Great plan. As I was dangling my feet off the ledge of a random building I stepped onto a bit ago, I sighed. When I found out where I was, and made my way to Muzu Dafu, a thought crossed my mind. A foe is not a good choice to help. Sure, he'll lead this world down a dark path which is good, but he wants to destroy humanity's future. The fucking weeb fancies himself a demon lord. And Tearwind said she doesn't want to rule over rubble, which is exactly what I expect a foe to leave the world as. He's no good after all. I need a new plan. Maybe I should kill him after all? As I continued to mull over my options and watch the little ants, people, scurry about their lives an idea smashed its way into my skull. Oh yes, this will be perfect. And I have just the person in mind to test my theory. Well, person. Smiling as I got up, closing my eyes and pushing out my senses to search for some strong souls. It didn't take me long to find a small cluster of above average souls and a single decent soul. Opening my eyes, I turned towards the souls and started to make my way in their direction via rooftops. As I was making my way, I heard a shout that caught my attention. Question mark colon back away hero. You will back away or I swear I'll melt this child's brains. TCH. Almost forgot this world has way more garbage than even the DC universe. Stopping at the edge of a roof near the location I heard the shouting from. I leaned over and looked down. In front of what looks like a small store there is some dude with a glowing red hand holding a child by her neck. He's currently yelling at a hero who looks really fucking dumb honestly. Why are you dressed like the number 9? 
how is that costume practical in any sense? And behind the dumb looking hero were two cops hiding behind their car, with their shitty little pea shooters drained onto the villain, along with several civilians along the sidewalks watching the whole thing. 9. Let the child go, sir. You don't want to do this, villain. Fuck you. Niners. You have no idea what I want. Now get lost. Shaking my head at the stupidity of the situation, I step off the ledge of the building and drop down behind the villain with cat-like grace. Really? I know I didn't make a lot of sound but... Oh right. He can't perceive or hear me, and I didn't crack the cement this time. Shrugging my shoulders I walked up to the villain and coated my entire body in some mana, causing it to glow red with a black outline. Don't need this shit's blood all over me after all. Arriving directly behind the trash, I raised my right arm and thrusted it forward through his chest. The villain's eyes widened as he looked down to see his heart floating outside of his chest. Villain? W what? How? Huh? Letting go of his useless organ, I withdraw my arm from his chest violently. This causes him to drop the child as he screams in pain. When he collapsed on the ground, I walked over to his head and raised my foot. Artoria, garbage. And with that, I stomped down causing his head to explode like a watermelon. Hearing some screams and puking sounds I look up to see the hero hunched over puking his guts out while the civilians that were watching are screaming in horror. Weaklings, freaking out over a bit of blood, ignoring them, I jump back up and start heading to the souls again. Arriving in about 10 minutes, I got a good look at the school. Hey, that really does look like a solid well for a school, but it's not very high, so anyone with a ladder could climb that shit. Nothing more than a fancy privacy fence I suppose. Noting how high the sun is in the sky, I assumed that school was in session. Sinking down into my shadow. I head towards one of the stronger souls, staying in the shadow and peering out. It seems this shadow belongs to All Might. He's currently in what looks like the teacher's lounge or something talking to my target, Nazu. He was weird in the anime, but this is just freaky in real life. A cross between a mouse, bear, and a dog indeed. Moving to Nazu's shadow, I make note of his soul. Not very strong at all. I know he's an animal. But you'd think his soul would have grown a lot from the shit he's been through. But I guess not. Fortunately for me, it seems I caught them near the end of their conversation as they soon stopped talking and separated. Nazu made his way to his office with me inside his shadow. Once he was in his office, and seated I raised out of his shadow and took a quick look around. It was a good size office and well lit from the window in the back behind him. Doing pretty good for yourself there little guy. Now time to get the show on the road. Looking to the good size conference table that was in his room, I started to summon some water from all. It quickly spread over the table and started to release that pleasant feeling to myself. Really does feel nice to be around this stuff. Maybe I should start summoning it more often. Nezu, what in the world? Returning my attention to the little creature in the room. He was now standing on top of his desk looking at the black water. Walking up to him, I grabbed him by the neck and started to carry him over to the blackened water. Nazu, what? Let. Let me go. Help. S. Somebody. Just as I tossed him into the water, a knock was heard on the door and a female voice could be heard. Question mark colon principal Nazu? Did you say something? Even though the water was only a few centimeters thick, when Nezu hit it he splashed down like it was a deep lake. Nezu, ok. This was the only sound Nezu was able to make before he was pulled under. The voice behind the door got worried though by the sounds of it. Question mark colon Nezu, I am coming in. Don't be mad if this is a mistake on my part. I am worried. Opening the door and stepping inside was none other than the R-rated hero Midnight. Midnight, Nezu, Nezu. She quickly took notice of the black water on the table, and made her way slowly towards it. Midnight, Nezu. I walked past her to the door, and closed it softly, trying to make as little noise as possible. Not being perceived by like 99% of the world's population is really helpful sometimes. Hey, as I turned around, Nezu made his appearance, wildly thrashing at the surface of the water. Midnight, Nezu. Just hold on, 
Midnight quickly made her way over to Nezu and helped him out of the black water. As she pulled him out and got him onto the floor I walked over to them. Nezu was on his paws and knees coughing out the black water that made its way into his lungs while Midnight was rubbing his back. Midnight, Nezu, what hap? But before she could finish asking him what happened, I yanked her by the neck and plunged her into the water next. Midnight, what? Much like Nezu. She was quickly pulled under into the dark abyss. Artoria, if I can't find villains with the ideals of heroes to run this world, I will just have to make them. This was the plan I had come up with. If Deowin wants to rule, but not a pile of rubble, then villains are out of the solution immediately. They are garbage anyway, and are not really worth it. So instead, why don't I help make a sort of injustice world from DC? I will corrupt all of the good quality heroes and have Nezu lead them. Turning my attention back to Nezu, I look over at him and took note of the changes. His white fur is now ash-colored. Walking over to him, I look at his eyes when he finally stops coughing and looks around the room. His black eyes are now even deeper, and have a wonderful glint to them. Nezu, well, that happened. Standing up, he looks down at himself and starts patting all over. Not long into his self-inspection does his head snap to the water as midnight breaks the surface. He quickly heads over to her, and helps her out as well. The changes to midnight are much more pronounced. Her skin is now a pale ash color, and you can see red corruption lines running up her face. Her hair is also much lighter in color, almost gray-like, and her eyes went from their sky blue to a dull golden yellow. Ha! Huh. Must be because she's actually human and not an animal. Much like Nezu, she starts to cough out the black water from her lungs. Nezu, Gyama-san, how are you feeling? Coughing some more water out of her body, she wipes her mouth with her sleeve before answering. Looking at Nezu she says, fine, but not at the same time. I can feel the change in me, Nezu. Nezu, as can I honestly, it feels liberating. Midnight flashed a cruel smile and said, it does doesn't it? They both look back at the water that is resting silently on the table. Midnight, we need to get the others into that water. Nezu, agreed, but the one we really need to get to take a swim is currently heading to the USJ with a class 1-8 children. Oh, speaking of them, we should also get them into the water. What wonderful timing. I'll head there myself, and see if the reincarnator is with them. Midnight. All right, I'll get the rest of the teachers to come here then, and we can force them to take a dip. Nezu, good idea. I've got to come up with some plans in the meantime. Things need to change, and I have a few ideas on how to make them change. But we really need All Might and his protege to make the transition smoother. Midnight, sounds good. I'll leave the thinking to you. You leave the action to me. Midnight licked her lips, as a malicious glint passed in her eyes. Damn. Kinky woman. Anyway, good thing I ran into All Might with Nezu. I can just search for his soul to find my way to the USJ. Leaving these two newly reformed heroes to their own devices, I sank into my shadow. Appearing in All Might's shadow I noticed how fast he was moving. Seems he is healed. Excellent. Too bad he already gave up his quirk, but I can just throw the broccoli kid into the waters. And he can still make a good mentor in any case. All Might, with me in his shadow, made it to the USJ in no time. In fact, they are just getting out of their bus. Question mark colon get out of the way, you extras. And there is the loud mouthed sentient explosion. Is Yuku, sorry, Kachan. But you really shouldn't yell so much. Katsuki, what did you say to me? You Shota, knock it off you brats. Hurry up and get into the building already. Katsuki, TSK, whatever. How could anyone like him? Honestly, ignoring the teen drama for now, I look around for the reincarnator. But sadly, I don't see anyone, and no one's souls stood out to me like how Deowin said they would if a system was attached. A bit disappointed. But there is nothing I can do about it for now. It didn't take long for the students to make their way into the building and for the weird space suit hero to explain what was going on. While he she was explaining to the kids what the building was used for and such, I caught a little snippet of a conversation between Momo and Mina. Mina, 
It's a shame Azen Khan couldn't make it today, Momo. I know. When I called to ask why, he said he wasn't feeling so hot and he'd be back to school tomorrow. Mina, ooh, maybe we can go after school and nurse him. <laughs> Blushing Momo said, th. That's a good idea. I just stared blankly at what I was seeing and hearing. All right, Harim Reincarnator confirmed. A's and ha. While I was musing what this reincarnator could look like, the show was about to begin. A black mist appeared away from the class and formed a portal. Soon hundreds of villains started to step out while eventually the man-child himself appeared with his zombie pet. Nothing really changed there. I guess the reincarnator isn't changing too much yet. Once all the villains were out of the portal and it closed, the man-child started screaming at All Might. Tamora, All Might. Good, you're here. Not wanting to deal with any of this really, I rise from Tamora's shadow while summoning my sword in my right hand. As I am, I looked over at All Might and our eyes met. Oh? Can he see me? Impressive. Turning my attention back to the man-child, I raise my sword up past my left shoulder and swing at Tamora's neck. All Might. No, stop. Sadly, there was nothing the symbol of peace could do. My sword passed through Tamora's neck like it was not even there. All Might's shout had confused and attracted everyone's attention, so no one was looking at Tamora as a red line slowly began to appear along his neck. The soft thud sound his head made however, did attract some attention. Kurogairi, <laughs> Kurogairi turned to look at what made the soft thud, and as he saw Tamora's body slump backwards splashing blood from its neck, his eyes widened. Before he could properly process the situation I grabbed him by the metal collar around his neck and slowly started to crush it. Kurogairi, what is going on? As he was opening a portal. I decided to test out one of the many spells I know, but have been neglecting. Artoria, Flames of Purgatory. Kurogairi was then covered in sickly green looking flames. Kurogairi, ah. He managed to scream for all of two seconds before the spell completely obliterated his body, turning it to ash. Interesting to find out that he had no soul. Same with the Nomu, but I guess that makes sense. They are dead after all. Shota. What the hell is going on? As Kurogairi was turned to ash I took my sword into a two-handed swing position. Filling the blade with mana, I swung my blade horizontally towards the large cluster of villains. A beam of red and black light was released from my slash, and cut every single villain in half, while also destroying a good portion of the dome behind them. All Might. No. I said stop. All Might then jumped from where he was, and came barreling down at me with his right fist raised to strike. As his fist made contact with my cheek, the area around us was lightly destroyed from the kinetic energy. I however, was completely unfazed and didn't even need to use magic to prevent myself from moving. All Might. What? Ignoring All Might. I turned to the Namu and filled my sword with Manu again. A quick vertical slice and it was cut in half. Turning my face back to All Might I just stared at him blankly for dramatic effect as I sank into my shadow. Returning to Nezu's shadow, I just decided to chill and wait for tomorrow to come round. I'll make sure things go smoothly for the conversions Nezu has planned, while keeping an eye out for the reincarnator for now. 227. Chapter 15. The plot thickens. Tilda moments after Artoria left Tilda, POV switch all might. As I was standing there in stunned silence after the unknown female villain left, someone's hand on my shoulder brought me back to reality. Shota, all might, what the hell just happened? Shaking my head to clear it, I turned to look at my friend with confusion on my face. All might, what do you mean? Erasered, Shota. I mean just that. What the hell happened? Everything happened so fast that none of it makes sense. First one of the villain's head fucking rolls off for no reason, then the next one bursts into green flames. Next all the low level villains are just cut in half by a random beam of light. And then you freak out and punch nothing. But you had to have punched something for the ground to be like this. Then finally, the last thing was cut in half. So I ask again. What the fuck happened? All Might. You didn't see her? Shota. Her? Her who? All Might. I admit, she was extremely see-through, 
but I could still make her out. It was a woman in a black armor dress, with a black sword that had some sort of pattern in red on it. This woman was the one who did all of this. I waved my hand to the carnage that she wrought. Shota, someone with multiple quirks then. But why was she kind of visible to you, and no one else? I just shook my head in confusion. All might. I do not know, but that isn't the part I am worried about. I punched her. Erase ahead. It might not have been my strongest punch ever, but it was enough to crush steel with ease. I honestly don't even know if she even registered that I had hit her. I looked down at my hand and open and close it slowly. All might. My hand actually stings. Erase ahead. It felt like I had punched something like. Like. Well, I don't know honestly. It was unlike anything I have ever felt, and certainly not the flesh of a body. Looking up at all the dead villains and the damage to the dome behind them, I sigh. All might. Add on her other powers? Immense strength, ability to emit light strong enough to easily bisect people and damage the dome. Fire, ability to move and the shadows. Shota's face became hard at that when a realization came to his mind at what I was hinting at. Shota. You think she has all for one? Sighing. I shaking my head. All might. I don't know my friend. I really don't. If she does, why did she kill only the villains and not us? But I can't explain how she has so many quirks. Honestly, if it wasn't for all the carnage she caused, I could be convinced I was seeing things. She had no presence in the world at all. Like she was an illusion. It's all very troubling. Shota crossed his arms in thought while looking over the dead. Shota, I am useless as well. I can't disable what I can't see. He released a sigh and drooped a little. Shota, this is going to cause such a shitstorm with the press. At least none of the kids were hurt. Traumatized maybe, but they should be better for it if they can move past this horror display. All might, I am sure they will. The next generation of heroes is strong. Anyway. You get the kids back to school. I am going to go ahead and inform Nazu about this new villainous Shota. All right. I'll see you back in the UA. Nodding to my friend, I start to make my way out of the USJ. But as I was making my way out, the young Midoriya ran up to me with a pale face. Is Yuku? All might. Can I speak to you for a second? All might. Of course. Young Midoriya. I am in a hurry though. I need to report this to Nezu. Izuku, I understand, sir. But, please tell me you were able to see the woman too. My eyes widened at his statement. All might, added indeed Midoriya. But she was very transparent to me. How did she appear to you? A frown appeared on his face as he thought back. Izuku, she was transparent, but I couldn't exactly say it was very. I had asked the others when she was, was, killing everyone but no one but me could actually see her, all might, indeed, this is strange, of the three teachers here, only I was able to semi see her it seems, and now with you, this is most curious, maybe it has something to do with one for all, young Midoriya's eyes widened slightly and lit up, is Yuku, that very well could be it, all might, that is the only thing we have in common, but why, I just shake my head and shrug, all might, I do not know, Young Midoriya, I was thinking she has all for one, but her actions break that guess. I cannot see a situation where the user of all for one kills villains but not the heroes. Anyway, please keep this under wraps for now young Midoriya. We need more information before we begin to spread anything. He gave me a nod with a serious look on his face. Is Yuku, you can trust me. All might, all right. I'll get back to the others now. Bye. I waved to him as he ran off. Turning I left the building and started to sprint as fast as I could to the UA. Nezu needs to know about this. He's much more likely to be able to solve this than I am. Arriving sometime later at the school, I immediately head towards Nezu's office. Once I entered the teacher's lounge I couldn't help but feel like something was off. Where is everyone? Normally there are at least one or two people inside here. Even during classes, feels weird really. All might. Nezu, are you in your office? Nezu, ah, Toshin Raisan. Perfect, just the person I needed to talk to. Please, come into my office. Good, he's alone since he didn't call me all might. 
I can drop my form and save some time. Really starting to feel that fire start to flicker after giving my quirk up. Puffing down into my true form, I go over to Nezu's door and knock before I open it. All might. Nezu, we got a prob what is that? And what is up with your fur? I walked up to the table that was covered in some kind of dark quarter substance, and looked at it curiously. Nezu, oh, don't mind me. But I have something important I want to say before we get started. Looking up from the water to Nezu, I tilt my head slightly and motion him to continue. Smiling at me, I see a worrisome glint in his eye all of a sudden. Nezu, have a wonderful dip, all might, eh? All of a sudden, I felt someone push me forward harshly. As I was falling towards the water I turned to look at who shoved me, and what I saw shocked me. It was young Mirio Togata. But he looked very different, wrong even. His skin was very pale, and he had red lines going up his neck onto his face. His hair was also very faded from its normal yellow, while his eyes were a dull yellow now as well. Worst of all was the cruelty I could see in them now, and in the smile on his face. I quickly felt myself hit the water, but much to my surprise and horror, I kept going down. Soon, I was totally submerged in the black water and I could feel something pulling me even further down. Eventually, black was all I knew as I went unconscious. POV switch Artoria. Damn. Nezu works hella fast. I was currently still chilling in Nezu's shadow as I watched the whole thing. Then getting All Might so soon, and so easily was kind of a shock. But if I really thought about it, I shouldn't be surprised. He's not the brightest person ever and he was in what he thought was a safe place with his friend and boss. So, yeah, it makes sense I guess. Looking on as Nezu was talking with Mirio, it didn't take long for All Might to resurface from the water. Gasping for air as Mirio helped All Might out and onto the floor Nezu asked him a question. Nezu, so, how are you feeling Toshin Raisan? Looking over him, his change is much the same as the others so far. Pale skin, lighter hair red corruption lines, and yellow eyes, all might, I, I feel, he suddenly stood up, and turned into his hero form and flexed, all might, amazing, like how I felt in my prime, I feel as if all my burdens are gone, but also like an idiot for how many villains I let get away, Nezu, you don't need to worry about that, I have come up with a plan, the world needs to change, Toshin Rai, and I think it's us who will do it. This dark quarter frees us, and gives us clarity. It's about time the world experiences true peace. All might. Agreed. We could do so much more if it wasn't for the laws that limit our actions. The villains don't care about laws. And I think it's time the heroes don't either. Mirio, the world should be free from villains, and be at peace. Even if we have to drag it kicking and screaming to the utopian as you has planned. All might. Ah, right. Nezu, I originally came here to inform you about a new villainess, but after receiving the clarity from the water, I think maybe she is a kindred spirit instead. Ha, huh? a kindred spirit indeed. All Might. Nezu, oh, All Might then went on to describe his encounter with myself, and a talk with Azuku after I had left. Ha, huh? so even Azuku could see me, and better than All Might? Yay. I am thinking it's the soul slivers in one for all giving him some help. I wonder how he and that quirk will react to the waters of awe. Soon All Might had finished his recap, and both Nezu and Mirio had their arms crossed and were in thinking poses. Nezu was the first one to speak up. Nezu, I think you're right, in that she is a kindred spirit. All Might, the fact that she only killed the villains, and didn't even retaliate against you has led me to that conclusion. But having all those powers, I don't know. But I find it very unlikely she has a foe. No way would he raise someone who would blatantly go against his idea of evil like that. Mirio, I agree. While I don't really know anything about a foe, it's clear to me that this woman doesn't want to harm you. By the way you said she handled all the villains and took a punch from you like it was nothing. I think she could have easily killed everyone in that dome if she chose to. All might. I am inclined to agree. What do you think we should do about her? Nezu? Nezu? I will think about it. Maybe we could recruit her? Time will tell. Let's shelve the topic of her for now, and focus on the school. 
In the few hours that you've been gone all night, I've managed to get quite a few people into the water's depths, but the trick will be to get all the students. As you can see, there are visible changes to people who are submerged. It will raise questions. Mirio, too bad we cannot just use the sprinkler system. Everyone, including me, froze at that statement. Holy shit. Would that actually work? I peer into the waters with that question in my mind, and as if to answer me the war tripled. I suddenly feel like the answer is a yes. Going along with this feeling, I commanded the water to gather, and moved it over and into Nezu's coffee thermos. Mirio, you, all might, I think. The water is saying it will work? Wait, is that water sentient? Nezu, I don't think so. It's not normal for sure. But I don't think it can. Well think. Maybe it's reacting to our desire to spread it? The other two just shrug their shoulders. All might. Well, even if we use the sprinkler system it won't get everyone. Mirio, true. But we can just throw everyone that the sprinklers miss into the waters ourselves after. I don't think the water can double affect us or anything. Watch. He walked over to the filled coffee thermos and poured a little onto his hand. All the water did was just sit there, like normal water. Nezu, noted. We, the ones that are already changed, can move unimpeded with the water going off in the sprinklers then. Good. I'll help them from the shadows. Hey literally it seems, and place a barrier around the school to prevent anyone from leaving, but not entering. I was liking this sprinkler idea more and more. This will corrupt the entire next generation of heroes, and help spread Nezu's plan farther. Satisfied with the plan they were all coming up with, I intended to try and catch the reincarnator outside the school tomorrow before they even enter it. My goal was still to kill them, not corrupt. After all, a cruel and satisfied smile crept its way up my face. Artoria, it's all coming together. 228. Into Mission 1. DC Aftermath 2. Tilda a week since Artoria was forced out. Tilda, POV 3rd, in the main meeting hall of the Hall of Justice, there were several heroes filtering in for a meeting that Batman had called for. Some of the more notable attendees were Batman, Wonder Woman, The Flash, Black Adam, Shazam, Green Lantern, and Hawk Girl. As they were all taking their seats, one more attendee arrived a bit late. As he made his way to a semi-isolated spot to sit, Batman gave him a nod. Batman, that's for coming, Constantine. John, it's fine, Batman. I've seen what I've needed to see anyway. John released a sigh, and took out his pack of smokes and a canteen. Items he was short in need for this meeting. He had felt. Batman. It's been a week since we forced Tartorian out of our reality. Where are we on the black water that was conjured by her arrival to the fight? As he asked that question, he looked towards Black Adam. Black Adam, not far. This water, for a lack of a better term, is something horrible. If this truly is all the world's evil, and I fully believe it is, then I understand Artoria's personality more and respect her for not being a blathering invalid that just destroys Green Lantern. Respect? Shazam. No, I agree with Black Adam. You simply cannot comprehend what we are actually dealing with yet. Let me explain. That water is the physical manifestation of billions and billions of curses. Wonder Woman. Curses? Black Adam gave a nod to Wonder Woman. Black Adam, indeed. From stupid little things like always stubbing your toe on a Tuesday to things so horrifying they would make Darkseid blush in envy. Several heroes present at their eyes widened at that. Batman, can we get rid of it? John Constantine sighed at that question, and lit up a cigarette. John, Batman, you are underestimating magic yet again, and are not grasping just how horrible that water is. It takes time to remove curse. The more deadly, typically the more time. We are talking about billions of curses Batman. From what I saw personally, there were over six billion of them. Six billion. That is nearly a single curse for every human on this planet. Flash, that is a lot of curses. Shazam. Our saving grace is that it is not spreading. We have some solid wards around the area though, as the smoke it generates every now and then is just as bad. Black Adam, I highly suggest the League build something around the area to contain the site, 
If someone somehow got a hold of any of this substance, the damage they could deal would be immense to say the least. I would suggest destruction, but it is just not a realistic approach this time. Batman, noted. I will begin making plans to contain this water then. Anything else we should know about it? Shazam. This goes without saying, but do not touch it or the smoke it makes. A bird had flown over the area when the smoke was around. And well, it was not pretty. Black Adam, the thing liquefied in less than a second. Flash, you question mark colon that's not all. Tilda, a new voice had rang out, from the side of Constantine, as he looked left and saw who was now seated next to him. He could only sigh in exasperation. The other heroes, though, stood up and took combat-ready stances. More notably though Black Adam and Shazam had really worried looks on their faces. Before anything could happen though, Constantine held up his hand to stop everyone and took a puff of his cigarette. John, calm down everyone. Now, do you mind explaining why you are here Lucifer? And what do you mean? Lucifer only gave a Cheshire-like smile to Constantine. Flash, wait. Lucifer, this is the devil you were talking about? He's you. Lucifer, handsome. Devilishly so? Why thank you. Flash just deadpanned at that. Flash, not what I expected. Lucifer, I nor hell ever really is. Honestly. Now, I could tell you what I mean Constantine, but you know how I work. As for why I am here, I was curious to how you fuck-ups were planning on dealing with this horrifying situation you all created. The eyes of Constantine, Black Adam, and Shazam all hardened when he called the situation horrifying. John, what do you mean? Lucifer, nothing scares you. Lucifer, correction, nothing did scare me, until I learned that an entity stronger than my father is backing the woman you all decided to make an enemy out of. Needlessly I might add. Everyone's eyes shot open at that claim. Shazam, stronger than God. Ignoring everyone Lucifer continued, well, you see I like this planet, a lot actually, it's a nice place to chill out, but when Artoria returns, and trust me she will, she is going to be so much more than what she was when she left, honestly, you're all fucked, I knew my instincts were spot on when I decided to hear her out, and make friends with her, Lucifer mumbled to himself, John, back the fuck up Lucifer, what do you mean by an entity stronger than your father, Lucifer, just that, Constantine. My father is terrified of her benefactor, and I don't mean like a little bit. I mean scared shitless. John, what the actual fuck, and this entity's name? Shaking his head Lucifer said, nope, you don't just say the name of something that powerful for shits and giggles John. You know this, the good news is that said entity won't likely mess with our reality. Maybe. John, okay. Ignoring the massive fucking headache I have from trying to process that there is a stronger entity than the fucking one above all, why are you worried about Artoria, taking a drink from a fancy glass that was suddenly in his hands? Lucifer just casually shrugged. Lucifer, well, I assume you know she was sealed when she came here? As he asked, he looked around to everyone. Some were still stuck at the last bomb dropped, but others gave him a nod. Lucifer, well, from what I can tell, when she is no longer shackled, she will be my equal, more than likely surpass me. John, fuck right off. You have to be joking, Lucifer. Lucifer gave Constantine a sly grin at his outburst. Lucifer, sorry, not sorry. I do not lie. Constantine, you know this, I firmly believe you are all rightly fucked Tilda. Batman, we've fought off overwhelmingly strong adversaries before. Lucifer just started to laugh at Batman's proclamation, after a few minutes, he finally calmed down, Lucifer, you mean that little god Darkseid, and a few others, I hate to break it to you Batman but no, you have not fought someone overwhelmingly strong like she will be, she will be as strong if not stronger than myself, and I can snap my fingers and remove Darkseid from existence, and worst of all for all of you, she is not bound by fate, there will be no miraculous life-saving feats that appear out of nowhere, when you fight her, it will truly be your ability versus hers, and she will come out on top, no ifs, sams or buts about that, Black Adam, such is our fate then, to die by her hand, Lucifer, 
pretty much the second you made her your enemy, yes, and again, really dumb fucking move, could have just left her very well alone, Batman, not an option, she was killing innocents and her targets, several heroes, yay, Lucifer, so, several of the heroes looked quite taken aback by that, Wonder Woman, surely you jest, Lucifer, even you have to agree that killing an innocent person is wrong, Lucifer, oh I do, yes, but it was not just any schmuck who was killing them, now was it, now you have an enemy that may very well kill all life on this planet, thank you for that by the way, besides, if they were truly innocent, they would either go to heaven or be reborn, Hawk girl, that is rather callous and dismissive is it not, Lucifer just shrugged, and grinned, Lucifer, I am the devil, besides, I know how things work in the background, Hawk girl just shook her head, but let the matter drop, Batman, doesn't matter, we'll make a plan somehow, we always do, Lucifer and Constantine both just sighed at the naivety of Batman, Batman, do you have a time frame of when she will return, Lucifer, Lucifer just shrugged, Lucifer, time isn't just a straight thing Batman, it could be anywhere from a few weeks, to several million years, who knows, while everyone was frowning at that, Constantine asked Lucifer a question, John, is it safe to assume you were the one who stopped Artoria's first attack from hitting the ocean, Lucifer nodded his head while taking a sip from his glass, Lucifer, correct, another thing you idiots should have done was fight her on the moon or something, that attack she opened with would have covered half the globe you morons, thus destroying a rather sizable chunk of its oceans, Shazam, if you could stop her attack so easily, why didn't you stop or kill her yourself, Lucifer looked at Shazam as if he was stupid, Lucifer, why would I do that, she is a rather pleasant person to be around if you don't antagonize her, and I don't have a death wish, unlike you all, Black Adam, earlier, you said there was something else about that black water, what do you need to tell us about it, Lucifer's eyes beamed at the question, and he got a greedy smile on his face as he looked at Black Adam, Lucifer, oh, nothing much, a favor is all, to be collected at a later date, Black Adam crossed his arms in thought, after a few seconds he replied, Black Adam, as long as this favor will not directly or indirectly harm my nation, that is fine, showing a full set of teeth in his wide smile, Lucifer held out his hand, Lucifer, it's a deal then, as they shook hands, there was a loud crack of thunder off in the distance, flash, that's not ominous or anything, Lucifer, now, about the waters, they are growing, that is to say, the number of curses are growing, it's all the world's evil after all, so it's adapting to this world's humanity's evils, by adding the curses to itself, in time, I fully expect this black water to spread, containing it will be hard, but I am sure you will be able to handle it, after all, you always do, isn't that right Batman, the last bit of Lucifer's statement was covered in extreme amounts of sarcasm, Black Adam, are we able to, Lucifer, fine, yes, you will be able to, Dr. Fate should know how, taking a deep drink of his glass to finish off the liquor inside, he then tossed it up in the air, as he stood up and fixed his suit a little bit, his liquor glass vanished, Lucifer, well, I have said and seen what I wanted to, so I'll be going now, I got some preparations to make in hell, after all, he cast his gaze over everyone present as a smile formed on his lips, Lucifer, I fully expect to see several if not all of you when Artoria returns, good day ladies and gentlemen, and with that, Lucifer was gone without a trace or fanfare, letting out a loud sigh as he smashed back a good portion of his canteen, Constantine slumped into his chair, John, it's always so stressful dealing with him, Green Lantern, I can see why, but he left us with numerous problems to think about, Shazam, that's underselling it a bit there, Batman, I'll need to think on all this new information, and come up with a plan, moving on, Shazam, Constantine, how are Atrigon and Superman doing, Shazam sighed a little and leaned back into his chair, Shazam, not so hot, Batman, while Atrigon is suffering some major soul backlash from his destroyed sword he'll be fine in time, it's Superman I am worried about, Hawk girl, how come, I mean, 
This is Superman we're talking about. John, the damage done to Superman is, well, extreme and unique honestly. Batman, explain. Shazam, when Supes went to punch Artoria, she didn't just punch him back mundane like, she used magic. John, and there are remnants of that magic left, pinching the bridge of his nose. Constantine sighs heavily. John, we really need you all to stop underestimating magic, and take it seriously from now on. Her punch was filled with some unknown magic I am not familiar with. This magic obliterated his soul self's arm. This is what is preventing his body from just regenerating his limb like he tends to do. Worse yet, there are traces of that magic left on his soul, and it is slowly eating away at it. As you can imagine, taking damage to your soul hurts a lot, taking constant, agonizingly slow damage as it eats you. Little wonder he soon collapsed and isn't waking up. Wonder Woman, can you do anything for him? Shazam, yes and no. We slowed down the decay even further, but we need time to find a permanent solution. And I have no idea if we can heal a soul like a body. John, there are ways, but most of it is just time. Batman, I see. Do your best to get him back into shape if you can though. The world needs Superman. Now, about the other topics, Tilda LexCorp building, CEO's office Tilda. A bald man in an immaculate white suit had just turned off a projector that was displaying a certain meeting between heroes. He smiled as he turned his chair around and got up, walking to the large window behind him that showed the view of the city. Looking out into the city, he brought his hand behind his back as an evil glint appeared in his eyes. Lex, Blackwater. Lucifer, and Artoria, I knew those idiots would doom us one day, and here we are. Bringing his right hand to stroke his chin while resting his elbow in the other hand he mused. Lex, I should procure some of that black water. It might be high time I familiarize myself with some of the occult nonsense after all. And what better place to start would there be than with all the world's evil? While chuckling darkly an evil grin was on his face as he looked out onto the city. 245, Chapter 16, To Kill a Mocking Bird Tilda the next morning Tilda, POV Reincarnator Raisin Hopel. Shit, I slept in again, I tried to wake you up Tilda, yeah, yeah Eve. I am honestly surprised you didn't run over to your girls when they texted you last night about the new villain, I frowned at that. They are big girls, and all the training we've done has strengthened them greatly compared to how they should be, but this new villain does have me worried. Another reincarnator? I doubt it, Azen. As your strength grows, as does mine you know, I've been searching for another person with a system like me, but I've come up empty. Could it be that they don't have one? Impossible, Azen. This isn't like the books you used to read, you know. Systems are needed to help guide you reincarnators, and to help you grow. Otherwise, you will never be able to go past the current world's limits. I nod my head in acknowledgement of that. I guess that is true, Eve. That kind old man, God, that reincarnated me did say that just giving out wishes without systems is wasteful. I remember. I take it. That is why? Nod yes. Among other things, like keeping you safe from higher powers that may be in the universe that you wish to go to, we systems can help mask your presence so you don't get obliterated as soon as you are sent somewhere. I sweat drop at that, and give another nod. Being erased by something like the presence or something similar before being able to even enjoy the new life would indeed suck. Coming up to the school gate, I could see Momo and Mina waiting for me. Momo, you're late. Azen, would you believe that my alarm didn't go off? Mina, yes. Because you're always late when it doesn't. He he, I just scratched the back of my head and looked down a little. Azen, sorry sorry. Shall we go? Both of the girls each took an arm, and we started making our way into the school. Momo, I am surprised they are going to have school the day after such an event happened. Mina, I'm not. Nezu is a taskmaster I hear. I laugh at that. Azen, come now, Mina. He's not that bad. Most of the time, they probably want to make a show to the media or something. Is my bet. Most likely, right? Mina just huffed in annoyance. Mina, it'd be nice to get a day off. Besides, seeing all those bodies was honestly really scary. Azen. Azen, speaking of which, 
What exactly happened, Momo? It's kind of hard to say. No one saw anyone killing the villains except All Might and Midoriya-san. Azen, oh, giving me a nod, Momo also frowned. Momo, but he refuses to explain anymore. He said All Might asked him to keep it hush hush for now while they figure out what exactly is going on. Azen, sounds like All Might, not wanting to spread panic with false information. Still, this villain killed every other villain. Both girls gave a nod as we entered the school. Azen, that's no good. They may be villains, but killing isn't an option. That's right. They could always be redeemed. But... We do need to think of a way to keep people better contained while trying to redeem them, and failure in that. We can keep them locked away then. Agreed. Everyone deserves a second chance, no matter what they have done. No one is only 100% evil after all. After talking some more with the girls, we finally made it to our classroom. Walking in, I could see our homeroom teacher is yet again in his sleeping bag. Azen. Homeless San, good morning. Shota, good morning, brat. I am tired, so just take your seat for now. Azen, ha, huh? when are you not tired? Homeless San Tilda. Getting a few giggles out of the girls, Shota just grunted and then ignored us. He's amusing, but I honestly do wonder why he has a job as a teacher. He should be an assistant teacher at best honestly. He just doesn't have the personality needed to teach teens. A. Hey, it's not terrible I guess, but you're right, anime world, anime world. Eve and I both gave a little laugh at our inside joke. Eventually everyone made it to class, and we were all talking about random stuff when the class bell rang, but Shota didn't move from his spot. Azen, homeless sand class has started Tilda. Shota, yay, yay, I'm waiting for All Might. He has an announcement for the class. Shaking my head at the usual laziness of our teacher, we all went back to talking. Mina, come on, Midoriya-san. Please tell us. Izuku, sorry, Ashido-san. But I said I'd keep it under wraps for All Might. Besides, you heard Sensei-san. All Might will be coming here to make an announcement. Maybe it'll be about the villainous Azen. So it was a woman. Izuku's A's shot open and he covered his mouth with both of his hands. Ha ha, he's so easy sometimes. I like this version a lot better than the original though. Yourself to thank for that though. Even the fire cracker over there is much tamer because of you. Looking over at Katsuki Bakugo I couldn't help but agree with Eve. Yay. I was not looking forward to his attitude when I was first coming into this world if I am being honest. I know what you mean, but you've done some real good days and be proud. But don't let it get to your head. You're still weaker than All Might by a lot after all. Well, that's just the nature of our power after all. A slow burn. And it has nothing to do with the fact that you've really eased off on the leveling right? Blushing in my mind I couldn't help but give an internally wry smile to Eve. Hey, it's been 14 years since I've come to this world. And I am already level 52. So it's not that bad. All Might is 76 and would punt you out that window while yawning. Yes, well, All Might isn't an enemy, and I have time till if sends the real heavy hitters. But, since I can tell you are glaring at me, I'll take the girls this weekend for another round of tower climbing. Good. Speaking of girls, but before Eve could finish her sentence, a loud shout came from outside the door. All Might, I am once again coming through the door like a normal person. Closing my eyes and lowering my head while shaking it, I sigh at his antics. You, Azen, you might want to look up right now. HMM, what do you mean? Eve, looking up at her behest. I was confused till I saw All Might. He looked different. Very, very different. Pale skin, dull yellow eyes, and red almost glowing lines running up his neck to his face. The entire class gasped at his appearance. Why? Does that look very familiar to me? Eve, Izuku, All Might, what happened to you? He put his fists on his hips and let out a loud laugh. All Might, fear not, young Midoriya. I am most assuredly fine. Found it. After delving into your memories, he looks like those spirits from the fate anime that were alter versions. That can't be good, All Might. As you all will find out. As he said that, one of my skills, 
Danger sense started to blare at me, screaming of danger. Azen, everyone, we need a rue. Sadly, before I could even finish yelling my warning the sprinkler system went off. Ah, Azen, get out of this water, it's pure evil. IT hurts. Eve, without delay, I quickly created a protection bubble around myself and the closest near me, which was sadly only my two girls. All three of us stared in horror as the rest of the students suddenly sunk into the layer of black water that was building up on the floor. All might. I knew you'd be a problem young Hopal. Shota. Get up. Shota. Yeah yeah. He yawned as he got out of his sleeping bag, revealing the same corrupted look as All Might. Azen. This isn't good. Momo, Azen, what's going on? Mina, why do they look like that? Where are our friends? All Might gave a light chuckle and started to make his way to us. This is really bad. We can't touch that water. Azen, that really hurt me. Giving Eve a nod. I focused back on All Might who was giving me an indifferent look. All Might, no luck. Shota? Shota shook his head and replied, No, I still can't shut down his powers. All Might. Take down your protection bubble, young Hopal. You and the little ladies will be taking a dip in the water to gain clarity. Azen. No. All Might. Eve, is there a way we can save everyone? I don't know. Azen. Looking at their status isn't promising. Wanting to see for myself, I bring up All Might's status. Tilda Toshin Ryagi Tilda. Hero name. All Might. Age. 49. Level. 80. Disposition. Pure lawful evil. Regards host as a threat to the new world order as is hostile. Oh, that's not great. Me and my big mouth saying All Might isn't an enemy. All Might. Then I will take it down. My eyes widened as his fist came crashing down onto my shield. And much to my expectation and horror, a single attack from him caused it to crack heavily. Azen, please stop. All Might. Come back to your senses. All Might. I am clear-headed as I have ever been young Hopal. You will see. And with that, he brought his fist down again towards my shield. Time seemed to slow down as my, accelerated thinking, kicked into high gear. What are we going to do, Azen? When he hits your shield and shatters it, it'll go on a 20-second cooldown. The sprinklers are still going strong. I know Eve, I know, looking at the girls at the edge of my vision. I steeled myself for what I had to do. We can't let that corrupt us. It won't be able to. It'll just destroy us instead. What? Why? Sigh we are both blessed by all that is good. Azen. We can't be corrupted. That black water, when it touched you, wasn't corrupting us. It was destroying us. I let out a loud gulp in my mind at that. This is even more serious than I thought. I am not strong enough to fight all might. My shield breaks as soon as his fist hits. I have to sacrifice the girls to the black water, don't I? If we don't want to be destroyed by the falling water. I am so sorry, Azen. No, this isn't the end. There has to be a way to save them all. I am sure of it. Let's work under that assumption. There isn't anything the two of us can't do after all. You're right. Even though it will hurt both of us to leave them like this, we can't do anything. Yet. Let's flee and power up. I am sure once we reach level 100, something special will happen that will help us with this situation. It will take us a long time in the tower though. It will, but for them, it'll only be a month or so with a time dilation at max. Giving one more look at the girls at the edge of my vision, I give them a silent apology. I am so sorry girls, but I won't leave you to this dark fate for long. And with a heavy heart, I bring in my shield to cover just myself and launch myself backwards towards the door. All Might's size widens slightly, but quickly takes control of the new situation and grabs the girls. He then throws them towards the black watery floor. Azen, don't worry you two. I won't leave you like that. I'll be back for you. I give one last look at their horrified faces, before I turn and leave the room. Holding back the tears that threatened to leave my face. I run wildly down the soaked halls. I feel like such a scumbag. Eve, the look on their faces. The look of complete betrayal. I know, Azen, I know, but I am sure they will understand when we finally free them. Everyone, 
of this corruption. Wiping away the small tears from my eyes with my sleeve, I started to leap down the stairs. Where did it even come from? The dark goddess that I am meant to fight eventually? No, I doubt it. She can't affect the world to such a degree like this. And you said that a reincarnator is out of the question? Most definitely. I can sense no one else on this planet with a system. Then, who or what core? My question died in my mind as I turned around the final hall to the exit and skidded to a stop. Oi! Eve? Eve? Before me, blocking the exit was something I honestly should have expected once I saw the state of all might. Eve? Answer. You said. You said a reincarnator wasn't possible. Blocking my way out was none other than Saba Alta. Standing there in all her glory with her sword stabbed into the ground and her hands on the pommel, like a dark guardian. Impo. Impossible. Asian. Eve. It's impossible. Look at her status. Doing so. I could only stare in horror. Tilda Artoria Pendragon Alta Tilda. Hero name. N.A. Age. 3,502,341. Level, cannot calculate. Disposition, pure lawful evil. Hostile, Kyoto ill. Murder, Dioto destroy. Iota blight, Iota rate. Iota e Iota raise. Oi, oi, that's. We need to run, run. That is why I didn't sense any system or anything. She is the real deal. That is a real Artoria altar from the fate anime you know of. Run damn it. As I took a step back to run, she finally turned her head to look at me, and it felt as if the entire world came crashing down onto me. There was a splash as I fell down into the black water on my knees. What? What is going? On Eve? This is her warrior spirit. Her battle intent is crushing us. Your shield and skill, clear mind, is keeping you awake, but that's it. We need to flee somehow, Azen. There is no way we can ever face this woman. Trying to raise my head to look at Artoria. I could only shakily move it a few centimeters. Never mind trying to look up at her face. I can't look beyond her shoes. This is just her intent. It feels like the entire world is on me. The thought of her bloodlust added to this, and I shudder. I am going to be honest. I don't think your mind could take the bloodlust of a three and a half million old warrior. Even with calm mind, I agree. But I can't move an inch. Eve, what can we do? As I was talking to Eve, I started to hear heavy foot splashes coming down the hallway. Soon, a voice was heard, and if my situation was beyond hopeless before, my fate was now all but sealed. All might. Ah, the lady who helped out at the USJ. So it was Artoria who killed everyone? Seems like it. Azen, I don't see an out for us. All might. So, what's the deal with young Hopal here? Why is he on the floor? I heard the rustling of clothes and armor. All might. <clears throat> Silent type I see. Well, no matter. Thank you for containing him for us. I'll go get his friends. I am sure they want to be here when he gains the clarity as we have. I'll be right back. Come on. We need to think of something. Eve. They mean to dunk us into the black water. Which, now that I think about it, is all the world's evil. I am trying, Azen. But, I really can't think of anything. I am sorry. What about using my skill to open the tower to escape there? No good. We are considered in combat with Artoria. My time was all too soon up as I eventually started to hear several foot splashes in the black water. Momo, you know, I am more than a little mad at you right now Azen. Mina, yay, how could you leave us like that? Sure, it was for the best really. But still, it's the principle of the matter, you know? Momo, can't even talk to us. <laughs> well, no matter, you'll get the clarity like us, and then you're going to spoil us for an entire month for ditching us like that. Mina. Yay, I could hear All Might just chuckle a little. All Might. Ah, to be young again. All right ladies, go ahead and break his shield. Both. Ooh, ooh. I am sorry, Eve. It looks like this is the end for us. Killed by my lovers no less. And they aren't even trying to actually kill us. I am also sorry, Azen. If only I was stronger. You and I both, Eve. As the girls started to pound on my shield with their powers. I could only lament our fate, as my shield was about to fail. I finally said something I should have said long ago. I love you, Eve, truly. 
Thank you for being with me for these past 14 years. Azen, I love you as. My shield broke and Eve started screaming. And as I was sinking into the waters, I felt the pressure from Artoria vanish, lifting my head to look at her. I wanted to hate her. To hate her for killing everyone, for killing me, for killing Eve. But I couldn't. She was as much a victim to this black water as anyone else. With Eve screaming in my head, tears started to fall down my face. Soon I was fully submerged in the water. When Eve went silent, I knew she was dead. And it was soon my turn, as I experienced the worst pain I have ever felt or could imagine. As I was being ripped apart by the very evils of the world, I only had one thought as my world went dark forevermore. In the end, I couldn't save anyone. Again. 246. Chapter 17. One down, five more to go tilde. As I was watching the garbage reincarnator's soul get destroyed, a small smile threatened to escape onto my face. How hilarious. To get killed by his own lovers, though, finding out that they can't be corrupted was a nice bit of information. As well as what a system looks like attached to a soul. Tierwin was right though. Easy to see M. A ghostly digital human shape draped behind them, clinging to their neck is hard to miss after all. As the last flicker of his soul was snuffed out, I suddenly felt my connection to the waters become even more solid. It was an unusual feeling, but not unwelcome. Shaking my head a little to get my bearings back after such an odd feeling, I looked up at the three people who were just standing there waiting for the boy to come back. Artoria, All Might, can you hear me? All Might turned his head from the spot the boy sunk in, and looked at me. All Might, Ah. You can talk after all, I can hear you, yes, but you sound very far off, it's unsettling honestly, dismissing my sword, I give him a shrug, Artoria, your soul just isn't strong enough, but no matter, the boy you three sunk, will not be coming back, his soul was stained by the gods of light, and couldn't be converted, so he was obliterated instead, all might, oh, well, no real loss, Momo, all might, all might. I'll explain in a bit, girls. But it looks like young Hopper will not be coming back up. Both girls, or E, all might. So, who are you anyway? Artoria. My name is Artoria Alter. I was sent by the dark goddess that watches over this world to rid it of an invader. That thing that just died. I'll be leaving now. This black water will be staying, so use it however you want. All might. Wait, dark goddess. But before I could even think of answering him, I found myself back in the beautiful Sura forest. Tierwin, Artoria, welcome back. You were so fast. Hearing Tierwin from behind me, I dismissed my armor and turned around giving her a smile. Artoria, told you I would handle it. Was this outcome okay for you? Tierwin, yes. Thank you so much, Artoria. As soon as that reincarnator's system was killed, I was able to see into the world again and everything. Your plan to use your all like that was awesome. It was adorable as she went on about how I handled things, waving her hands all over and jumping around. Tierwin, oh, you look different too. I like it. I blink in confusion. Artoria, I do. Tierwin, you don't know? Here, she waved her hand, and a full-length mirror appeared next to us, turning slightly to get a look at it. I was a little surprised at what was reflected back, this clearer part of my eyes were no longer white, but now black, and the dull gold eyes strengthened to a more solid, vibrant gold, my eyes seemed to very faintly glow now as well, I also had a few more red corruption lines on my face, summoning my armor, it was much the same, with more red lines, dismissing my armor again, I turned to Deerwin and smiled, Artoria, well, I like it. I am glad you like it as well. Tierwin, yes. I love it. You are making more of a connection to the darkness inside you. I am happy for you. She cheered a little and was jumping around a bit at that proclamation. But then she suddenly stopped and got a serious look on her face. The instant transition almost made me laugh at how cute it was. Tierwin, now, for the next target, I got good news and her serious look lasted all of five seconds. Letting out a light chuckle, I made my way under a tree and sat down with my legs crossed in front of me. Before I could even blink, T 
Tierwin was suddenly sitting on my legs with her tails wrapping around us several times. Holy fuck, this is comfy as shit. Such fluff without even meaning to. My right hand started to gently give Tierwin head pats. Her adorable giggle brought me back to reality. Artoria, oh, I am sorry, Tierwin. Did you want me to stop? She caught my hand as I was taking it back, and placed it back atop her head. Tierwin, nope. You give great head pats. Anyway, as I was saying, I have good news. The next reincarnator actually made a mistake. Artoria, oh, nodding, she summoned a stick of cotton candy, and started to nibble as she explained. Tierwin, the reincarnator, a woman by the way, was originally in a world much like the one you were summoned to all the time when you were chained to the throne of heroes. By that I mean, only humans. This world only has technology and is actually almost about to kill off its humans to try and regenerate itself. Taking a bite of her candy, and bouncing around a little bit she continued. Tierwin, thing is, this world is connected to another world. A video game called Yudrasil somehow managed to transfer some of its items from the digital plane to the normal plane on another planet. This caused the denizens to try and summon more of them, which in turn managed to summon every player that was near or connected to said items. But magic between worlds is finicky at best when cast by mortals, so some stuff happened and they were all summoned at once, but arrived at different times. As she was taking another bite, I remembered the anime that this was linked to. So, the next universe is Overlord, eh? Nice. I always wanted to meet the Bone Daddy. Tierwin. Anyway, the point is this. When the woman and her system transferred worlds, I was able to see into the world she left again. And I was able to see everything she did and planned to do. She went and turned herself into a high seraphim angel. A little on the nose if you ask me. Stupid gods of light. Artoria. Still, if it's the game I am thinking of. She won't be powerful enough to hurt me. Nodding Tierwin said, Yep. Well, maybe a super dear spell, or a world item would be able to tickle you? I don't really know, because your magic resistance is absurd. Honestly, you won't have much of a problem till the last three reincarnators I think. They are scouts, and have limited systems, but said systems are able to power them up quite a bit. But they have a hard cap on potential. Artoria. So. Anything special I need to do in this world? Tierwin finished off her candy and shook her head. Tierwin. Nope. This world is already headed towards a dark future. Just stopping the reincarnator is fine this time. Ah. But I am still trying to find the last of the three growth system users. So, even if you finish super fast again, I won't have anything for you to do most likely. There is no rush for the scouts as they are already done growing and can't get any more powerful. So, enjoy your time down there. Giving her a nod and a final head pat we both, reluctantly, got up. Tierwin, ooh, your head pats are dangerous. I barked a laugh at that. Artoria, so are your tails and hair. Tierwin, so fluffy. She beamed a smile at me. Tierwin, thank you, Artoria. I try really hard to keep them fluffy and silky. Are you ready? I summon my armor and give a nod. Artoria, one more dead thorn in your side, coming right up, giggling at me. She opened a portal. Tierwin, have fun. Smiling at her, I walk through the portal. After a few seconds of comfortable darkness, I step out of the portal and onto a roof overlooking a massive city. As I was wondering how I should go about finding where I was I suddenly felt some killing intent coming from what looked like an inn near me. It was pretty pathetic in the grand scheme of things, but from what I could sense it was coming from humans so it was kind of impressive. Well, since I am in Overlord, I'll do a bit of roleplay. Jumping off the roof, and making my way to the inn, I started to think how I could mess with the people there. For them to have such strong killing intent, meant they were at least semi-strong. For humans anyway. Entering the inn and ignoring everyone's gasps at the seemingly empty area with the door opening by itself, I walked up to the stairs and made my way to the room with the intent leaking out of it. As I was nearing the room, I noticed the intent disappear, and I could feel the attention was now on the door. Interesting, so they can at least sense me? 
Opening the door and stepping inside the small room lightly, I took in everyone present. Nice. I got lucky. The black scripture meeting with blue rose. So now I have a time frame of when I appeared. Panning my head from left to right, I stopped and looked at Evil Eye. Everyone was silent, and looking at me. At me. Even better, all their souls are strong enough to see me. Artoria, none of you are the one who has summoned me, wishing for my power. But worse yet, several of you are stained by the light. But you, as I said that, everyone got a look of confusion on their face and the Blue Rose Party looked at Evil Eye as I continued, Artoria, but you are stained by the light, while also being blessed by the dark, how interesting of an existence you are. After I finished talking, the Black Scripture woman spoke up, question mark, colon who? What are you, looking at her eyes scoff and say, and what right do you, mortal, think you possess to have such knowledge given for free? Everyone frowned at that. While the scripture people got into combat stances, the man with the blonde hair, Clementine's brother if I remember, started speaking. Gwais, I think it is in your best interest that you answer. Thing, before we just decide to kill you like the creature you are, Artoria, oh, before anyone could even blink, I was in front of Gwais, with my hand through his chest holding his heart, Artoria, such big words from a corpse, to their credit. The rest of the scripture went into action relatively quickly. The woman with the stupid witch hat started to cast a spell, while the muscle man was already swinging down his axe towards my neck. Verog was making his way to my right, expecting me to dodge towards him. Dropping the heart in my hand, I simply withdrew my arm from the chest of the corpse, and turned round to stop the axe blade with a single finger from my left hand. Always wanted to do that. Hey, this action caused the entire room to still. Even their mage had stopped her spell. With a voice full of mockery I said, Is that your best? Grabbing the axe's blade with my hand and crushing it a bit, I pulled on it. This caused the large man to lurch towards me, as he was not expecting anything remotely like this to happen, and was still stunned. As he was coming towards me, I punched with my right hand as hard as I could. The man's entire top half exploded into mist, and painted the walls behind him a wonderful red. All that was left of him was his part of his arm holding the axe, and his lower half. Tossing the axe down onto the ground I say, then your best won't do. Turning to look directly at the stealthed rogue, I vanished. Appearing behind said rogue, I stabbed my hand into his back and ripped out his spine and cord. Unlike in mortal combat. His head didn't follow. Wonder if I could work on that, and actually pull that off? Turning to look at the mage who now had a horrified look on her face, I tossed the garbage in my hand aside and started to slowly make my way over to her. This entire time, Blue Rose were at the ready with their weapons, but wisely did not try and help the Black Scripture members. Scripture woman, Holy Ray, freeze lance. As the two spells hit me they seemed to just fizzle out causing her to panic even more. Scripture woman, dragon lightning, a neat little dragon appeared out of the spell circle, and roared as it made its way to me. Sadly for the woman though, once it hit me it also seemed to just fizzle out. Stopping right in front of her, I bring up my left hand and caress her cheek. Artoria, were those supposed to be spells? Here, little mage, let me show you a spell. Blood boil. As soon as I uttered those words the woman started to scream loudly, and crashed to the ground on her back. She began to wildly kick and thrash about as if she was on fire. Soon, her skin started to turn red and bubble. Seconds after that, she stopped screaming and thrashing as all her organic bits liquefied and left nothing but a burnt looking skeleton sitting in a pool of bubbling goo. Yup. That is as nasty as I thought it would be. Pretty painful too I bet. Turning my attention to the rest of the people in the room, I slightly tilt my head to the right. Artoria, now, what should I do with you, who are stained by the light? 235, Chapter 18, A dark rose can shine just as well it seems. All of the blue roses team stiffened at my question and their leader, Lachius was about to speak up when the short vampire held out her hand to stop her. Evil Eye, we have no quarrel with you, spirit, the massive muscle-bound woman. Gagrin, widened her eyes a bit at that. Gagrin, 
She's a spirit. I could tell she wasn't human, but she's undead. Artoria, I'm not undead, child. Watch your tongue, Gagrin. Oh, you. Sorry. Looking back to Evil Eye, I say, yes, while you have no quarrel with me, I however, have an issue with the light staining all your souls. Lachius just huffed and crossed her arms over her chest. Lachius, I am a holy maiden, keeper and wielder of Kyliniram the demonic sword. Of course I am blessed by the light. I sighed and shook my head. Artoria, I said stained, not blessed, child, but no matter, I will be removing it and adding a blessing of darkness of my own instead, for some added dramatic flair, I raised my hand and snapped my fingers, no idea how I actually managed to snap my fingers while armored, but I'll just say anime world and be done with it, hey, after my snap, I started to summon some black water, awe, slowly beneath my feet, the entire team gasped when they saw the black water, and started to move away from it slowly, Ath, oi, what the hell is that stuff? It is giving off a really bad feeling now. Tina and Tia, evil boss, Legius, I don't know. Stay away from it though, like my uncle said that is something horrible. My sword is reacting to it, like it wants to bathe in it. I highly doubt it. I thought with a deadpan stare no one could see. More and more of the black water started to pour out from around me completely covering the area behind me, even going up the walls and covering the roof only to drip back down slightly. As the water touched the corpses of the black scripture, they were broken down and dissolved into nothing. Gagrin, oi, it just melted those bodies and their gear like it was nothing. Evil Eye, teleport us out now. Evil Eye, on it. Artoria, no no, we can't have that. Stay a while. Why don't you? Since I didn't have a spell that could stop teleportation in my arsenal yet, I did the only thing I could think of. I levied enough of my aura against them to disable but not destroy their souls. Evil Eye, Telepa, A. Eh? This caused everyone to crash into the ground hard, while interrupting the spell. Tia, I, can apostrophe T dot move. Tina, what? Is, Gagrin, it's like an, entire mountain is on me, as the black water crept ever closer, their struggle intensified greatly, Gagrin, come, on, shorty, evil I, I am, trying, Artoria, it's too late, I commanded the black water to surge forward, and it soon covered blue roses entirely, bringing them into its loving somber depths, with them inside the water, I stopped releasing my aura and let half move again, Artoria, you, you may leave, you are not stained by the light and I have no desire to bless a useless and weak playboy with the dark. With that said, I grabbed him with my magic, and tossed him through a wall. I then covered the entire area with black water, plugging the hole. I was now basically standing in a box of black water, with it dripping down everywhere like rain. I could only smile and bask in the feeling all this all the world's evil was giving me. I felt at home safe from all the world's good tilting my head, I ponder that last feeling, now there is a thought, I wonder if there is something like all the world's good to counter all the world's evil, maybe I can ask Tierwin, or even Lady Lilith if she stops by again sometime, as I was thinking, the Blue Roses team finally finished their dark baptism and broke the surface of the black water, as they were all coughing out the waters from their lungs and checking up on each other, I could only smile inwardly. Yes, this is how I honestly like it. They look wonderful with the corrupted look or gives one. Coughing still, Lachius managed to sputter out a sentence to her team. Lachius, is everyone cough everyone all right? Cough. Tina and Tia, we're fine. Gagrin, I'm also okay. Lachius, evil eye, evil eye, I feel. Great. Holy even. Walking up to her, I offer my hand to help her stand up. She hesitated for a few seconds before accepting my hand. Artoria, it is because you are a creature of darkness, and yet, you are somehow stained by the light. Normally that should have destroyed you, but I am guessing the garbage I am sent to kill wanted to save you. Garrigan, creature of darkness. Turning to the entire team I tilt my head and say, surely you noticed? How could you not? This little one here is a vampire. Well, vampire princess actually. Her entire team widened their eyes and turned to look at her. Legius, is she telling the truth? 
Evil Eye. Evil Eye just slumped her shoulders and sighed. She pulled down her hood and took off her mask. For the first time, her team was able to see her full face clearly. Though she looked different because of the black waters, she still had her fangs. Evil Eye. Yes, I am sorry. I just, I just didn't know how to tell everyone. I didn't. I didn't want you all to hate me, or worse try to kill me. I know you're a priestess of the water god Lachius. And they say all undead must be destroyed. Lachius stood up fully and started to make her way over to Evil Eye, Gagarin, Oi, Lachius. Lachius held out her hand to stop Gagarin from talking, and then stopped in front of Evil Eye. Lachius, I am disappointed, Evil Eye. But, I'm also glad I am disappointed in myself because I don't know how I would have reacted before, I can tell this, water, changed us, more than how we look, I am ashamed to say I may very well have tried to free you of this undeath evil eye, but, I am glad because now you do not need to hide it, after this change, I do not care that you are a vampire, I know you haven't hurt anyone that didn't deserve it, ever, and more importantly, you are our sister, the water god be damned, if he thinks I should kill my sister who is clearly still sane, just because she no longer breathes, Gagrin, yay, you're our friend Shorty, Tio and Tina, our partner, Evil Eye, everyone, they all started to hug in a big blob of sisterhood, what, the actual fuck, you know what, never mind, good for them, Artoria, right, good for you I guess, blue roses, ah, I deadpanned at them and dryly asked, you forgot about me? How very carefree of you all. Well, no matter. I got other, more important things to attend to. So, you best leave this kingdom. Legius, I don't want to give up on my countrymen, but we have to. We stand no chance against the Sorcerer King. Where should we go, everyone? I am feeling great after the dip in the water, and want to stretch my legs. As they started to talk amongst themselves, once again forgetting about me. I could only shake my head. So carefree. Anyway, let's go say hello to Bone Daddy now Tilda, deciding to leave the black waters, and the comforts they gave. I sank into the shadows and appeared on the walls of the city. Stepping out of a shadow, I took a quick stock of what was around, and the entire city was surrounded by a rather impressive army of undead. Really doesn't do anything by halves. Nodding my head in approval. I spread my senses out to try and search for strong souls. I note that a vast majority of his undead have no souls tied to them. They are just animated corpses. I wonder if the ones who have souls are the sentient ones? Would make sense to me at least. Giving a shrug at my speculation, I jump off the wall with a fair amount of strength causing cracks to appear. As I shoot forward into the sky and closer to the undead army, I keep my eyes open for any of the guardians or bone daddy himself. Luckily, it didn't take me long to find the little command tent he had set up on a hill. Smiling to myself at the prospect of meeting some of the guardians in real life, I shoot off towards the direction. Seconds later, and feeling like making a flashy entrance, I crash into the ground in front of them kicking up a dust cloud. Through the cloud, I could sense the souls around me and all the my newborns. Right. This was a trap for the dragon dude. So Pandora's actor should be the one here pretending to be Ains. Waving my hand to clear the dust away faster, I get a good look at who exactly I am dealing with. Sitting on a little throne under their tent is Pandora's actor, imitating Ains. To his right is Albedo, the sexy succubus demoness. And to his left are the dark elf twins, Mare and Aura, Albedo. Who dares approach the Sorcerer King so brazenly? Name yourself. Turning my head to Albedo, I scoff a little. Artoria, before that, could one of you cast anti-divination and privacy spells? I don't want anyone listening in. Albedo and the others just peered at me for a few seconds before nodding and carrying out my request. After they are done casting their spells, some with spell scrolls even, I give an answer to Albedo. Artoria. To answer your question, my name is Artoria Alter. I turn and look at Pandora's act directly. Artoria, and I do not stand in front of your master, but merely his son. Hello Pandora's actor. Everyone's eyes widened greatly at that. 
and they took combat-ready stances while Pandora tried to keep calm and seated. Artoria, calm down. Firstly, if I wanted any of you dead, you would be none of you, even all of Nazarek at once, are my match. But, lucky for you all, I am here to help with something you don't even know is stalking your master, Albedo. How brazen. I not giving her a chance to finish, I flood the area with a rather generous amount of my aura. While I could have used more, I didn't want to make them fall to the ground like with blue roses. Artoria, silence, Albedo. You provoke something that you really shouldn't, nor can you afford to. I can apply even more pressure to you all, and force you all down to the dirt you stand on. But I am giving you face, because I respect Nazarek and your master. Do not push me, Albedo. You, Pandora. Enough, Albedo. Vader is willing to talk to her. Albedo, what? But she's unknown to us. Surely not even Dem. Pandora held up his hand, and shook his head. Pandora. He has spoken, Albedo. He turns his attention to me and says, Mine further would love to speak with you may I and Amartoria. But he is currently busy with the war right now, and would like to ask you to wait. Giving him a nod I say, that is fine, Pandora. I'll just wait with all of you if you don't mind. A few seconds later he nods and says, that is fine. Seconds later, a portal opens and Cositas steps out. Artoria, you are as impressive as I heard, Cositas. Cositas, you know me? Giving him a nod I say. Indeed. Created by warrior Takemi Kazuchi, a being that embodies the word warrior. I find your creator has done a wonderful job, and has hit the nail on the head with you as his creation. Cositas bows his head slightly and says, You honor me. I can tell you are a warrior of great skill as well. Giving him a slight nod back I say, Well, I would think so. I've been fighting in the Holy Grail Wars for over three million years after all. Some mist blew out of his face as he exiled. Cositas, impressive. Aura, wow, you're really old aren't you? Giving a soft chuck a light turn to Aura and say, I am indeed, Aura. Mayor, um, that is. Ah, uh, how, how do you know all our names? Artoria, that is a conversation I would like to hold with your master and everyone present so I don't have to repeat myself. Albedo, you can guarantee we'll be there, you hussy. Even though she whispered that last part to herself, I couldn't help but chuckle. Artoria, I am not going to steal your ains from you Albedo, and just an FYI, I'm a lesbian, Albedo, oh. Well, we'll still be there. I could tell she still didn't trust me at all, but the killing intent she was lightly giving off vanished completely. Shrugging my shoulders I turn back to Cositas. Artoria, you are tasked with taking the castle, right Cositas? Cositas, I, am. I will, be, leaving, soon. Artoria, mind if I join you? I would like to see how you handle things as a fellow warrior. Cositas turned to Pandora's actor and when he got a nod back a few seconds later, he gave me a nod. Cositas, I, would, be. Honored, Artoria, Artoria, all right, I won't help, I'll just watch you work, Cositas, that is, fine, come, let us, be, off, 241, chapter 19, the honor and wrath of a warrior can be boundless, as Cositas and I were making our way to the city proper, leading a massive army of undead, I decided to fish for some information about my target, I honestly can't believe I forgot to ask Deowyn what that light spawn called herself. Really, she is just too adorable. Artoria, Cositas, do you remember any of your masters talking about a powerful high seraphim angel ever? A plum of icy mist escaped as he hummed in thought. Cositas, I, do, not, may, I ask. Why? Nodding my head to his answer I say, I am hunting one. She doesn't belong on this planet and she has her eyes set on Nazarek. She is the reason I have been sent by the dark goddess Tiawin. This little pigeon schemes to change your master from who he is, who he is destined to be, into a paragon of light instead. Or kill him if she can't. Another puff of mist escapes as he responds with a bit of fire in his voice. Cositas, there. Insolence, we, 
must find this foolish one and destroy it. Giving another nod I say, yes, your master has a wonderful destiny ahead of him he can forge for himself. The dark goddess Deowin wants to see him achieve it, naturally, the light gods do not. So they sent an agent to try and convert or otherwise stop him. But they made two major mistakes. Cositus tilted his head as he asked, what mistakes are those? The area around me gets a bit heavier as a small amount of killing intent leaks from me unknowingly. Artoria, 1. They dare go against Tiawin. And 2. They dare to target your master. I know you and the rest of the Guardians feel the same towards Zanes as I do towards Tiawin. I look up to the insectoid warrior and say with hatred, and we will not tolerate anyone to so openly go against them as if they do not matter, will we? A large cloud of mist escapes him as he proudly states, No, we will not. I smile slightly and nod my head. Artoria, spoken like the true warrior you are, Cossetis, you truly understand what it means by the gods of light so brazenly acting in the open like this, nodding his large head. Cossetis says, I do, but we will speak of this later with everyone. We are here, Artoria, sure thing, Cossetis. So, show me how you will remove this puny gate from your way. Cossetis, observe. Stepping forward, I felt the mana around Cossetis stir. He then cast a nice suspected spell, and the gate and a large swath of the walls on both sides of it were obliterated. He then summoned several ice maidens and also turned on some kind of aura as the temperature around us plummeted and ice began to spread rapidly around us. Cossetis, I trust this cold does not bother you. Giving Cossetis a nod, I joined him as we moved inside the city and started to march towards the castle. Artoria, the temperature has no effect on me. I look back at all the ice maidens and nod my head in approval. They were all quite beautiful, and all looked the same. I could imagine a lot of people would love the situation of ten identical beauties attending them. Artoria, your entourage are beautiful Cossetis, and have stronger than average souls. I am impressed. All ice maidens, we thank you for the praise, my lady. Nodding my head in approval once more, I turn back to face the front. Cossetis, thank you, Artoria. You are able to. See and appraise souls, Artoria, correct, Cossetis. It is something I picked up in my long long life. Only souls of sufficient strength may even see or hear me to start with. One of the ways I judge if someone is even worth paying attention to. Cossetis, interesting. Thank you for sharing. I agree, that is a good way to judge Samion's worth, Artoria. I like to think so. Speaking of worth, there seems to be a lone human waiting ahead for you. Cossetis, indeed, there is. As we approached the human swordsman, he popped several potions with a glow around his body after each one was any indication. When we came to a stop just before him, he only looked at Cossetis, which didn't surprise me. His soul is weak. He may be a strong human. But his soul never got many opportunities to grow it would seem. As the man finished looking over Cossetis, with some self-mockery in his voice he said, Oi, my back's already against the wall. After a few moments of what I assume is him having some internal monologue, he takes a stance with his sword. Question mark colon even so. Brain and blouse. The ice maidens start to move forward before Cossetis holds up one of his hands to stop them. They back off without a word as Cossetis introduces himself to the brave human. Cossetis, I am I servant of the Supreme One Sorcerer King Ains Oel Gown. Cossetis Brain looks taken aback that Cossetis even responded to him. Brain sheathes his sword and takes a deep bow. Brain, my thanks. Cossetis unnecessary. As Cossetis slammed and embedded his polium into the pavement of the road I spoke up, Artoria, you are doing him a great honor by even acknowledging him, but I understand why. Cossetis just silently nodded his head, and reached into a black hole that appeared near himself and pulled out a sword. So that's what the inventory spell looks like. 
I wonder if I could learn that. Seems to be just some basic space manipulation with a touch of dimension magic. Speaking of dimension magic, maybe I could use the spells Lucifer taught me to somehow lock the area down around me like their dimensional lock spell. To prevent teleportation, my internal musings about magic were interrupted by Cositus announcing the weapon he had taken out. Cositus, God slaying Emperor Blade. Looking over the sword, I was honestly unimpressed. There was no way that thing could hurt a god, let alone slay it. I decided to keep that information to myself however. After a few moments both of the warriors took up stances, and prepared for their clash. Brain, seek life when facing death was it? Brain's face then got even more serious as he started to use his abilities. First his little sword zone thing appeared around him. Then he started casting self buffs on himself. You could easily see the strain of these actions were taking on his body. From his buffs, to the potions he took early, it was too much apparently as he started to bleed from his eyes and nose, but he held on, and was determined to make a stand against the impossible. As Cossitus stepped inside his sword zone, Brain let out his attack with a loud yell filled with determination. Brain, true nail clipper. It took everything I had to not laugh in the face of such a stupid name for an attack, but I knew where the name came from, so I did my best to suppress it. However, it was not meant to be. Cositus ignored his attack completely, and cut a massive gash into his chest, catching his heart with the tip of the blade if the amount of blood was any indication. Brain fell to his knees, dropping his weapon. He managed to die with a smile on his face as he slumped forward a bit. Artoria, as weak as he was, that was an impressive resolve he had as a warrior. You did right by him by slaying him in combat, and not insulting him by asking him to change sides. The words I spoke were true, and not me playing around. I could respect Brain for his actions here. He displayed great will to stare death in a face like that and not flinch. Cositus, I, am, glad you also, think, that, Artoria, if, someone, of, your, Calibur, thinks, that, then, I think, my, creator, would, approve, as, well, Artoria, I would agree that he would. Cositus then walked over to Brain's body, and bent down to take his sword. Cositus, I, will, take, this, trophy, in, remembrance of a fine warrior's resolve. He then swished the blood off his blade, and put both his and Brain's old weapon into his inventory. Turning to his maidens, he commanded them to freeze his body. Freezing his body in seconds, Cositus then looked up past him at the castle. Artoria, come, let's take another way. I am sure your master will not disparage you for showing honor to such a warrior by not stepping over his body. Nodding while exhaling icy mist Cositus said, I agree. We backtracked a little ways, before finding the right alleyway. Following it around the block a bit we came upon the main road again soon enough. Stepping out of the alleyway, Cositus stopped for several moments to look at Brain's corpse before moving on to the castle. Artoria, always a shame, and yet a pleasant surprise, to meet such warriors on opposite sides of a war. Cositus, you are correct. We walked in comfortable silence as we approached the castle. I noticed that the homes that he was freezing over were actually killing the humans inside. Ha, to be so weak that you die to a bit of cold. Ignoring the dying humans we thankfully didn't take as long as I would have thought to get to the castle proper. Still, that was a good thirty minutes of just walking. Breaking from my internal musings, Cositus told his maidens to freeze the outside of the castle. It took them only an impressive ten seconds to freeze the whole thing. Artoria, nice speed, and look how much better it looks while frozen. Good work, girls, maidens, we thank you, my lady. Not going to lie, seeing so many beauties bow to you at once, I can see why a lot of people want to reincarnate into this world. Several minutes later, we made it to the throne room. It was just Cositus and I as he had sent his maidens off to go and kill everyone else still left in the castle. As the two of us entered the room, we saw the king on the throne with Princess Rena standing next to him. I noticed that Rena was able to see me, so I spoke to her. Artoria, so you're able to see me, little girl? Rena, 
I can, though. You are a little transparent and sound a bit far away. Cossitis, oh, Artoria, she is quite the soul, Cossitis. Look, her father is totally clueless to whom she speaks. Both of them looked at the king, who was looking at Rena with a raised eyebrow. Artoria, his soul is as decrepit as his body. Little wonder he can't see me. It's more interesting that he is even alive with how his soul is. A glint passed through Rena's eyes as she looked at her dad. Rena, I see. Turning to look up at Cossitis, I ask, So what's the plan here Cossitis? You kill them and claim the castle? Rena's face paled a little at that before Cossitis spoke up. Cossitis, no. One moment. Rena breathed out a little sigh of relief as Cossitis made the call to his master. Rampaza, Rena. What is going on? Rena, one moment father, something interesting is bound to happen soon. No sooner than when she finished speaking did a black portal open up in the middle of the throne room, and out stepped several of the floor guardians, including the main man himself, Ains, POV switch Ains so will gown. As my floor guardians and I stepped out of the gate to the throne room, I quickly took stock of who was already there up on the throne was the soon-to-be-dead old man, King Rampaza III. With our little human spite turned imp, Princess Rena at his side, she caught my interest, if I am being honest. Love can do strange things to people it would seem. I take a quick peek at Albedo and shake my head slightly. I really messed up with her, ha, huh? moving on from the same thought that has been plaguing me since I arrived in this world, I turn to look at the other two in the room, my floor guardian. Cossitis, and the strange newcomer, Artoria Alter, I just know that name from somewhere, but I can't place my finger on it. This is driving me nuts, it's on the tip of my tongue, I can just tell, Demiurge broke me out of my internal musing by talking to Rena. Demiurge, now then, princess, it's time to carry out the last part of the plan. King Rampaza, move down from the throne, and kneel over there. Demiurge had used his command word ability, and forced the king off his throne, and to move to the spot where he pointed. I took that as my cue to go and claim the throne. Taking the throne as my own I looked at Rena. Ains, do it. Honestly, this is kind of cool. Being a conqueror is pretty fun when I don't have to worry about the logistics of everything. Rena gave me a nod with a bit of a creepy smile on her face and she drew the sword that Geyser Stronoff once used against me. I'll finally be able to get that thing under my banner. Still disappointed I couldn't collect Geyser himself, but I will respect his choice. I owe a man of such caliber that much at least. Rampaza, Rena, what is going on? What is Hap? Before he could even finish the sentence, his own daughter ran him through with the national treasure of their kingdom. Artoria, hey. Irony at its finest. Ains, agreed. Now, let me properly introduce myself. I am Ain Soilgaon, master of the great tomb of Nazarek. My guardians all took up positions around myself as I was introducing myself, with Albedo taking up her normal spot to my right, and Demiurge and Cossetus to my left. The armor-clad woman nodded to me, and walked to the middle of the room and introduced herself. Artoria, greetings. My name is Artoria Alter. Agent of the Dark Goddess Tierwin, sent here to remove an invader of the light. Dark Goddess Tierwin? Never heard of her. Also, invader of the light? That sounds troublesome. Demiurge, you should take a more appropriate stance when talking to the Supreme One, Neil. However, much to my shock and Demiurge she stood standing like nothing happened. Artoria, I kneel only to two entities, little demon, and your master is not one of them. Try that again and we will have issues. Better not let this escalate further. I raised my hand to stop Demiurge from responding. Ains, sorry about that, and please excuse him. He can be rather enthusiastic when it comes to me. She, thankfully, gave me an understanding nod and said, as he should. But he should know his limits, and not presume. I nod my head in agreement. My guardians could very well one day get me into trouble with actions such as that. Ains. I thank you for your understanding, Artoria. Now, you said you were sent by a goddess, Artoria. That is correct. The dark goddess Tearwin watches over this part of the multiverse, and as such, you all fall under her area of influence. Some are pity gods of light, however, 
wished to steal several universes from her by sending agents to worlds she owns. Their job is to change the normal fate of such worlds, and make it lean towards the light, thus taking it from her. I bring up my hand to my chin and rub my non-existent beard as I mull over that little information dump. Sadly though, before I could delve too much into it, Albedo just had to speak up. Albedo. Humphrey, like such a weak and useless sounding goddess could rule over Ains. I bet she's only after him like all the other hussies and Cossitis, Albedo. No. Sto. And that's when all hell broke loose. I could see the very air around Artoria start to warp as an unbelievable amount of killing intent flooded the room. The very air became heavy, and tinted with red as her killing intent actually manifested in physical form. Even I was starting to feel the pressure of her intent as it was starting to overwhelm my undead passive. The power that normally keeps my emotions in check was going off the deep end, as it struggled to keep me calm in the face of such overwhelming killing intent. Oh fuck, holy shit. This is insane. I am undead and I am slowly starting to feel the pressure and fear from her killing intent. Is this the power of someone who has lived for millions of years? Scary in more ways than one. Damn it Albedo. My guardians were not faring well by the looks of it. They had all crashed to the ground, and looked like they were choking on the very intent that filled the air. The pressure only got worse as Artoria walked up to Albedo. Damn it Albedo. I have tried to tell you. There can be stronger people than us, than me, out there. But she never listens. With Artoria being so close, my undead passive was going ballistic. With a wave of green energy passing over me faster than everyone's hearts were beating. Fuck. This is just her intent no less. She is way more powerful than any of us. Her boast about all of Nazarek not being enough was not a boast at all. Artoria grabbed Albedo by the neck, and lifted her up with her left hand. In the right. She summoned a sword that gave off such an immense feeling of dread and evil and held it across Albedo's neck, yet at the same time, it gave off the feeling of a holy weapon. If this situation wasn't so fucked, I would love to take a look at that weapon. It looks so fam. Wait a moment. I know that sword. As I was freaking out over the revelation of who and what was standing in front of me, Artoria spoke to Albedo in a calm and even voice, which honestly just made her seem even more scary to me. Artoria, I respect your views you have towards Ains, and I do not correct them. However, should such shit flow from your mouth again Albedo, I will show you that your views about Ains and the world are not entirely correct. And after I have killed the man you love in front of you, I will break your body, slowly. And after I am done with that, I will then break your soul. And I won't stop until there is nothing left. Am. Um, I understood. Little demoness. When Albedo failed to answer, the amount of killing intent increased even more. Just how much intent can she emit? Fuck. I am starting to freak the fuck out over here. Answer her die mighty Albedo. Thankfully Albedo answered before my undead passive was completely overwhelmed. Albedo, why, ye? Arturia then threw Albedo down like a piece of trash, and stopped emitting her killing intent. The air cleared up, and everyone started to cough and breathe a sigh of relief. Holy shit, that was horrifying. As Arturia made her way back to the middle of the room, she dismissed the sword she had in her hand. Seeing it vanish reminded me of my revelation through that horrible experience. Artoria, I will not apologize for that outburst. Let that be a lesson to what kind of entity you are dealing with. As I said, if anyone speaks ill of Deowin again, I will obliterate them. As my guardians were pulling themselves up from the floor, I tried to center myself and calm down. Once I was confident my voice wouldn't break from the absurd amount of fear I am sure would be present if it were not from my undead nature, I asked the question on my mind. Ains, it is fine, Artoria. But, I have a question. That sword you summoned. That was Excalibur, wasn't it? She smirked a little, as she re-summoned the sword and held it out so I could clearly see it. Artoria, correct. This is Excalibur Morgan. Then that means... Ains, then. You are King Arthur Pendragon? Nodded in confirmation to my question she said. Yes, that was one of the names I used to go by when I was human, long ago. God damn it. I am dealing with someone straight out of an anime. No, 
something more than that. I am sure the Sabah altar I am thinking of is not this powerful. Lightly coughing into my fist, I decide to shelve this for later. Ains, now, you said you have a mission here by the dark goddess Tierwin. Stopping an invader or something? Artoria, that is correct. This agent of the light will also be out to you, as you are a key existence in this world's future. While it's nice knowing I am so important, I guess, it's also not great to learn I have a damn target on my back. But well, better to learn it now, instead of at sword point or something. Ains, I would like to continue this, but at Nazarick, we would have more enforceable privacy there. Would I be able to trouble you and ask you to wait in Nazarick while I finish things up here? Shaking her head she said, No, that is fine, Ains. Nodding my head, I opened a gate to Nazarick, and turned my head to Cossitis. Ains, Cossitis? Since you are the most familiar with Artoria here, I would like you to accompany her to Nazarick, and make sure she is comfortable, and that no one bothers her unnecessarily. Cossitas bows to me and says, it would be my honor, ain't Sama. When both Artoria and Cossitas entered the gate and it closed I turned to Albedo. Ain't Albedo. You and I will have words later. I hope you now finally understand and take my warning seriously when I say there are stronger entities than myself. Her killing intent alone disabled my all of my guardians like you were children. Look, even the little imp we recruited ended up killing herself to get away from the intent. Albedo, I am most terribly sorry. Ain't Sama. As she bowed heavily to me, I could only sigh. Ain't Demi Urge. Get someone to resurrect the imp, and her pet human that is also dead just outside the doors. Then let's finish this little play. We have more important matters at hand all of a sudden. Demi Urge's voice cracked even so slightly as he responded, Yes, ain't Sama. I am glad Artoria didn't just up and murder all of us for that insult. She must really care for this dark goddess. I don't remember such a goddess in her anime though. Well. This is real life, so who's to say what's what in the universe? 247, Chapter 20, Small Bit of Self-Reflection As Cossetus was leading me down a hallway in the fabled Nazarick, I was too busy in my own mind to really admire anything. That was weird. I've never released killing intent before, or have even gotten that mad over. Well, anything before. But the rage I felt at Albedo for talking shit about Deowin was unreal. Honestly, I barely contained it. I was so very close to just murdering her. I don't understand why I had such a violent reaction like that though. I started to think over exactly what I felt towards Tierwin. After spending several minutes I came to a singular conclusion. Holy shit, I am basically a Yandia Siskon thing. I totally see myself as the older sister of Tierwin, and my desire to protect her and uphold her honor is unnatural. I don't feel sexually attracted to Tierwin in any way though. I just need to protect her. Is it because she has such an innocent feeling, even though she is a dark goddess? I was broken out of my musing by a question from Cossetis. Cossetis, I am sorry for Albedo's actions. Artoria, you hold Lady Tierwin in high regards. Yes, Artoria, I do. Yes, like I said, she is young, and I fancy myself as her older sister of sorts. It angers me greatly that anyone has ill will towards her. Cossetis, it is clear you care a great deal about her indeed artoria as much as you all care about ains i would say a puff of cold mist leaves cossetis as he nods and hums in agreement soon we walked up to a door and stopped cossetis this will be your room i will call a maid to attend you nodding my head I thank Cossitas before I open the door and walk into the room. Looking around, it was a very fancy guest room. There was a medium-sized coffee table in between two black couches. The whole room was purple with a gold trim themed, and there were several paintings of various creatures on the walls. Walking up to the door that was on the left side of the wall, I peeked inside to see the actual bedroom. It had a huge king-size bed filled with a crazy amount of pillows. 
There was a large looking closet and a full body mirror on the right side of the room, same color scheme as the little meeting room. On the left side, there was another door going into the room proper. I headed to the door and opened it, much to my expectation. This door led to a bathroom. Inside there was a rather large bath. Five people could fit comfortably inside the thing. Wanting to have a bath for one since becoming the new me, I dismissed my armor and clothes. While I don't need to shower or bathe as it seems I am somehow magically kept clean all the time. I still wanted to take a small dip. After washing down in the cleaning station, while the tub filled up, I got in. Something is missing, but something fell off, and I couldn't really think what. Then I suddenly got an idea. I started to flood the tub with black water raw. In a matter of seconds, the whole tub was converted from normal water, to my black water. I instantly felt calmer, and more relaxed after all the water was converted. Artoria, ah. Now this is relaxing, there is no temperature or anything now, but this just feels right. I leaned back comfortably in the bathtub turned black water holder, while relaxing in awe, I started to play with it a little, causing little vortexes, tiny little hurricanes, and otherwise just playing around. I don't know what it is about or, but it relaxes me, calms me down. Resting in it like this is almost as comfortable as when Tiawin hugged me along with all her tails. Once again thinking about why I acted the way I did with Tiawin being brought up, I really could only come up with that I was a total siscon of sorts. Wonder why I attached myself to her so fast though. I've only spent like an hour tops with her so far but I totally would go to bat for her. Thinking about all the reincarnators that were sent after Tiawin and her worlds, and the light gods that sent them, I started to get angry, as if it was reacting to my mood. The black water rippled several times as if in agreement with me. This broke me out of my musing as I looked down at it in wonder. Sometimes I could swear this stuff is semi-sentient. Raising my hand out of the water and holding it out palm up, the black water followed, it coursed around my hand softly, as if trying to hug it, I dropped my hand back down when I heard a knock on the bathroom door, question mark colon lady artoria, are you in there, artoria, I am, you may enter, question mark colon excuse me, then, entering the room was a maid I was familiar with, I could only smile internally if she was going to be my maid while I was in Nazarick. She bowed deeply as she introduced herself. Question mark colon I greet you, Lady Artoria. My name is Yuri Alpha. I am the maid who has been assigned to you for your stay, and any time you return. Artoria, R, Yuri. It's nice to meet you. Your creator, Yama Aiko, has done a wonderful job with you. Truly, out of respect for your creator, and ain'ts in general as well, I ask that you do not come near me, or... More specifically the black water. Yuri writes herself, and takes a few steps back with a tiny raised eyebrow. Yuri, you know my creator, my lady? Artoria. I know of her, yes. Several of the forty-one actually. She adjusts her glasses, and gives a nod. She then looks at the water and tilts her head. Yuri, that is not normal water. Is it my lady? Giving her a nod as I raise my hands out of the black water. It once again covers my arms fully, almost playful like in nature as it swirls around them. Artoria, that is correct. For this really isn't even water. Just looks like it. It's actually a substance called all the world's evil. The main reason I ask you to stay away, is as one of the properties of this water is to absolutely corrupt any being that touches it, to evil. It doesn't change their core principles, but does align them fully with evil. Focusing on the black water I try to reabsorb it for the first time since I have summoned it. I stand up, and cloth myself as the black water rushes up my body and fully covers me. Several seconds later, it seemingly recedes into my body and vanishes. Stepping out of the now empty bathtub in my dress, I give a nod to Yuri. Yuri, fascinating, my lady. Thank you for the warning. Do you mind if I tell everyone else about this substance? Shaking my head I say, not at all, Yuri. Giving me a small smile, she adjusts her glasses and nods. Yuri, is there anything you require right now, my lady? Artoria, some tea would be wonderful, Yuri. Surprise me, 
Or if Nazarek has a brand they use exclusively, that would be fine. Bowing to me she says, as you wish, my lady. She then turns around and leaves my room, with a sigh. I leave the bathroom and head to the little meeting room. I sit down on the left-sided couch and relax a bit while I wait for Yuri to return. It always feels disappointing to leave all. It is clearly more than what it originally was in my opinion. But I guess after spending several million years with the stuff, it was inevitable that it would change in some way. Lifting up my left hand, I summon a small amount of ore and start to lightly play with it, watching as it races round my hand and through my fingers. I smile softly. This ore is clearly as much of a part of me, as my sword is. Oh, speaking of absorbing the ore, I close my eyes and focus inwardly and summon my scabbard. Feeling a weight in my left hand, I open my eyes to see, not Avalon, brining my hand down. I rest Avalon on my lap as I look it over. Now, what to do with you? So your meaning and name changed. Yet we're still connected. I can feel the connection, much like with my sword but it feels only one way. You recognize me. But I don't recognize you. Clearly, I don't believe in Avalon, and so for you to recognize me. You don't mean Avalon anymore. But what do you represent now? And what is your new name? For several minutes I focus and meditate on, not Avalon, trying to get a hint at its new nature, its new name, feeling my, or rather its, connection to me I get an idea of its reason for acknowledgement of myself, it finds me worthy, worthy of, something, it finds me the most worthy and enjoys my presence most when, when, come on now, it's when I am doing something, but what, I frown in thought, as I try to probe the connection more, but, not Havilon, will not give me any more insight into it. Sadly, I am broken out of my thoughts and speculations by a knock on the door, turning my head to the door, I dismiss, not Avalon, Yuri, Lady Artoria, it is Yuri Alpha, Artoria, you may enter, Yuri, Yuri, excuse me, she then softly opens the door, and brings in a trolley with a tea set on top of it. Pushing the trolley to the table, she starts to prepare my tea. Watching her do her work, I could only internally nod at her skills. Well, that's a creation of Nazarek for you, I guess. Perfect in what she was created for. She is soon done with my tea, and places the cup on a plate in front of myself. Yuri, your tea is served, my lady. Please, enjoy. Giving her a nod. I take the cup and the little plate under it and raise it to my face. Not surprised Dino tea etiquette, honestly. What king would drink like a barbarian after all Tilda? Finishing up with the tea, I set it back down on the table and smile. Artoria, as expected of Nazarek. This is wonderful tea, Yuri. She bows and says, Thank you for your praise, my lady. Is there anything else you require at the moment? Shaking my head I say, No. I am fine Yuri, just let me know when Ains is ready to meet with me. Bowing again, she then sets the teapot on the table and pushes the trolley so it is out of view and not in the way. She then takes up a spot near the door and stands at the ready waiting to be addressed. A couple minutes later as I was still enjoying my cup of tea she spoke up. Yuri, my lady, Ains Sama says he will be ready to meet you in an hour. Giving her a nod I set the teacup back down. Artoria, thank you, Yuri. Leaning back into the couch, I cross my arms in thought. An hour isn't too bad. Gives me time to go over exactly what I want to talk about. Which, honestly, is just continuing to be open about exactly why I am here. And see if he maybe knows of the angel I am hunting. I think I'll do him a solid as well and tell him about the black scripture and blue roses. Going back to enjoying my tea and thinking about, not have alone again, an hour quickly came and went. Yuri, Lady Artoria, Ains Sama is ready for you now. Breaking from my musings, I look towards Yuri and give her a nod. Standing up, and walking over to her she opens the door for me and lets me through. Waiting for her, she quickly closes the door behind her, and starts to lead me. Artoria. Are we meeting in the throne room, or his meeting room? Without looking back at me Yuri says, Ains Sama would like to meet in the throne room, so he can have more of his floor guardians present comfortably. Artoria, that is fine with me. 
as we were making our way to the throne room, I fell into thought. So, after all the time I am at least a little closer to understanding, not Avalon. It is something to do with fighting, is what I have come up with, but it's obviously not that simple. It'll take some more time and reflection, but I am at least sure of that. Several minutes later, we came upon the massive doors that will lead to the throne room. The majestic set of double doors were over five meters in height, and covered in intricate carvings. The left side was shaped into a beautiful goddess, while the right was made to resemble a cruel demon. As we approached them, they opened automatically and revealed the rather massive and open throne room. You can tell this was created by players in a game as a fighting arena. Massive, with several pillars to use for line of sight, but it still looks elegant and impressive. Looking ahead, I can see Ains sitting on the throne with most of the floor guardians present, along with the Pleiades six stars. To his right is Albedo, Shultir, and Dora. To his left are Sebastian, Demiurge, Cossetus, Maya, and Victim. Really brought out everyone eh? Even Victim. Oh well, it doesn't matter. Following Yuri till she stopped some distance away from the throne, she bowed towards Ains. Yuri. Introducing Lady Artoria Alter, she then writes herself, and walks off to the side and joins her sisters. Ains, greetings, Artoria Dono. As previously stated, I would like to continue our conversation from before. Giving a nod to Ains I say, of course, we have several things to go over. 238, Chapter 21, A Talk with Bone Daddy. Artoria, so like I have stated before this world, and by that I mean the entire universe not just this planet, is under the purview of the dark goddess Tiawin. And as a young goddess, the light gods want to take advantage of this by sending agents to her worlds. By doing so they hope to change the fate of the worlds, making them lean to the light, and steal said world from Tiawin. This is, naturally, unacceptable. And since divine law prevents her from coming down herself to deal with these garbage upstarts, I have come in her place. Any questions so far? Ains, none thusly, no. Well, I have a few, but they can wait for another time. Giving a nod, I continue my explanation. Artoria, now, how this affects you is simple. In the first world, as you call it, the reincarnator had appeared and started to muck around in Yggdrasil. Are you familiar with a thing called a system in stories about reincarnators? Ains. Are you referring to the support and cheat-like existence that appear in some stories and novels, that boosts their host with cheat-like stats and skills? Giving a nod I say, yes, exactly. This system is quite powerful, as it is meant to help the host eventually turn the fate of this world to the light. As such, it is the power to blind dear wind to the events happening in the world. However, it can only block her sight of the world it currently is in. So when they left the first world, and came here, she was able to see what happened in the first world and gleamed some information. This reincarnator has plans to convert you to the light, if at all possible, or, kill you if all else fails. She has already started to make some moves, as when I arrived in this world I stumbled upon the black scripture from the slain theocracy meeting with the blue roses and red drop. Ains, oh, the black scripture was it? And, what was this meeting about? Shrugging my shoulders I say, no idea. They stopped when they all sensed me. Strong souls for some humans, but the meeting isn't what I was getting at. All their souls, minus the man from Red Drop, were all stained by the light. All the guardians had a bit of confusion on their faces while Ains leaned forward slightly in interest. Ains, stained, you say? Nodding, I say, yes. Think of it much like corruption, but for light. It was slowly converting their souls to the light, and it would eventually have made them agents of the light. As agents, they would be like the reincarnator, and start to sway fate away from the dark. I killed the black scripture, who was responsible for Shiltia by the way, while purging the light completely from blue roses. The atmosphere got a bit heavier when I mentioned Shiltia, and Ains's eyes flared a bit as he leaned forward even more. Ains. What do you mean the black scripture was responsible for Shiltia? Artoria, for her forced betrayal. They used the world item, downfall of castle and country, on her. Interestingly though, she wasn't actually the main target. 
They were on their way to use that against the catastrophe dragon lord, but they got unlucky and ran into her. Leaning back into his throne Ains simply said, I see, and you killed them, you said. Shrugging and giving a nod I say, yes, they were rather rude and presumptuous. Their bodies and gear were melted by my black water sadly, so nothing you can take or resurrect. Ains, a shame, truly, but we got sidetracked. Apologies, waving my hand in dismissal I say, not at all, Ains, you care deeply for the denizens of Nazarek, as you rightly should, there is no fault in that, nodding Ains said, thank you for your understanding, Artoria, as I was saying, I took care of the black scripture and blue roses, I corrupted the roses with my black water, so there is no hope of them being stained by the light again, well, not easily anyway. So just know if you meet a certain little vampire, Evil Eye by the way, don't be surprised if she is much darker than you remember. I could almost swear I heard the question go off in Ains's head, Evil Eye's a vampire? Chuckling softly inwardly, I turn my head to Albedo and then to Demi Urge. Artoria, you two might be able to use blue roses a lot easier now. Much like the Golden Princess they will be easier to mold. Albedo merely raised an eyebrow while Demiurge adjusted his glasses with a nod. Returning my attention back to Ains I finally get to the topic of the reincarnator proper. Artoria. Anyway, the reincarnator has to be killed. And the most surefire way to make sure they stay dead, is to have them take a dip in my black waters. And since they are a level 100 or higher high seraphim angel, I might need to clip some wings. Metaphorically and literally, Ains, wait, a high seraphim angel, a woman I take it, if so, then I might know who you hunt, and it's not great for me, and beyond level 100, Artoria, yes, a woman, and remember, she has a system cheat, she used it a lot to adjust things while in the first world, so to expect her to be like any other normal level 100 player is foolish, Ains just groaned in ignorance, Ains, True. Well, the High Seraphim Angel that you hunt is most likely Lily from the Solo Guild Light's true path. And now that I know she is actually an agent for the Gods of Light, I find that naming to be a little on the nose. No one could see it, but I had such a painful looking deadpan stare on my face right now. Really? Light's true path. Damn. Talk about being blatant in who supports you, Albedo, that airheaded harlot is some special agent of the Light? Ains looks a little taken aback, somehow, from Albedo's outburst, while I merely raise an eyebrow. Artoria, you know of her too, Albedo? Albedo lost all her elegance, and huffed in anger while crossing her arms over her ample chest. Albedo, I do, yes, the supreme beings talked about her trying to seduce Ains Sama all the time, and how she just wouldn't leave him alone. I knew that bitch had a scheme behind that stupid facade of hers. Tilting my head slightly, I look pointedly at Ains. Ains coughed into his fist before speaking up. I didn't miss the green glow that washed over him though. Ains, yes, well, she was very, ah, uh, how should I say it, persistent in wanting my attention, and desperately wanted to join the guild, but her personality towards everyone else was dismissive so I didn't feel like she would fit that, and she didn't seem to do anything but stay in Yggdrasil, dodged a bullet there it would seem, Artoria, I would say so, yes, she most likely would have messed with the NPC settings and law, changing everyone drastically, another green glow washed over Ains before he spoke up, Ains, that is a very real possibility, if she is what you say she is, then she would have 100% changed all of my friend's children. That alone angers me more than her coming after me. Floor Guardians. Ain't Sama. Fanatical loyalty is scary. I think while also ignoring the fact I am more or less the same way towards Tiowin, coughing into his hand again, Ain't moved the conversation along. Ain't, right, so, how exactly do you want to go about hunting Lily? Artoria Dono. Artoria, honestly, I want you to not leave Nazarek if possible. The fact that she hasn't just attacked you, or appeared before you yet is a good sign. Most likely means she is not confident about taking on all of your guardians at once, or, she has a plan to get you when you leave. 
Your fate is well known to people outside your universe after all. Ains's A's seemed to go out when I finished talking. Ains, my fate, is, well known. Giving him a sly grin and I nod I say, yes, it is. They won't know everything about you, but will know enough. She was able to hunt you down easily enough in Idrisal, was she not? After another wash of green light, Ains brought his hand up to stroke his chin in thought. Ains, true. But while it is disastrous that I have lost the element of surprise if she knows all, or most of, Nazarek's capabilities it is not hopeless, we can use the fact that she expects me to act a certain way against her. Giving a smile I nod and say, that's right. She doesn't know about me yet, but will soon. After all, I did deal with some key people in this world, while removing the light from them. Nodding his head Ains said, true, but still. I can make this work possibly, but while she knows a lot about me, I know precocious little about her, and her system, which I am going to assume is a total cheat. Artoria, safe to say so, yes, Ains hummed in thought for a few minutes before speaking up again. Ains, you said most know my fate, I take it, you do as well. I give a nod and say, and while it is fate, it is also not set in stone. Obviously, Ains, perfect. Then we can work off that and create a trap for Lily. I would have liked to talk to her and maybe even have her join us. Obviously, that is not going to happen now that I know who and what she is. Albedo, Humphrey. Ignoring Albedo, Ains asked, You said the best way to assure her destruction was your black water? Is this the substance that Yuri Alpha reported? For an answer. I simply raised my right hand and summoned some of my lovely black water. It started to flow around my hand playfully as everyone watched in interest. Demi urge, what a most fascinating substance. You can literally feel the evil emanating from it. I slyly smile inwardly at Demi urge's excitement. Naturally the guardian designed round the prefect evil would be so drawn to my black water. Ains, indeed, that water gives off a fearsome feeling. But I fail to see how this would take care of Lily. Artoria, as an agent of the light, she can't be corrupted with my black water. Instead, her soul reacts violently to it, her and her system. They will both simply be broken down, and erased when submerged in the waters. Shltia, erased? Artoria, erased from existence. Well, the system is, the host's soul most likely just gets reset and sent back into the natural sea of reincarnation. Ains, I see. And, how much of this substance can you create? I cross my arms over my chest as the black water starts to play around my entire body. Artoria, I could eventually cover this entire planet if given enough time. But, honestly, you don't want that. Not everything will be blessed with the darkness. If a soul, or body, is too weak they are simply destroyed. Demi urge, Lady Artoria, if I may, nodding my head. He continues, may I have some of this substance to research? Smiling at him I say, if your master is fine with it, I can create as much as you want. Demi urge, ain't summer, ain't, I am fine with that. Just make sure it is properly contained. I do not want to magically change any of the children of my friends like that. Demi urge, of course. Ain't Sama, thank you for granting my selfish desire. Ain't just gave a dismissive way and said, It is no problem Demi Urge. I expect great things from your research into this substance. Thank you, Artoria Dono for granting my servant his request. Artoria, think nothing of it. Ain't Demi Urge. After we are done here, just come and get me whenever you are ready to receive the black waters. With a slight bow Demi Urge thanked me. Ain't. Returning to the issue of Lily, we have a way to destroy her, so now we need a plan of action, and more information on her abilities would also do us well. We should assume she is powerful, and treat her as a serious threat. Artoria, fine with me. I am in no rush right this second, so I will defer to you in this matter for now. You have more resources than I do to find her. I dislike the idea of just wandering around aimlessly looking for the pigeon. Albedo and Shiltia quietly snicker at the insult. Artoria, you said she was in a solo guild? Do you know what her base is? Ains, R, that's right. If I remember, she had a floating city base. What was it called? R, right. 
The guild base was called, Avalon. My brow twitched a little at that name, Artoria. You don't say, Ains, ah. I guess that name would hold more meaning for you, Shutia. I don't understand, Ains Sama, Artoria, because of my legend. You can ask him later when I am gone. I have long since abandoned the person I was in that legend. Avalon is a false hope, an existence that cannot come about to reality with free will. It was a foolish dream and goal of a foolish and naive king. Shutia, I see. Ains, back to her guild base. Sadly, not much is known about it, as no one ever managed to find and raid it back in Yggdrasil. I always thought it was weird, but I am willing to bet her system had a hand in that. Artoria, that is a safe bet, yes. While it couldn't blatantly break the systems of Yggdrasil, it could push the boundaries rather far, so the devs never notice and remove her, nodding his head in agreement. Ains sighed. Ains. Never did I expect to have to deal with a reincarnator like this. Artoria. Hey, at least it's not the Spanish Inquisition. Ains, and all his guardians, tilt their heads in confusion. Artoria. Never mind. A joke from a long time ago. Ains. Right. Anyway. In the end we know precious little about Lily and what she can do. So, we need to change that. But, from how relaxed you've been about this whole thing, you are confident you can take her on? Artoria. Oh, yes. Yes I am. I summon my sword and release a bit of my magical pressure. Artoria, honestly, turning herself into a high seraphim angel was a bad move. Corrupted holy swords are the perfect counter, and nothing is more powerful than mine. Demi urge, that sword is just as interesting, if not more so, than the black water. It gives off a feeling of holy energy that makes my skin crawl and causes my instincts to scream at me to run as fast and as far as I can. But it also gives off a darkness that welcomes me into its embrace. Most fascinating indeed. Ains leaned forward in interest, while his eyes flared up in intensity for a second. Ains, Artoria Dono. May I use magic to identify your weapon? I pull back in my magical presence, while also absorbing the black water that has been playing around me and give him a nod. Ains, all appraise magic item. A few seconds after Ains had cast his magic, a green glow washed over him. Ains, well, to be expected the Excalibur. A very powerful sword indeed, I wonder what he saw exactly with his magic. Dismissing my sword, I give a nod. Artoria, yes, it has been my faithful companion for a long, long time. Ains, indeed, that is clear. Now, back to Lily. I would like to make a plan with my floor guardians, and then share such a plan with you. If that is fine Artoria don't know. The first stage will be trying to find and gather information about her. Artoria. Yeah, I am okay with that. I am not overly big on meetings anymore. I've had my fill of them since back then. Back when I was a nobody human in a dead-end job I mean. Ains. Excellent. Then let's end this conversation here for now. Demi urge. Do you need some time to plan the containment of the black water? Or are you already done with that? Demi urge. I need some time to set up the plan I have made, but otherwise I am done ain't Sama. Ain't good. Yuri, escort Artoria Dono back to her chambers for now. Demi Urge will come for you when he is ready. Artoria Dono. Yuri, as you say, ain't Sama. Giving a nod to ain't. I follow Yuri back to my room. Well, we talked about a lot, and not a lot at the same time. A. Eh? Whatever, as long as he helps me find the garbage the gods have sent after Tierwin. I don't really care. POV switch ain't so ill gown. As I watched Artoria leave, I couldn't help but think back to the information the spell had given me about her sword. What it showed me, honestly terrified me to my core. Ains, floor guardians. I know we went over this briefly, but I will say it again. Never, and I mean never. Antagonize Artoria. Shutia. May we know why? Ain't Sama. Even the agent of the light gods, Lily, doesn't want to mess with us directly. What makes Artoria different? Raising my hand I say, this. Viewing panel, recall, all appraise magic item. In front of us, a display showed up with the information I got about her weapon. Excalibur M Iota O Iota Gun. Soul weapon. Noble phantasm rank. X plus type, 
anti-existence, kills, 674,340,235,456 abilities, no iota peaking. Shutia, I do not understand most of what is shown, but her kill count is astounding. Cositis, it is. Little wonder she had such killing intent with a count like that. I expected her to be a fine warrior, but this is beyond anything I could even think of. Ains, what you all really need to take away from this is that she is beyond our abilities in terms of skill and power. Demi urge, as much as it pains me. I must agree with Ains Sama to have slain so many speaks volumes and explains why the sword gives off such a presence. Albedo, as much as I loathe to agree, I am forced to as well. Demi urge, I am curious about why the name and abilities are weird though. Ains, I have a few theories but I do not want to just make wild baseless guesses for now. The name is odd, for sure, but it clearly, corrupted or not states no peaking for abilities, meaning something is stopping my magic, the goddess Deerwin maybe, and that rank, X plus, was that a thing in the universe she was in? I don't think so, but this just further proves what we've seen in anime can hold little truth in the real world. Waving my hand, the display disappears. Ains, for now, we can count her as an ally, and if we stay on her good side, it will most likely stay that way until she leaves our world. So, let's do that. Nazareth cannot afford to make an enemy out of her. Am I understood? Guardians. Yes. Ain't Sama. Ain't. Good. Now, let's move to the meeting room, and devise a plan for Lily. She is a threat we have to remove. I refuse to let someone like her run around and threaten Nazareth. 241. Chapter 22. The hunt is on. Target. Lily Lytel, it's been about a week or so since my meeting with Ains, and I am once again sitting in the room assigned to myself focusing on, not Avalon. It's been a pretty productive week, both in terms of my understanding of, not Avalon, and making headway against the reincarnator Lily. It seems she has taken up a spot north of the Rubble Holy Kingdom, somewhere in the open sea. Demiurge was able to find plenty of rumors about her around the said kingdom. And now that he knows what and who to look for, it turns out she isn't very subtle at all in trying to hide herself. She made a rather big entrance on the Holy Queen's birthday, saying she was sent by the gods of light to turn this world away from the coming darkness and save everyone. Naturally, the religious fools bought it hook, line, and sinker. While the Queen tried her best to keep Lily's appearance under the proverbial radar, you really can't hide something like that entirely. She has been hard at work it seems, trying to remove the racism from the nation towards demi-humans as well. Saying all, are loved by the gods of light, and such and such, seems, not to my surprise, humans being humans are resistant to that kind of instant change. Even when it is being brought about by a literal agent of the gods you believe in. Honestly, she's doing a lot of good work for the world. And as a bonus, it's work that Haynes can build off of for his own world order. Breaking out of my focus on my scabbard, I sigh a little and dismiss it. Well, after all this time, I can confirm that, not Havilon has to do with fighting. No, that's wrong. Fighting isn't the right word. War. Yes, that's better. War. I was broken out of my musing by Yuri Alpha addressing me. Yuri, pardon my interruption, Lady Artoria. Ain't Sama would like to meet with you in the throne room if you are available. Giving her a nod I say, I am, Yuri, please inform him. As such, she gave me a bow, and went silent for a moment. She then gave a soft nod and addressed me again. Yuri, Ain't Sama says he will meet you in 15 minutes. Giving her a nod I stood up and stretched, even if it was pointless and I didn't need to. I then headed towards my bedroom. Artoria, I'll be in my bedroom for a few minutes. Just give the door a knock when it is time for me to leave. Yuri. She bowed and said, as you wish. Lady Artoria. Opening and heading into my room, I closed the door behind me with a nudge of magic since I couldn't be bothered to turn around. I made my way over to the full-length mirrors and dismissed all my clothes as I looked over myself. 
My corruption lines and definitely multiply as I feel my connection to the ore deepen. No, maybe deepen is the wrong word. Reacquaint myself with it maybe? Feeling like that was the right answer, I gave myself a nod and continued to look at myself. I am also starting to get taller. Am I aging? My breasts have definitely gotten a tad bigger. I'll have to ask Lady Lilith about this, or maybe even Tearwind will know. Looking up at my face the corruption lines were more numerous as well, like with the rest of my body, but my eyes are what really drew my attention. My sclera was black, and instead of the normal dull yellow everyone gets when corrupted by ore, my eyes were a very vibrant and glowing gold, a stark contrast to the rest of the black in my eyes. While my pupils were slits, like a dragon's, this is also a different change, I like it. But I wonder what is actually happening. I understand Lady Lilith does a lot of things in the background, and what you see isn't what you only get but this has me curious. Honestly, I really like the glow. Looking up at the top of my head, yet another change had taken place that went unnoticed. My hair was still the same color as before, a light yellow, but now it was extremely long, willing my hair down. It draped along my back all the way down to just below my butt. I didn't realize my hair was so long. How was all of this kept in that tiny bun? Turning my head and body every which way I could to get a better look at my entire body, I eventually gave myself a nod. These changes are not unwanted, honestly. I wonder if I'll grow into the older version of Artoria Alter, the Lancer version. I wouldn't mind that honestly. When that thought crossed my mind, I instantly tried to focus inward to see if I could summon a mount. TCH, no luck. Oh well. Shrugging. I re-summoned my clothes and armor. Looking into the mirror again with everything equipped, I undid my hair again. Stepping away from the mirror and into a more open spot in the bedroom, I summoned my sword and started to phantom fight. I wanted to see what it was like with my long hair freely flowing. Much to my delight, it didn't get in the way of my stances and swings. Dismissing my sword, and looking at the mirror I smiled. Yeah, I like my look a lot more with my hair flowing freely like this. Glad I took the time to finally look at myself. The changes are subtle for most of my body and I would have missed them for a while. Got to remember to ask Deerwin or Lady Lilith if at all possible. Nodding to myself, I head back to the meeting room. As I open the door, I seem to have caught Yuri mid-knock. Yuri, ah, my apologies Lady Artoria. Ain't Summer is ready to meet you now. Artoria, excellent. Let us be off then, Yuri. Bowing again, she then turned around to lead me back to the throne room. Closing the door again with a magic nudge I could only silently snicker at myself. I have gotten really lazy in some aspects now that I have magic. Several minutes later, Yuri and I were entering the throne room again. Looking past my maid escort, I could see that it was just Taints and Alberto this time meeting me. Walking up to the exact same place the few times we've been here, Yuri bowed to Aints, announced me and then went off to the side to wait. If I ever settle down somewhere, I need a real maid like Yuri. 100% professional is so refreshing. Ains, thank you for coming, Artoria Dono. As we have planned, today is the day Demiurge has left to attack the Rubble Holy Kingdom. From all the information we have gathered about Lily, it is very likely she will appear to stop or convert him. Giving him a nod. He continued, Ains, I am glad that your black water will prevent that one outcome though. The tests he has done have been very enlightening to say the least about the substance. To think it would confer a 100% resistance to holy damage as well? Very welcome to one such as myself. Giving Ains a wry smile and a nod I say, I imagine so. I had a feeling it wouldn't really change anything about entities with a minus 500 karma score. Are you thinking about taking a dip yourself? I can confirm your soul and body are more than enough to withstand the conversion. Ains gave a soft hum and a light nod. Ains, I would be lying if I said I was not considering it. He reached out with his left hand and opened his inventory. His hand disappeared into the rip in reality as he reached for something. I am a little disappointed that I cannot learn their magic. But it makes sense I guess. I was never connected to Drizzle, so my soul was not modified. 
A moment later Reigns withdrew his hand and was holding a large vial filled with a black substance. I could instinctively tell it was my black water. Reigns, as such, I am keeping a sample with me at all times. I will use it in an emergency if all else fails, and I need it. For now though, I will abstain from taking a swim as you say. Nodding my head I said, that is a good contingency plan. Back to Demi urged though, no change in the plan? Ains put the vial back into his inventory, and nodded his head. Ains, correct. He should be coming up to the wall of the rubble holy kingdom soon. I will then open a gate for you. Artoria, simple, but you don't need complex schemes all the time. Ains, that is the true R. He has been confronted by her, opening the gate. And Artoria Dono, make it hurt. It angers me greatly that someone wants to change the children of my dear friends. Gate. Giving him a smirk filled with malice, I nod as I step through the gate spell. Tilda several minutes before Tilda, POV switch Lily Lytel, as I was levitating above the wall of the rubble holy kingdom under the effects of, perfect unknowable. I was a little sad at what I was about to do, you know, Rose. I don't want to have to kill Demi Urge. It will hurt Ains greatly, and will turn him against me for sure. Are you sure we can't do what we did with the Black Scripture people and Blue Roses and bless him with the light? I am sorry, Lily, but it won't work on a demon like Demi Urge. It would have if we managed to get at his settings and changed them. But sadly we were unable to infiltrate the Ains Soil Gown Guild. I looked down in sadness at that. Yay, that was totally my failure. I came off too strong to Ains at the time, and was a little too indifferent to his friends. A little? Okay, a lot. But, they wouldn't have followed us. And I was still just caught up in the moment okay? After getting my new body, and mentality, I really do see the error of my ways though. I am still surprised you wanted to change your personality, Lily. Well. I was not the best person, I freely admit that. This transmigration to the new world, and my reincarnation with you? It was the perfect chance to build myself anew to the person I always wanted to be, but couldn't because of life. Understandable. I was a little worried. Lily, you made some drastic changes, but I'll be honest, you are better for it. You are also a lot closer to your powers of light, and even enjoy yourself a lot more. I smile and nod at that. Yes, these changes are great, but they also opened myself to a different kind of pain. I truly feel horrible about what I am going to do to Demi Urge, and thus to Ains. Even with all these changes, I still love him. Silly, isn't it? To be in love with a fictional character at first. I don't think it is silly. And he was never fictional. You know this now. You know a bit more about how the universe really works. And, unlike Demi Urge, we can bless Ains with the light. Smiling a bit wider at that I nod again. That's true. But, as much as I love Ains, I cannot let Demi Urge go through with this war. So many innocents, on both sides, will die a needless death. I wish we could have saved the Reest's kingdom, but I trust the quest the gods of light gave me. Admittedly, there was a lot of corruption in that country. And we can trust that the gods of light will do right by all the souls we had to leave to suffer that fate. Agreed. I then brought up my status to check since I've been neglecting it lately to help the Holy Queen with problems in her nation. Name. Lily Lytel. Age. 2132. Sex. Female. Karma. Plus 600. Race. High Seraph Angel. 14 Wings. Level. 189, all levels, stats assimilated from Yggdrasil gain, racials, expand plus, magics, expand plus, abilities, expand plus, skills, expand plus, passives, expand plus, quests, 2 active, 3 unaccepted, store points, 8, attributes and stats, health, 1900, mana, 3021, strength, 150. Vitality. 100. Dexterity. 90. Intelligence. 700. Wisdom. 640. Defense. 200. Resistance. 500. Not bad for how little I've put into it, right Rose? Yes, that's true. You're easily the most powerful entity on this planet with those stats. But it never hurts to have more power, 
and our goal after all is to call down that evil dark god and defeat it eventually after all. Getting a serious look, I give a nod. That's true. While I can stomp anything in this world, I am no match for a real dark god that's for sure. Oh. There is Demiurge, with a sigh. I float down slightly and get ready to make my appearance. I really didn't want to kill Demiurge. It is not his fault he was created that way. I am sorry, Demiurge. I am sorry I couldn't save you. Don't worry, the gods of light will cleanse his newborn soul and he will be reborn as something good. I am sure. I give a nod, and take solace in the fairness of the gods of light. Well, let's do this Rose. I am with you, Lily. Always revealing myself to the Demiurge, and the army behind him in a show of light I try to appear as intimidating as possible. Lily, stop, demon. Your war is not wanted here. Leave, or I will be forced to destroy you. Everyone stopped at my sudden appearance and the reactions were quite varied. The humans on the wall all looked up at me with reverence, and some even started to bow down in prayer, while the demir humans just all froze in shock, and backed away ever so slightly. But before I could speak again Demiurge started to lightly chuckle, of all things not. The reaction I was expecting from a demon seeing an angel, I admit something is wrong. Lily, when I inspect him, he has a passive he didn't have in the anime, according to our knowledge. It's called, awe, and gives him 100% holy resistance, an immunity to the light's sway. A? Eh? A demon with 100% holy resistance is troublesome, but I have other spells, but the fact it prevents the light specifically is worrying. Did he somehow get blessed by the dark god? I don't know how, but it seems that way. Be careful Lily, I will. Demi urge, ah, and so the little bird has fallen into our trap. Lily, you know I was going to be here, and still came, demon, I am a lot stronger than you know, Demi urge, oh, I am quite positive you are stronger than myself, I agree, but Miss Agent of the Light, are you stronger than, her, huh? wait, what did he say about the light, he knows we were sent by the gods of light, I guess that pretty much confirms the dark god has interfered somehow, well, maybe the dark god also sent a reincarnator, but I don't sense any other systems in this world at all. That's good then, right? As I asked Rose that, a, gate, spell opened near Demiurge. A moment later, my mouth dropped open wide when I saw who stepped out. Is, is, is that Saba Alter? Without delay, I quickly used the systems, inspect, skill on her name, Arturia Pendragon Alter. Age. 19,502,341. Sex, female. Karma, dash, race. Corrupted heroic spirit, modified. Level, cannot compute. Racials, unknown. Magics, unknown. Abilities, unknown. Skills, unknown. Passives, unknown. Error, error, attributes and stats cannot be quantified. Error, error. What's in there? Rose, what is going on with this status display? We need to run. Lily, that isn't a reincarnator like you. She has no system, she is the real deal. You're looking at a real Arturia Pendragon who was corrupted by all the world's evils. We need to run, now. Don't need to tell me twice. Lily, great to tell. But much to my dismay and horror, Demiurge was faster. Demiurge, dimensional lock. Now now, we only just met. Miss Agent of Light. I would be saddened to part so soon after our first meeting. You were so serious just a moment ago. Where did all your steam go? With an internal apology to everyone who is about to get caught up in my spell and a prayer to the gods of light to look after their souls, I take out a cash shop item. Without wasting any time, I crush the little hourglass in my hand and instantly cast a super dear spell. Lily. Sword of Damocles. As my spell went off, the clouds above us broke apart as a massive holy sword broke through, and headed straight for my target, Saba Alter. This spell was meant to destroy large structures, as it acted like a magical orbital weapon. But with an entity like Saba Alter in front of me, I did not want to take any risks of either dying to her, or having her get away. Incoming. The world went white as the sword impacted, the worryingly calm looking, Saba Alter, followed by the blinding light, 
There was a massive thunderous roar as the spell blew apart the world around us. About a minute later, with my ears still ringing from being so close to the impact zone of the spell, I looked around at the destruction as the dust was beginning to settle. I am sorry, everyone. I truly am. May the gods of light embrace your souls, and carry you into a life filled with light and love. Even through the dust that was still settling, I could easily see the massive damage my spell had caused. The area around me, around one kilometer, was totally obliterated. No wall, no trees, no hills, no people, human or otherwise. Rose. I. I know. Lily. I know, but I agree with your snap thinking. That was Arturia Pendragon of all people, and with her bugged out status, it was safe to assume she was not just a run-of-the-mill version of her. This massive loss of life is horrible, but you prevented many more deaths from taking her out so soon. I know. Know that. But I still feel horrible. Wait, remember. Get to level 200. You could then learn the super dear spell, Mass True Resurrect and bring all these souls back, we'll have to wait until level 300 for the other spell we wanted, but we could bring everyone that is innocent back, my eyes light up at that, Rose was right, I could bring everyone I killed back with that super dear spell, then we have a goal, Rose, we will be spending however long it takes to get to 200 in the ID create, set the time dilation to maximum, I don't want them to have to wait long, my pleasure, Lily. Let's do thi- What? Tilting my head in confusion, I ask Rose what was wrong. I- I can't create the dungeon. What? Why? Because- There is an enemy near dot by- My head instantly snapped to where Saba Alter was standing when the spell hit. The dust was still very much in the way, so I didn't get to see if she was actually killed by the spell yet. No, you're joking. There is no way she survived that spell. Lily, Gust, with a basic wind spell, I cleared all dust away from the impact site, and to my absolute horror, Saba Alter was still there, standing, floating, in the air like it was just another day at the office. Not possible, Rose and I both yelled in my head. She then looked up at us and tilted her head. Saba Alter, was that all, little bird? I expected more from a hound of the light. Lily, we're in trouble, if even that spell didn't phase her. I just gulped loudly as Saba Alter summoned her sword, and pointed it at me. Saba Alter, I am disappointed in your pathetic show of force. Die. She then charged at me faster than I could even perceive, and I only was able to dodge and respond with a counter spell because of my new instincts. Lily, time stop. The world around me turned grey, as everything came to a stop. Thankfully, even Saba Alter stopped. Well, mostly stopped. She was still moving ever so slightly. My skill, accelerated thinking, activated to give myself even more time to think. Good thinking, Lily. This gives us a bit of breathing room. Now what? I have no idea. We only have 10 seconds of real time, and that spell has a one minute cooldown. Even then, she is slightly resisting it. Magic isn't going to work here. Maybe I call in my own floor guardians? Maybe. But I don't think they'll stand a chance against Tartoria. That super dear spell you used was no joke after all. With a sigh, I nod my head and agree with Rose. We were in a really tight spot. And since I still can't teleport, Demiurge also somehow survived. But I have no time to worry about him. It's clear Saber Alter is a much bigger threat than anything I have faced to date. I am worried we will lose, Rose. She is really strong, too strong. Enough of that, Lily. Come, let's plan. I am sure we can come up with something. Somehow, with nine more seconds of real time left, Rose and I start brainstorming as if our lives depended on it. Because, they really did. 238. Umk 1. Tierwin's true and terrifying power. Tierwin. Artoria, Artoria. Hearing Tierwin call my name, I open my eyes and find myself back in her Sigura forest. Looking around, I quickly find Tierwin jumping around excitedly behind me. Artoria, hello, Tierwin. What has gotten you so excited? Tierwin, big sister Lilith just told me about this old custom from a human world. It's called, Halloween. Do you know about it? Dismissing my armor. 
I smile down at her excitable form and give a nod. Artoria, I do, Tierwin. Are you interested in Halloween? Tierwin, yes. Big Sister Lilith told me so many interesting things the humans do on Halloween, like trick-or-treating, or the best part, dressing up as your favorite dark monster or person. Oh, speaking of that, look, Tierwin then snapped her fingers, and a cloud of pink smoke erupted around her. Several seconds later the cloud dissipated, and what I saw would have slain me if I was immortal. Tierwin was standing there in a proud pose, with her little hands bowed into fists resting on her hips. She now only had nine tails, and they were about as long as her now. But what really changed was her clothes. She was dressed up like a little kitsune version of myself, except the corruption lines on her armor and body were a vivid pink. Oh my lily, she even has a tiny version of Excalibur Morgan in her colors. A cute Tierwin. Behold, when Big Sister Lilith said they liked to dress up as their favorite dark creatures or people, I immediately thought of you, and Big Sister helped me with this costume. She then got a little timid, and her ears and tails drooped a little while she poked her two index fingers together. Tierwin, do. Do you like it? Artoria, I love it. I would be dead from how cute you look if I was mortal. Tierwin, her ears and tails shot up and she let out an adorable giggle. Tierwin, yay, look, look, I even have a version of your sword. She then started to swing the tiny Excalibur around while making whooshed sounds. Please, stop, I very well may disappear from this cuteness overload. Tierwin, by the way, Big Sister Lilith also did something else for me. She made it so I can ignore divine law for tonight, and go down to a world and trick or treat with you. Will you please come with me? The massive smile on my face would have gotten even larger if it was at all possible. Artoria, I would love to, Tierwin. Since most mortals can't see me, I will just be your escort though. Is that fine? Tierwin gave an energetic nod, and jumped up to my chest to hug me. Tierwin, it's fine. We can have fun even if the boring mortals can't see you. Catching Tierwin, and placing her so she can sit on my left arm like a chair. I give her a nod. Artoria, did you want me to also armor up just in case someone can see me? That way they can see we match. Tierwin, yes please. Giving a little chuckle, I do as she asked and re-summoned my armor. Artoria, I am ready. Tierwin, Tierwin started to bounce a little on my arm, and then snapped her fingers. One of her portals appeared, and then she cheered while yelling. Tierwin, for the tricks for the treats, for fun times, with Artoria, let's go, laughing at the ball of pure adorable energy on my arm, I walk through the portal, a few seconds later, we stepped out on the sidewalk in some random neighborhood, Tierwin then jumped off my arm, and summoned a plain looking pink's bag for her left hand, she then held up her black and pink Excalibur and said, our night begins, onward, Artoria, after you, little Artwin, when I said that, she spun around with a smile on her face. Tierwin. I like that name. I'll be Artwin when dressed like this. Thank you Artoria. Smiling, I give her a nod, and follow after her as she almost literally starts skipping to the first house near us. Looking around the street, all of the houses are decorated in Halloween themes and there are a lot of humans out trick or treating. None of them saw us. Portlin, as expected a Tierwin, nodding to myself. I stood behind Tierwin as we came up to the first house and Tierwin knocked on the door. Several seconds later, the door opened and a middle-aged woman stood there with a bowl of candies. She looked down at Tierwin and smiled. Question mark colon and who might you be, little knight? Tierwin, my name is Artwin. I am a knight of the forces of darkness. Trick or treat. The woman giggled softly at the adorable knight of darkness holding out a bag for sweets. As she handed Tierwin a few pieces of candy. Question mark colon the forces of light better beware. With such a strong and imposing knight on darkness's side, Tierwin then took her proud pose again, and nodded. Tierwin, they better. The woman laughed again and said, truly fearsome. You have a wonderful night, Knight Artwin. Tierwin, thank you. I will. We left as the woman closed her door. Tierwin was nothing but smiles as she spoke up. Tierwin, first mission, 
success. She must be a very smart mortal to see that I was dressed as you so easily. Suppressing a giggle. I say, indeed. Onward, tear win. Onward. This back and forth went on for several houses. When we were standing in line for another house, I happened to hear something that ruined the mood slightly for myself. Question mark colon see that little one there? Question mark colon hum. Oh, the little fox pretending to be a human knight? Question mark colon yes. She has nine tails. Isn't that as many as the Yukai leader has? Her daughter maybe? Where are the guards? Question mark colon stepped away. Or she snuck out. I heard the child was a bit of a handful. What are you thinking? Question mark colon I am thinking we grab her, and make that bitch of a mother of hers our bitch. Having had enough of that conversation I lean down to Tearwin and whisper in her ear. Artoria, Tearwin, I need to step away for a second. Just wait here in line for a bit, okay? I'll be back as soon as possible. Tearwin turned around and gave me a nod. Tearwin. Okay, make it hurt, alright? They are ruining my time with you. And that upsets me. My eyebrows raise a little at the realization she also heard them. Noticing my look, she giggled and pointed at her ears. Artoria, right? Of course you heard them. Don't worry. I will. I am also angered that they are interrupting my time with you. Tierwin, beaming a large smile at me, she nods and turns her attention back to the line of people in front of her. Meanwhile, I turn my attention to the soon-to-be-very-dead idiots who are ruining the night with their presence. I guess this also answers what world we ended up in. Not that it matters, as I got near the idiots. Devils I assumed, it was clear they had very weak souls. As they had no reaction to my presence as I got close. Shaking my head at the weak fools, I grab both of them by the neck harshly and lift them off the ground. Artoria, I know you shit stains can't hear me, but I am so very cross with you. I look at the garbage struggling in my left hand and glare at him. Artoria, I know just the thing for you. I let go of his neck, and clamp down my hand on his jaw, crushing it. As he began to release painful, muffled screams I gave a nod while I started to apply more pressure on the idiot's neck in my right hand. Artoria, can't have your screams ruining more of the night after all. Now then, blood boil, perception of infinity. His muffled screams increased a thousandfold as his blood started to literally boil him alive. He desperately started to claw at my armored hand around his face before everything about him but his skeleton started to melt away. For us, his torment was over in a matter of seconds as I let his skeletal remains collapse into the goop that used to be attached to him. But for him, it was millions and millions of years when I forcibly applied perception of infinity to him. This spell functions much like the skill, thought acceleration. If it was dialed up to a million with the amount of mana I poured into it. You normally don't want to give an enemy time to think like that, but for this instance? It was the perfect spell. The garbage in my right hand started to wildly claw and thrash at their, to him, invisible hand on his throat. This was the one who started this whole thing. So I had a little something special for him. First, I crushed his throat so he couldn't scream. Artoria. And now for you. Blood boil. Sigil of soul flame. Perception of infinity. Much the same thing happened for this insect, but with one key difference, Sigil of Soul Flame. This was a massively forbidden spell that burns a literal Sigil of Flame into the victim's soul. Strong souls can fend off such spells, but this shit stain? No chance. Now, his soul will forever feel like it is burning in the pits of hell until I, or someone else as powerful or more so than me, removes the Sigil. Letting go of the second skeleton, I turn around and make my way back to Tierwin. Just in time to it seems, as she just left the door. I give her a smile and a wave, as she beams a smile and excitedly waves back at me. She trots over to me, and opens her treat bag to show me her gain so far. Tierwin, look, Artoria. That mortal gave me a full-sized chocolate bar because she loved my costume. Unconsciously patting her on the head I smile and say, that's awesome. Of course she loved your costume. You are in it. Releasing a giggle. She then looks towards the area between the houses the two idiots were hiding at. Tearwin. I liked what you did with the interruption. 
I also applied my own soul curse to both of them as their souls left. As we turned to walk down the sidewalk to the next house, I tilted my head and asked her what curse she applied to them. Tear win, they will be reborn as nothing but weak and powerless monsters for the next million years or so. I also asked Big Sister Lilith to make the sigil you applied to one of them permanent. She said she would love to. Big Sister Lilith is so dependable. Nodding my head I say, yes, Lady Lilith can be very dependable. Not everyone receives the same treatment, naturally. But I am sure Tierwin gets that. Walking up to the next house, Tierwin knocked on the door and said the classic line. Tierwin, trick or treat. A rather large man, who was basically made of nothing but muscle, opened the door and looked down on little Tierwin. I took notice that there was no candy bowl, or anything of the sorts. I guess this will be our first dry house. Question mark colon trick. What happened next? Almost had me in tears with laughter. Without missing a beat, Tierwin nodded her head to the man. Tierwin, finally. Trick it is. With a snap of her fingers, the man erupted into pink smoke. When it cleared, the muscle-bound man was gone. In his place was a much smaller, adorable, and stunned-looking wolf girl. Tierwin, there, you have been tricked. Enjoy. Tierwin then started to giggle a lot as she turned around and left. I also couldn't hold it in anymore when the new wolf girl fainted on the spot and fell backwards. While laughing, I nudged the wolf girl lightly with my magic further into her house, and closed the door as we left. Artoria. Wonderful trick, Tierwin. Tierwin, thank you. I've been wanting to play a few tricks all night, but it's been only treats so far. Oh well. Onwards, Artoria. The night is still young. Artoria. Indeed it is, Tierwin. Let's enjoy it some more, shall we? She let out a cute little woo. Cheer as we continued our trick or treating. 224. Chapter 23. There is always darkness to light, but rarely are they ever even. As I stood there floating in stop time at the tail end of my swing, I was patiently waiting for her. Time stop, spelt to end. Well, not like I can do anything else though. Still, Color me impressed a tad that she managed to dodge and use a counter spell. Good to know time magic can affect me like this. I need to ask Tierwin if she knows how I can train against time magic when I get back. Oh, she's finally making a move. Lily, delay maximize penetration triplet holy chains. Going all out trying to hold me down for as long as possible. What are you up to little pigeon? Then she started a ritual chant a chant that I was intimately familiar with actually, and my mind blanked a little at the realization of what she was doing. There is no way, right? Is she that much of a failure to think this will help her in any way? Lily's time stop came to an end when she also finished the entire chant. Since she was behind me, I couldn't see exactly what was going on as her holy chains spell took hold, but I had a feeling and when I heard a new voice speak out, a voice I knew, I was dead on with my guess. Question mark colon I ask you, are you my master? Lily, yes. But we have no time, Saba, turn around and prepare to fight. I heard some rustling of armor, and then a small gasp. I must look very interesting to an inferior version of myself, all bound like this by glowing holy chains. Saba, that, with a small bit of struggle, I caused the chains to explode outward as I broke them. I then turned around and before me was exactly what I expected. The little pigeon actually had the gall to summon a version of me. Saba, what? But, that's clearly, Lily, you? Yes, but she has been corrupted by something truly vile, and enhanced by an equally vile dark god. It will take everything we have, Saba, to fight her. My brows twitched a little as she called dear Win vile. Yet, she said God and not Goddess. Did her masters not tell her exactly who she was trying to kill? Saba, right. I don't really follow what is going on, but I will help. The darkness that I feel from her, and from Excalibur. They sadden me, but I will take responsibility and stop this version of myself from causing any more harm. Getting annoyed at the self-righteousness spewing out of a face that looks so much like mine, I charged forth. 
causing a loud crack as I broke the sound barrier. I appeared in front of Saba instantly with a swing aimed at her neck. Saba's eyes widened as she brought up her own sword to defend from my attack, which caused her to fly backwards a bit. Saba, fast. You were not joking about her being enhanced, ignoring the pigeon. I couldn't help but zero in on Saba. Something about her was making me angry. I couldn't place my finger on it. But just seeing her was causing a lot of rage to bubble to the surface. Artoria, you speak of responsibility to stop me? Then I also have a responsibility. A responsibility to remove such disgusting weakness and light that is stolen my shape. Saba, it is you who is the thief. You and Excalibur have become twisted into something I can scarcely recognize. I bring up my beloved sword, and hold it in two hands in front of me. Artoria, good. The less we resemble the weakness you represent, the better. I debated if I wanted to use Mana Burst or not, but I ultimately decided not to. Something inside me was screaming to overpower her without it. So instead of just pure overwhelming power, I'll overwhelm her with technique and a bit of magic. With that mindset, I charged at her once again. This time she used Mana Burst to withstand the strike I sent her way, and then we got into a sword dance with each other. Slash after slash, we exchanged attacks. However, after a few seconds of this, it was clear I was the superior one in terms of base stats and skill as I was steadily starting to overwhelm her. However, she had access to the mana pool of a level 100 plus player and was making use of it. Using mana burst whenever I would land a devastating blow to accelerate herself to defend, yet even then, I left no room for her to counter. She was fully on the back step, and unable to retaliate in any way. The world seemed to fade away as Saba and I continued our dance of steel. We had both entered a battle trance of sorts as even our swords reacted to each other. In my initial clash, she had already dispelled her invisible air spell on her sword, since it didn't matter if it was hidden or not. So both of our swords were glowing in their own elements as they fiercely clashed with each other, mine with a purple aura, surrounded by black-red flames, and hers with a brilliant golden light. Neither sword was willing to let its owner down, as they clashed over and over again. I managed to land a solid attack that once again sent Saba flying. However, she took this opportunity to release her noble phantasm's true name, Saba. All right, let's finish this. Sheathed in the breath of the planet, a torrent of shining life. Feel its wrath. Excalibur taking the cue to do the same. I followed suit. Artoria, cry. It's time you come crashing down. Vortigern, hammer of the vile king, reverse the rising sun. Swallow the light, Excalibur Morgan. Strangely though, as our two attacks met I felt that something was wrong with what I had just said. Yes, my sword responded to my call and the name I stated but, it felt, wrong. I have to think about this later. It feels a little like with, not Havalon. My sword accepts that name but denies the chant. I can feel the sword released, but it was not a full release at all. Far from it, bringing back my attention to our colliding attacks. I was not surprised in the least to see mine overtaking hers quite readily. Sadly for me, as my attack was about to vaporize my doppelganger, the pigeon I forgot that was still around got her out of the way. As my attack continued past her though, it completely obliterated the mountain that was in its way. Amazing. I really should start releasing my sword more often. That attack had as much power as my first burst air with mana burst going. I honestly think I might be able to crack a planet maybe if I fully released my sword and was using mana burst. Saba. I thank you, master. I was not expecting such an extreme difference in our power output. Lily, it's fine, Saba. But don't worry because of you taking up all her attention. I managed to get reinforcements. As I heard her say that, my instincts went off causing me to lean my head to the right to avoid a sneak attack. Question mark colon tch. That would have been a great opener. Turning my back to the bear. I looked at who attacked me. My eyebrows raised slightly as I took in what was before me now. Nine more angels with twelve wings. Her floor guardians I assumed but behind them there were thousands and thousands of other angels. Reinforcements indeed. Artoria, impressive numbers. 
but ultimately, it is meaningless. I didn't even bother to take in the features of the new angels as I attacked. With a loud crack as I broke the sound barrier again, I blew past the male angel who had tried to sneak attack me. Lily, no. Michael, as red lines started to appear all over his body, I made my next move by rushing the next angel. I reached out and grabbed her by the face, and started to crush her head. As she started to scream and claw at my hand Lily shouted at them, snap out of it everyone. Save Gabriel, attack Sabah Alter, that did the trick, as everyone snapped out of their trance and started to make their own moves. Sadly for the little bird in my grip, it was too late. As Michael finally started to bleed everywhere and slide apart from all the cuts, I uttered my spell on Gabriel. Artoria, blood boil. Her screaming intensified as the spell took hold, while I then threw her at an incoming angel. He gasped in shock as he caught her and went over to their master. Question mark colon Lily Sama. I don't know what to do. Lily, remove Kerr. How unfortunate for them that she was too slow, and the little bird had already started to rapidly melt away in the angel's arms. While all that was going on, the little army and myself were not idle. By the time my spell had killed its target, I had already cut down three more of the twelve-winged angels, and countless of the lesser ones. I flared my mana to push everyone around me away, whipping my sword to the right to get the blood off it. I scoffed at all the angels. Artoria, as I said, meaningless. From behind me, I heard Saba yell as she closed in on me. Saba, such a barbaric use of magic. How low have I fallen? Not even facing her. I use my sword to lazily block the cumbersome attack she did. Artoria, I believe you misspoke. You should have asked, how far have I risen? Feeling her mana flare as she used mana burst, I quickly spun around to properly block the attack that had a lot more force than the haphazard one before it. Saba, no. I spoke true the first time, the evil that stains you and Excalibur disgusts me. To think I would be capable of such heinous magic, I will free myself of this darkness. Even if that means killing you and shattering Excalibur. Scoffing again as I use reinforcement on myself, I punch Saba in the chest with my free hand. She failed to see the attack coming, and was sent flying. Her armor now had a very noticeable indent shaped like a fist. I clearly did some internal damage, as she did the classic spit out blood while flying away. I still find it interesting that they can bleed actual blood. Well, what looks like blood anyway? Blocking a sword from some random low level angel with my hand. I swiftly cut it in half. Tossing aside the bit I was holding up I quickly brought up my sword to block another attack by Saba. Artoria, has anyone ever told you the definition of insanity? She ignored me, as she resumed our dance once again. While I was playing with Saba some more, I took note of where Lily was. She, and what was left of her floor guardians were up to something. Looks like they are trying to cast a spell of sorts. Interesting. Returning my attention back to Saba, I used reinforcement and struck at her again the same way. And expectedly she saw the attack coming this time, and used Excalibur to block my fist. A loud ring was released from her sword as she was pushed back once again. Lily, now, hope of the light. Suddenly getting a warning from my instincts, I looked up. I saw a twinkle of some kind before an absurdly bright and massive beam of light came crashing down towards me. This won't kill me, but I think it might actually hurt quite a bit. While being impressed she could summon such an attack, I decided it was time to stop playing around as well. For dramatic effect, I lowered my sword to the side and turned to Lily as the attack was closing in at an impressive speed. Just as it was about to collide with me, I gave her a cruel smile. When the light was centimeters away from hitting me, I finally used mana burst while letting all of my power run freely. As the light washed over me, I grimaced a bit from the pain. I was right. This would have hurt a lot more if I was still fucking around. Still, the fact that it still hurts even with my power fully released, as much as the seals allow anyway, is impressive. And the first time I have felt damaged in a real way. I totally understand why Leowin is worried about growth type systems. While the attack was still covering me, everyone around me was not in a great spot. 
if the shouts I could hear over the roar of the magic was anything to go by. Question mark colon Lily Sama. This aura is very painful to endure. I can't move properly at all. Saba, is this her true power released? Master, you are in danger. This is so much worse than anything I could have expected. Like your servant said, even I find it very difficult to move. You need to flee. Lily, agreed. This is just unreal. To think she was holding back so much. Everyone, quick, through there. Gate, there. Dimensional lock, is gone. Oh? Did my aura kill Demiurge? While his soul was new, it was still on the strong side. Speaking of the lock spell. How in the fuck did she even get reinforcements if it was still up? Actually, knowing Yggdrasil, it was a cash shop item. When the attack had finally finished, I released a sigh. While it was not super painful, it still hurt and I am not a masochist. A battle junkie, yes, but not a masochist. Shaking my head lightly to clear my eyes from the light spots from the bright attack, I took a look around. There was no one around but Lily. Saba and a floor guardian or two standing near a gate. Lily, do not worry, Saba Alter. I will kill that stupid and hateful dark god one day, and free you of this corruption. As they all entered the gate, and it closed, what Lily said had finally registered with me. An unprecedented amount of killing intent started to flood from me. Like an unstoppable river of death and despair, my killing intent started to warp the very reality around me. The air in an extreme radius around me became a deep blood red haze, and space itself seemed to groan and whine from the pressure. Black water started to bubble off me and drip from my sword, falling down to the ground below me. My mana burst horror flared even more, and tripled in size around me. My voice, laced with extreme amounts of hate, echoed out Artoria. She does. I turned in the direction of her base, where I could sense Saba. Summoning Saba will be her undoing. I raised up my beloved sword above my head in a two-handed grip, and I spoke a release that instinctively came to me at the moment. At my desire, might need to absolutely erase my enemy. Artoria, peel back the veil of reality. Close the curtain on existence and sink everything into null. Let creation weep as it unravels before us. Excalibur Morgan. As I brought my sword down I felt it fully release, unlike last time. This was my true chant for my sword. And unlike my first release, there was no sound or giant energy beam of explosive fury with this attack. All there was, was a very thin black line of nothingness in the space where the tip of my sword cut. And then suddenly, the line expanded outwards drastically and covered my vision before snapping back to a small thin line again and disappearing. I was in awe of what I saw. Everywhere that black nothingness had touched was now simply, gone. There was a long and several kilometers wide smooth trench before me, extending well beyond into the horizon. It looked like something took an eraser to the very world and cleanly removed everything. As I was wondering just how much damage I did and if I actually managed to get that damn reincarnator, I heard a wonderful voice in my head. Tearwin, woo oo oo Artoria. That was so cool. A smile graced my lips as I thought, well, that answers that then. 253, Chapter 24, Aftermath, and is that? A side quest? Announcement. Poll at the end, open for 24 hours after posting of Chapter Tilda. Tilda moments before Artoria's attack Tilda, POV Lily Lytel, as we stepped out of the gate to my guild's base above the ocean. My mind was going a million kilometers a minute. Rose, that was well beyond us. If you had to guess, what would her level be in our system of power? I needed to level. Having a heroic spirit like that under the sway of such evil just couldn't stand. If I could overpower her, and free her of this darkness, the light would get a very powerful ally. Honestly, well beyond level 1000. It'll be some time before we astro. Suddenly my skill, danger sense, was going off like crazy. I didn't even need the skill though. I could feel the danger, the killing intent like a blanket over my skin. Everyone turned towards the feeling, and the entire horizon was blood red. Saba, such killing intent. Just how much has she raged to be able to produce so much of it that it affects the very world itself like this? But then everyone stilled, 
It was a safe bet we all felt the exact same thing, danger that was beyond such a simple word. Out of pure terror, I once again instinctively used time stop and cranked up my thought acceleration to its highest value. As the world drained of color, to my absolute horror I was able to see a black thin line every so slowly making its way towards us. Rose? What is going on? That attack is ignoring time itself, so it would seem. Lily, I don't know what that is, but it scares me. Lily, a lot. I am right there with you, Rose. But the fact that we can still see it slowly moving when thought acceleration is going so fast, and it's ignoring time stop, Rose. We can't do anything, can we? I, I am sorry, Lily. We cannot. That crazy amount of bloodlust she is pushing out is keeping us in combat. Even at this distance, we can't even take everyone into the ID create to escape. I can't even say goodbye to everyone around me, my new friends, my children. Even Sabo will die because of me. As soon as we stop using thought acceleration, we die. Right? We do. Lily. We do. That attack is traveling faster than light it would seem. Hey. Even faster than time itself. That dark god sure picked his champion well, eh? He did. I also want to weep for Sava Alta, Rose. She is innocent in all of this. Warped and twisted into that thing we had to fight. I hope the gods of light choose a better champion than me next time, and are able to free her. You're a wonderful champion of light, Lily. It's just the damn dark god. He cheated somehow, as expected of the darkness. But don't you think for even a nanosecond that you are a bad champion of the light, Lily? I internally smiled at that. Thank you, Rose. Hey, we're about to die and yet I am having weird thoughts. Sorry. PFFT, you've always been weird, Lily. But that's what is so great about you. You embrace it. I loved my time with you. Thanks, Rose. I loved every second with you as well. You are the sister I so desperately wanted in my first life, and no one can say otherwise. I love you, Rose. Thank you for being with me every step of the way on this, sadly, short adventure. I love you too as well, Lily. Sisters forever. Sisters forever. I am going to drop, thought acceleration, now. Rose, I will trust the gods of light to get my soul back from the dark god one day. And then we can meet again. Count on it, Lily. POV switch system, Rose. As Lily was about to drop the skill, I just didn't have the heart to tell her. To tell her there will be no more reincarnation for either of us. I know what makes up the attack that is heading towards us. After all, it's null. Every system of the light, and the gods themselves, know of it. Nothing survives Null. And nothing will be left after Null. I am sorry, Lily, but it's kinda to let you think there will be a sunrise after this setting sun. At least it won't hurt. We'll simply stop being. And as the skill dropped, I was proven correct. As soon as the black nothingness touched us, we were gone without a trace. Tilda moments after the attack Tilda. POV switch ain't so ill gown. I could feel my undead passive wash over me once more to calm me down. What the actual fuck was that? Using the remote viewing mirror, I panned the image out to try and get a feel for just how far that last attack of Artoria's went. Shit here. Oh my. I can now clearly see why Ains Sama does not want us to antagonize her. That last attack was, well, Mayor, scary, Albedo. Fearsome, indeed. As my guardians were talking about that crazy attack, I managed to pull the view back till it was basically in orbit. That attack covered over half the damn planet. What the hell? I knew she was up, but that's just cheating up. Shaking my head as my passive once again calmed me down. I spoke up. Ains, as you can clearly see, my warning about her was quite valid. Shit here. I never doubted you Ains Sama. It was just hard to comprehend something only you seem to understand without this. Visual aid. Ains. Well, now you know. So, guardians, make sure to follow that order. That attack didn't destroy anything it touched. It erased it. Nazarek has nothing to defend against such an assault. Understood? Guardians. Yes. Ains. Sama. Good. Well, she seems reasonable. Normally. 
I was a bit upset she let Demi Urge get killed while she was fighting herself, but I am not bringing that up now, I like my life, thank you very much, at least we got his body, so we should be able to easily resurrect him, if the situation with Shaltir was anything to go by, while I was lost in my thoughts, and the guardians were all talking about the attack, a knock was heard on the door to my workroom, Yuri, Ains Sama, Lady Arturia has returned, and would like to speak with you, Ains, ah, tell her we'll meet her in the throne room in ten minutes, Yuri, at once, Ains Sama, I swear I can feel her bow through the door, shaking my head a little, I stood up causing all of my guardians to also stand, Ains, come, to the throne room, it is likely Arturia Dona will be leaving us right after, Albedo, with respect to her, I am glad, as I walked past them to the door I said, I am sure you are not the only one, POV switch Artoria. As Yuri was leading me up to the throne room, I was kind of giddy to leave. I wanted to hang out with Tierwin a bit already, need to refill up on Tierwinium. Being brought back to reality with Yuri announcing me, I brought my attention to the room as a whole. Huh, no demi urge, did he actually get killed by my aura? Ains must have noticed me looking around a bit and spoke up, Ains, if you are looking for Demi Urge, he is currently dead, when you were fighting your doppelganger, Lily was able to easily, much to my dismay, kill him, Artoria, ah, if you want, I could most likely cover the cost of resurrecting him for you, Ains's A's flashed a little as he leaned forward a tiny bit, Ains, truly, giving a nod I say, yeah, if you can give me five of the coins from Yggdrasil, I might be able to do something crazy for you, nodding his head, Yuri came up to me and handed me five gold Yggdrasil coins, one by one I used the structural analysis spell on them, well, that is interesting, and technically impossible, but all the better for me, shrugging my shoulders, I looked up at Ains, Artoria, so, it would seem every coin, judging from these, are exactly the same, and I mean, Exactly, down to even where every atom is placed, which should be impossible, but hey, Yggdrasil, am I right? Nodding his head Ains said, indeed, but for what reason did you want to confirm their make? Smirking at him I say, this reason, I turned round and waved my hand and uttered, projection, little surprise I know this spell, may not be the famous trace on version, but should be more than enough for what I want to do with the gold, within seconds. The entire back half of the throne room was covered in millions of gold pieces. Ains, that is such a cheat. Hey, broke him so much, he broke character for a second there. Turning back to Ains I give a cheeky smile and say, There you go. Since this world has no Gaia, or counter force, those should last indefinitely, but no way to tell, so use them within a few hours to be safe. Nodding absent-mindedly Ains said, Right. Suddenly. A very familiar looking portal appeared to my right, smiling to myself, I nod towards Zaints, Artoria, looks like my ride's here, I wish you luck in forging your fate, Ains, Ains, ah, right, thank you, Artoria Dono, safe travels, and good luck in your future affairs, giving a lazy wave to everyone, I stepped through the portal, few seconds of darkness later, I stepped out into the forest that has quickly become my favorite place in existence, Tierwin Sigura Forest, Tierwin, Artoria, and there she is, I turned round while dismissing my armor, just in time to catch the little ball of fluff and tails in my arms, Arto era, ahaha, hello Tierwin, I missed you too, I couldn't help myself as I rubbed our cheeks together, causing Tierwin to giggle, Tierwin, yes, I missed you, Welcome back. Hugging Tierwin a bit longer, I walked over to a nearby tree and sat down. Tierwin adjusted herself to the sides so her tails were to the left. She then used several to wrap around us, and the trees nearby. Her tails really are very long and fluffy. Always slips my mind just how long, fluffy, and numerous they are though. Tierwin then summoned a stick of cotton candy and started to nibble on it. I just patiently waited for her to speak up while I indulged in the fluff of her hair and ears as I gave her head pats. Several minutes later, she spoke up as she dismissed her candy while looking up at me. Tierwin, I have got good news, 
and annoying news. Which one do you want to hear first? Arturia humming in thought for a second. I just shrugged and asked for the annoying news as I continued to pat her fluffy head. Ah, this heals my soul, which is also my body. Tear win. I found the last growth type system user, but he or she is in a world that can keep up, or even exceed you. Tilting my head I say, oh, tear win, yes, it's a world filled with stupid little deities that fancy themselves gods, dragons, devils, and yukai, and humans, naturally. A world like that, while dangerous to a reincarnator can also provide explosive growth to a system user. From the entities I knew about before the system of the light cut off my vision of that world, only two could just outright kill you. Well, there was a third but he is currently in a deep sleep and won't be awake for several trillion years. Oh, a fourth, as well I guess, but it's currently sealed, and I don't think the two of you would come to blows anyway. I think I know what world she is talking about, with an annoyed sigh I ask. Are humans able to use something called sacred gears? Nodding her head, Tierwin showed me an understanding smile. Tierwin, yes, it's the world you are thinking of it seems. Giving another sigh and a nod of my head I say, annoying news indeed. Well, I look forward to the fights I can get into, but damn, there are a lot of annoying entities in that universe. Tierwin, I agree. Honestly, breast dragon emperor or whatever. Honestly. How disgusting. When you go there, feel free to get rid of him. How could the will of a world choose such a disgusting mortal as its champion? Patting her head to calm her down. I nod. Artoria, the universe truly is vast and infinite if such a failure like that attains power to save the world. Via the power of breasts. Ark crossing her arms, she lets out an annoyed huff. Shaking her head, she looks back up at me with renewed vigor and a sparkle in her eyes. Have to admire how she can shift gears so fast, ha ha, tear win. Now, for the good news, it seems that another dark god is making a move on a light god's world, and the reincarnator the dark god sent has a summoner system, very different from the growth system that the light reincarnators you've been taking care of have. This is a great opportunity to get back at the light gods and the dark gods that abandoned me. I can, with the help of big sister Lily, hijack one of their summoning attempts and send you while you're there. You can wreak as much havoc as you like. And when you're done, heal the Dark God's reincarnator. The perfect plan, right? Artoria, that is a good plan, yes. Do you know which world I'll be going to? Shaking her head, her ears and tails drooped. Tear win. No, I am sorry. I am not strong enough to look into a world of the light gods. Honestly, I only know about this because big sister Lilith said it'd be a good chance to spread my influence out, instead of just defending. Ruffling up her hair a bit I give her a warm smile. Artoria, hey, hey, it's fine, Tierwin. You're young, don't feel bad you can't do everything that everyone else can yet. You have me to help you. And Lady Lily, her ears stood back and she beamed a very deadly and bright smile at me. Tear win, thank you, Artoria. She then hugged me as hard as she could with her tiny little arms. By Lady Lily, she is so adorable. While I was returning the hug, she spoke up again. Tear win, that's not all. Big Sister Lilith said I can make this a divine quest for you. Have you take over that world, and present it to me, and in return, I can unlock one of your seals. I want to unlock as many as I can, honestly, but big sister Lilith said it'd do more harm than good for you. Artoria, it's fine, Tierwin, it's the thought that counts. Lady Lilith knows best after all, more like she just wants to enjoy my climb to power for longer. But, Lady Lilith can do whatever she wants honestly. Besides, I get to spend time with Tierwin, so it's a win in my book. Really, ignoring the fact that we were still hugging, and enjoying it I posed a question to Tierwin. Artoria, so, when do I leave to give you a new world? Tierwin, he ha he. Well, in a few days, until then, do you think we could just hang out together? Hugging her a little tighter I smile widely. Artoria, that would be awesome. Tierwin, very awesome. Should this be a long side quest, or a quick side quest? Long, several chapters, treat it like one of her hunts, votes, 84 38.7%, medium length, 
two or three chapters max. Votes, 125.3%, short, one or two chapters. Votes, 136.0%. Total voters, 217 middle. This poll was closed on November 4, 2022, 4.55 p.m. 222. Chapter 25, The Start of a New, Side Adventure. These past few days I've spent with Darwin were awesome, to say the least. We didn't just sit around idle though, no. Tierwin helped me with the ability she blessed me with before, and it was very fruitful. A new dark goddess she may be, but she isn't stupid, she just lacks practical experience. However, her understanding of the ability she blessed me with was quite solid and she was able to help me immensely. I was now able to use mana burst and not obliterate every soul around me, if I paid attention. That seemed to be the key detail for the ability usage. If my attention slipped or I got lost in the battle, my control would go out the window again, but I was happy with it. If I was being honest, Tierwin was right. I feel uncomfortable trying to control my power when I release everything. She also said my natural resistance to magic would continue to rise, along with everything else naturally, with each seal broken. So while I didn't need to worry about time magic or magic in general in the end, Tierwin did however give me a cute 15-tailed fox pendant to wear to protect against time magic. The fox was in her colors, and was in a sleeping position, with the chain connecting to its back. Today was the expected day I would get summoned, and I was a little down. I really enjoyed my time with Tierwin. Currently, we were resting on her forest floor, all snuggled in her tails watching one of her worlds through a floating portal of sorts. If I remember correctly, the story attached to this one was done Mickey. It was honestly kind of like watching anime. Just a live adaption with actors that are a one-to-one -one look with the anime counterparts. Tierwin, who was in her normal place on my lap, spoke up. Tierwin, I will be sending you to that world after you kill the last growth type system user, Artoria. Artoria, oh, Tierwin, yes, while the deities are really, really weak. They can be useful, and it would be fairly easy to solidify this world's future to the dark if you went. Artoria, do you mean that this world has a bit of an infestation? Tierwin, yes, it is one of the light scouts. Their systems cannot hide the planet from me like growth systems, just its host. I am not quite sure exactly what the system does, exactly, but it will enhance them in some way but the system will generally be kept within the limits of the world itself. Another thing to note is that their systems won't be sentient, limited VI control at best, but normally just an interactive menu. Artoria, I see. So, how are they exactly scouts? Tierwin waved her hand, and changed our perspective to inside the dungeon, where we could see the world's chosen hero, Bell. He was fighting some random monsters on floor 3 or something. But what was odd is that he clearly had help from an invisible person. Tierwin pointed at a kobold that seemed to just magically get a rather large cut across its chest. Tierwin, the system prevents me from seeing the host, as I said, but not their actions. And their rise to power through these systems will be one of two things. Extremely slow, or fast. It's never a moderately paced power-up. The speed depends on what the god wants from the reincarnator's presence. This one here has been in this world for a few years, but they are still only on floor 3, and the changes to the world have been mild. At best, they are this way to keep under the radar, so to speak. You can classify them as scouts because they are a slow grind, meant to give the god who sent them a small presence in the world. This will let said god see into this world and any nearby universes that are close. Very low cost reincarnation, and if nothing comes from them being sent to a world, no real loss. Giving a hum in acknowledgement and starting to give her head pats, she continued. Tierwin's serious face is also adorable. Tierwin, the scouting part comes from how fast they are detected. The longer they go without being detected, the newer, or weaker, the god or goddess is. It took me a long time to notice the scouts, so that emboldened the light faction to send the growth type users to universes that were around the general area of the three the scouts were in. Well, it's a bit more complicated than that. 
but that is a general way of how it goes. Artoria, I see. Thank you for enlightening me, Tierwin. So, when I get summoned, I'll be able to act as a connection for you to see into the world. Tierwin, yup. I am not strong enough to converse with you while you're in a hostile world sadly, but I can watch. Artoria, hee hee. I'll make sure to try and keep you entertained then. Tierwin. No, it's fine. Just be you, Artoria. Don't change how you'd go about a situation because you want to keep me entertained. Just do everything like you've been doing so far. Artoria being Artoria is the best Artoria. I gave a light chuckle at that, and snuggled her head a bit. Artoria, sure thing. Tia Wintilda. She started to giggle and snuggle back when all of a sudden I started to lightly glow. Tierwin. Ah, that's the sign Big Sister Lilith said to watch out for. She quickly got off my lap and stood up to the side of me while dismissing the viewing mirror thing, taking a cue from here. I also stood up and summoned my armor. Three days of total epicness. I have totally become a siscon, haven't I? Returning my attention to Tierwin as she held out both her hands towards me, she closed her eyes and started to focus really hard. Soon, her hands started to glow pink and when she opened her eyes they shared the same glow. When Tierwin spoke, her voice had a bit of an echo to it which surprised me a bit. Tierwin. Alright, Artoria. I got a hold of his summoning ritual, as she said that. A soft purple glow joined the pink on her hands and eyes. Tierwin. It was fun, Artoria. We need to spend time like this more often. Enjoy your time in the world, and get back at those damn gods who look down on me. Giving her a smile I say, we should. I loved spending all that time with you Tierwin. I then gave her a cruel smile and continued, and I will teach both the light and the dark that the dark goddess Tierwin is to be both respected and feared. Look forward to it. She flashed an award-winning smile my way as I vanished from my spot. As I was being pulled through a kaleidoscope of colors, I was thankful I could no longer puke. Yup, fuck being summoned like this. Tierwin's portals are so much smoother. Ugh. Thankfully for my eyes, the wild ride around me shattered into billions of pieces, leaving only a calming darkness. I then felt myself standing on something and the wonderful darkness that was around me started to rapidly recede, giving way to what looked like a small room. Taking a few seconds, I look around the room I found myself in. It was clearly a rather large storage room for what appeared to be. Firewood? Question mark colon holy shit. The sudden yell caught my attention, reminding me I was actually summoned. Looking forward, and down, I took in my summoner. It was some punk kid. Couldn't be older than 15 or 16 years. He was average height for his age, with short cut blonde hair and green eyes. He had casual looking cloth on consisting of a black shirt and blue jeans. Black sneakers were on his feet to wrap up his look. Honestly, he looked as average as an average person could get. Artoria, I ask thee, are you the worm who desires my strength? Question mark colon yes. Yes. Haha. <laughs> Holy shit. Legendary summon indeed. Just look at those stats. I might as well be a god now with a servant like you. Ha 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 ha. It honestly took everything I had to not just murder the little shit right then and there. But I wanted to see where this would go, and more importantly, I wanted to know what world I was summoned to. Going by his little outburst, though, I will be able to crush it. Question mark colon take that. You shitty god giving me nothing but a gacka. Summon system. Ha. Huh. All my luck was for this pull it would seem. Damn. To get Saba alter, but with those kinds of stats? Hell yes. I tilted my head at him, in a bit of confusion. He can see my stats? I have stats? Well, I know there were abilities with ranks for servants in the fate universe, so maybe that's what he is talking about? As I was musing over just what my stats would look like, the plankton pulled himself together finally and addressed me properly. Question mark colon right. Sorry. My name is Jake. And I am sure you are confused. I honestly don't want to explain too much, so just know that I am your master for now. There is no grail war. Deciding to mess with him a bit, I summoned my sword when he said there was no grail war. Jake, whoa whoa, calm down Salter. There is no war, but I can still help you with your wish. 
You, what is your wish? I simply stare at him for several seconds to let him sweat a bit before I answer. Artoria, to bring the world, and not just my country, to heal and lead it into a golden age. Kicking and screaming over the corpses of everyone that resists if needs be, Jake seemed to be taken aback a bit before he blinked several times and nodded. Jake, right, you're King Arthur. Corrupted, but still the once and future king, right. I can work with that. World domination with you under my command shouldn't be too hard. He then crossed his arms and mulled everything over for a few minutes, before nodding and looking back up at me. Jake. Okay, sure. I promise to give you this world. I give you this world. You give me a comfy life with all my needs met. I simply gave him a nod, and then his right hand started to glow, and a command seal actually appeared on it. Jake, nice cool looking seal too. No idea why there is a fox. But whatever, the design of the seal looked like a cute little three-tailed fox holding a, my, sword in its mouth. I could feel the connection to the seal, and its power over me. However, I could also tell I can ignore the commands if I deem them issued out of weakness or waste. I am willing to bet the fact he even has this command seal is because Lady Lilith wants a bit of fun. Well, no matter, I can ignore the orders I would want to, so it has little meaning to me in the end. Jake, well, anyway. Come Salter. Actually, I am just going to call you Saba. Salter just doesn't roll off the tongue. Eh, as I was saying, let's go Saba. We have a train to catch, and you have a test to help me with. Giving him a nod, I dismissed my sword, and followed my new master out of the wood storage and into his, I assumed, house. Jake, everyone already left for the evening. But, we're leaving anyway. I don't want to go back to school anymore. So we are going to tag along with Ruby and also get a free ticket into Beacon. Stupid god that sent me here gave me a lame gurkha summoning system that can only draw once every year. I was lucky to get an aura and unlocking pill from the random Gaka. You have no idea what I'm talking about, never mind. Ruby, and Beacon Ha. Huh? Seems I am in the RWBY world, I can work with this. Salem is kind of in a situation similar to me, but wasn't strong enough to deal with it. I could kill her, and take over the Grim. I'll think about it. I want to give Dio in this world, and not a pile of rubble. As I was following the little human, another thought struck me. Speaking of, how will the Grim react to me and my black water? I have gotten a hold of my anger quite well, more so since I've met Tierwin. But it's always just under the surface ready to erupt. Will I be like an all-you-can-eat buffet to them, or, would they only sense the emotions, but not me since they have no souls? Thus it would just attract them, but leave them confused. A, eh? We'll see. Jake, the only good thing that shitty god did, was make sure I was born in Vale. So, at least it's only a short walk to the store Ruby will be at. My timing should be fine, added the summoning early enough. I hope. Following in silence, I took a look around at the city. It was relatively clean, and bright, for the time of evening that is. It was also interesting to see the Faunus race mingling around. Oh, a bunny girl. Cute. I don't get how there can be any hate for the Faunus. Their animal traits are so subtle to begin with. I could also smell the extra salt in the air. From this being a port city. I hoped that the human didn't want to go down to the docks. I really didn't want to get a face full of fish smell. As I was lamenting the fact that I may have to go down into that god-awful smell. I was broken out of my thoughts by Jake speaking up. Jake, all right, we're here, now, to wait till Ruby shows up I guess, and wouldn't you know it, as soon as he said that, a dude dressed in a fancy black suit came flying out of the store's window with a girl dressed in red riding him like a surfboard. Jake, well, that works. Go me? A few moments later, Several more thugs came rushing out of the store after Ruby. From https colon slash slash www.wallpaperflare.com slash anime anime girls v Ruby Rose character dress weapon wallpaper and sfo. Jake, right. You. Help her. His yells seemed to attract the attention of a few of the men and of Roman Torchic himself. 
Unknown credits. P.S. Those are the exact guards they are fighting. Roman. A. Eh? Without saying a word, I appeared instantly in front of the nearest goon, and punched him in the chest. This caused the poor human to explode as if an artillery shell had hit his chest directly. Should I have held back? Nah, fuck them. Everyone was stunned to silence and completely dumbfounded by the bloody and gruesome spectacle. The silence was broken by Roman's frantic yell. Roman, what the shit was that? That caused everyone to snap out of it, and to the guard's credit, the henchmen started to rush both Ruby and Jake. As the few of the men were rushing Jake, he frantically shouted out at me, Jake, stop them with less blood please. With a sigh, I appeared behind the two goons and grabbed them by the back of their necks. I then crushed, and broke them before dropping their now lifeless bodies to the ground. Jake, fuck, right, I completely forgot who you were for a second there. That was my bad. But damn, he exploded like a train hit him, fuck, I was not ready for that. Uck. I need a minute here. Ignoring the embarrassment of a human who was my master, I turned and found that Ruby had also dealt with her goons easily enough. Roman looked around at all the dead or defeated goons and said, Worth every cent you all were. Right, forget this. It's been fun red, and ghostly black, but it's time I leave. Oh? He can see me sorts? <laughs> He does have an aura. And that is literally the power of the soul. Maybe a lot more people can see me here, even slightly, than I expected. Roman then took something out from his breast pocket, and threw it on the ground. The object, clearly a flashbang of sorts, went off blinding everyone. I was fine however, and was amused seeing Roman haul so much ass to get to the ladder on the side of a building near us. Aura really is impressive. He is moving quite fast for a human. Honestly, Roman had made it up a lot of the ladder before Jack and Ruby were able to see again. Ruby wasted no time in finding him again, and after checking with the store clerk, she rushed after him. Jake, damn, that stung. Right, let's go and help her, but you just protect us. Don't actually stop them from getting away. I don't want to give up my advantage of knowing the future so soon. Turning back to the ladder. I didn't feel like climbing it like a mundane, so I just jumped up to the building. As I was moving up to the roof, I heard Jake complaining that he should have asked me to carry him up to the top as well. I would have made the short journey as painful and uncomfortable as possible. Little Master crashing down on the roof next to Ruby, both her and Roman looked at me. Roman, great, the disgustingly strong one is back too. Suddenly one of their aircraft, a bullard I think they were called, appeared behind Roman. He wasted no time in climbing aboard, before turning around to us and taking another object out of his pants pocket. Roman, end of the line, you too. He then threw a red crystal at us, which I made a point to catch. Roman, big mistake lady. He then pointed his cane at me and shot it. The bullet quickly impacted the crystal in my hand causing it to explode. This caused Roman to laugh like a villain would when they think they have won. His laughter died as soon as the dust cleared, and I was still standing there without a scratch. Roman, what the? And now there are three? A flurry of purple beams of light then passed me from behind, and started to rock the bullhead. This caused Roman to start swearing and go further into the airship. Seconds later, a woman with a wonderful red dress and glowing orange tattoo patterns appeared. She and the woman who was behind me started to exchange several abilities with each other in an almost impressive display. While this was going on, Jack finally made it up to the roof, and joined Ruby and myself. I had switched places with the woman who first attacked the bullhead and was standing next to Ruby, to protect her. As I was ordered, after a few more minutes of a back and forth, the fight concluded with the villains getting away. The woman, who I recognized as Glinda Goodwitch then turned to the three of us. She silently looked over the three of us for a minute, staring at me a lot longer than the rest, before Ruby spoke up. Ruby, you're a huntress, can I have your autograph? Glinda sighed, and then said, Come with me, all of you. We have a lot to talk about. At the police station, guess it's time to see Ozpin. I really wonder how he'll react to me. He should be able to easily tell what I am, and that I have magic as well. Hey, I wonder how my master is going to explain this away. 
231. Chapter 26. The old fox knows more than you know it knows. Tilda sometime later at the Vale Police Department. Tilda, POV, Professor Zoroaster Ospin. As I was being led to one of the interrogation rooms, I was now without a shadow of a doubt, sure I was heading in the direction of the strongest and darkest magic I have ever felt. No, dark was not strong enough of a word. This was even beyond what I feel from Salem. Well beyond. Officer, the others are in the viewing room here. Sir, have a good day. Giving a nod to the officer, I opened the door and entered the viewing room. My eyes immediately snapped to one of the people in the interrogation room. Ospin, oh my. I understand why you were so insistent that I hurry over here. No, Salem can't even compare to the darkness no. The evil, of the magic I feel from that woman. Salem might as well be a saint, doing the light brother's work. As I unconsciously let out a surprised remark, a familiar voice snapped me out of my thoughts. Turning my head. I looked towards the source, glind a good witch, source, https colon slash slash fspathels.fandom.com slash wiki slash glinder underscore good witch, glinder, how bad, ospin, bad, the darkness of her magic is on a whole different level, but I am curious, glinder, you cannot sense magic in the slightest, and sure, while her state of dress is unusual, it doesn't exactly scream magic, Okay, maybe it does, but a semblance could very well be the source. Glinda just looked at me like I was joking with her, and when she realized I wasn't she spoke up. Glinda, Ospin, she's transparent. Normally, I would think of a semblance yes, but none of the tech can pick up Pora from her. Only the other two in the room. So, that left only one thing, magic. I was confused and about to respond when the chief officer spoke up. Chief. Other two? Miss. There are only two people in that room there. What do you mean by other two? Both my and Glinder's eyes widened slightly at that. Turning to him, I asked if he could repeat what he just said. Chief. There are only two people in that room, sir. The girl in red, and the boy in black. Look, even the camera only shows two people. Turning our attention to the screen displaying the camera in the interrogation room. My eyebrows lifted in further surprise. Glinder, what in the world? Ospin, indeed, there surely are only two people on that screen. Turning to look back into the room through the one-way mirror I speak up again. Ospin, and yet I see three. And Glinder, the woman to me, is not transparent in the least. She is quite solid as a matter of fact. Glinder frowned and turned back to looking at the room. Glinder, so... We have a woman that appears differently to three different people, and doesn't show up on camera. Ospin, so it would seem. All three of us were lost in thought at this interesting conundrum. What interesting magic, I had to admit, but also, pointless. Looking down in thought, I tried to disassemble exactly the point of such a spell. It hid her from machines, or technology in general it seems, but it acted differently between the three people in this room. Why? What is different about the three of us? The first thing that comes to mind is Aura. The chief doesn't have it unlocked, or is unable to. Looking back up at the woman I had a thought. It can't be that simple is it? That's the only thing that makes sense though. Magic is out the window because Glinda doesn't have any, and yet can still see her. The only thing we all share is the state of our Aura. Our soul. So only those with strong souls can see her? The stronger the soul the more solid she is. Something in my gut was telling me this was true. If so, it was very odd magic. But if you could avoid people, and if nothing without a soul could see her, well, she would be a very deadly assassin. Ospin, did you speak to them yet? Galinda? She shook her head and said, no, I merely led them here, and have had them waiting in the room for you to arrive. Stroking my chin with my hand, I gave a nod. The magic I felt from that woman was beyond the meager word dark, and to make matters worse it felt like an endless ocean. The only positive I could take away from this, is she didn't seem overly hostile, at least, not yet. Turning my attention to the other two in the room finally, 
I at least didn't feel anything from them that was worrying. I did recognize the girl however. Some Rose's daughter, Ruby. Crow talked quite a lot about her, and the fact that she was able to take down some armed thugs was impressive for her age. I knew nothing about the boy, however. The feeling I got from him was slightly odd to say the least. I could tell he had his aura unlocked though. Friend of Ruby maybe? Turning to Glinder, I asked for the entire story as she knew it. After she was finished, I couldn't help but frown. My attention was once again on the mysterious and dangerous woman. She took an explosion from a fire dust crystal as she held it in her hands like it was nothing more than a breeze. Worrying, but also presence opportunities. I need to get to know her. I only hope she isn't like Salem. But that darkness isn't confidence boosting. I asked the chief if there were any cookies available, and he said he'd go get some. As he left I spoke up to Glinder. Ozpin, let me do the talking here, Glinder. That woman is beyond dangerous. But, if we can get her on our side, I can tell it will be a great boon. She huffed, and crossed her arms along her chest, but gave a nod nonetheless. Few minutes later, the chief returned with a plate of cookies and handed them to myself. Ozpin, all right, let's go meet them now. Chief, do you want me to stay and monitor from here? Ozpin, yes, that would be ideal, thank you. Giving me a nod as Glinder started to leave, I took a quick look at my reflection in the viewing port to make sure I wasn't a total mess. Source, https colon slash slash fsbattles.fandom.com slash wiki slash ospin. Satisfied, I left the room with Glinder. The tiny walk was soon over as I knocked on the door, opened it and walked into the interrogation room. It took everything I had to not drop the plate of cookies I had in my left hand when the woman Zora came crashing down on me without a wall between us. This is so much worse than I was expecting. I could practically feel the woman's eyes burning a hole down to my very soul behind her faceplate. It felt like she was judging my worth, or to see if I was a threat that needed to be taken out. The world around me seemed to start to darken as I felt the shadow of death itself peer at me before it all disappeared as if it was an illusion. Clearing my throat, and placing the cookies down on the table, I tried to speak without my voice cracking. Ozpin, hello everyone. I am Professor Zoroaster Ozpin, the headmaster of the Beacon Academy here in Vale. A pleasure to meet you all. Little Ruby's already wide eyes started to sparkle when I introduced myself, but I noticed the boy didn't react much at all. It was almost like he expected I was going to show up. Pushing that thought aside, I continued. Ozpin, I would like to get your side of the story, please. Ruby, um, ah, may I have a cookie? Nodding my head, she hesitantly reached out and took one. When she realized they really were for them, she started to eat the cookie in her hand. Much to my surprise, though it really shouldn't have been from what Crow has told me of her. She started to almost inhale the cookies. She had cleaned out the plate in less than six seconds. A cookie monster indeed, eh Crow? Hey, Jake, or, I wanted at least one. Ruby, oh, ah, uh, sorry? I took a quick side glance at the woman, who had not moved even an inch since I had laid eyes on her. Ozpin, now, that you have been fed. One of you anyway, mind introducing yourselves? Ruby, ah, uh, right, nice to meet you. My name is Ruby Rose, future huntress extraordinaire, a huge fan of yours. Really, I want to go to your school when I am done with my training at Signal Academy. Ozpin, ah, a huntress in training is it? And a scythe as your weapon. I know of only one other wielder of such a weapon. A dusty old crow. Ruby, that's my uncle. He's a teacher at Signal Academy, where I go to. Ah, I already said that. You. Anyway, he's been teaching me a lot about how to use a scythe. Ozpin, I see. And you want to come to my school, hmm? Ruby, more than anything. Ozpin, hmm. giving her a few nods. I then turned to the young man taking the cue. He spoke up. Hello, Professor Ozpin. My name is Jake Trifle. I also have dreams of becoming a hunter, like Ruby here. Nodding my head I asked. I see. And what weapon do you use and where have you trained? The young boy shifted a little uncomfortably as he spoke up. Jake, um, 
due to how my semblance works. I don't ever set weapon like Ruby, but I can use the sword to a satisfactory level. I am recently here on vacation from Pharos Academy. Nodding my head at that I then asked what his semblance was if he was okay with telling us. Much to my surprise, he simply pointed at the woman. Jake, my semblance lets me summon a spirit of a warrior past. She follows my commands as if I was her general or something. An obvious lie, that. Ruby, whoa. Turning my head to her, she continued to stand there in silence, looking back at Glinda. I could tell she also didn't buy what this young man was selling. Ozpin, I see. And how long can your semblance hold this spirit in our world? Jake, indefinitely. I can only summon one, at least for now. Nodding my head, I look back at the woman. Ozpin, being able to summon a spirit is quite the unique semblance you have. And no upkeep cost on your aura and the like. Very powerful indeed. And... What is this spirit's name? Jake, I call her Saba. Raising an eyebrow, I look back at the young man. Ozpin, just Saba? The boy nodded his head and didn't elaborate further. Well, I can tell she is not human at the very least, but I don't buy it for a second that she is the result of his semblance. He would have to have the power of a god or something to summon something like her and not have to pay a steep cost to keep her around. But... There is an obvious connection between the two of them. So maybe not his semblance, but something else he did. Best to keep her close, so I can keep an eye on her. Looking back at the young man and Ruby, I give them a smile. Ozpin, so, how would the two of you like to attend my school early? Ruby's eyes lit up like the sun, while the boy seemed to smile knowingly. Ruby, yes, no take backs. Jake, I would love to attend early as well. Glinder. Ozpin. W.H. I just held up my hand to stop her for now, before giving the two of them a nod. Ozpin. Great. I'll see you two on the first day of Beacon. You guys can go now. Ruby let out a cheer in happiness as I turned to leave with Glinder. Leaving the room, and quickly making my way back to the observation room, we swiftly entered it. Glinder. Explain. Holding up both of my hands in surrender, I nodded. Ozpin, I have been hearing good things about Ruby from Crow for a while now. And, she also has silver eyes, you know what that means. She nodded at that, giving me that much at least so far. Glinder, and what about the boy and their woman? Spirit? Whatever. She is horribly dangerous. They finally got the footage from the street cameras. Look, she turned the little video pad she held towards me, and it started to play back. What was shown was interesting to say the least and also served as further proof about what I thought the woman's spell did. None of the cameras were able to pick her up, but that was pushed to the side when the battle went into full swing. Ruby was as great as Crow stated, better even. I had no worries about her fitting in my school. The worrying thing was the boy. He did nothing the whole time, while the woman obliterated the goons, literally with one of them. End of block one.